Chapter 176, Cooler's Ambition Not at all. Everything is thanks to Immortal Koran's teachings, and the great efforts of my other self. Launch, sure enough, wasn't a person who could accept someone praising her. As she listened to Zaya praise her, she hurriedly waved her hand and pushed the credit to others. Her fair cheeks flushed bright red with embarrassment. To be honest, blue-haired Launch was much more like a kind and amiable cooking lady than a warrior. On the contrary, training the blonde-haired Launch was much more worthwhile. Zaya was very clear on Launch's position, it was a kind and amiable helper. He didn't have any demands regarding her battle power, whether low or high. He only wanted her to be able to protect herself. Clearly, Launch's current strength was more than enough to protect herself on Earth. Ha ha ha, Launch is still young, and she is a girl, so her regular training can't begin yet. But, I think that Launch could certainly become an outstanding martial artist in the future. Uh huh, naturally, only on Earth. Immortal Corin spoke leisurely, albeit self-aware as it thought of the terrifyingly powerful monster-like aliens situated outside Earth. However, there were only a few people on Earth who could be trained by Corin personally. Well, blue-haired Launch isn't suited for fighting, so train the blonde-haired Launch well. Her personality is quite suited for training. Zayaya had planned the path that blonde-haired Launch has to take with his words, Oh, by the way, Launch, have you learned how to plant senzu beans? Zayaya hoped to expand the plantation of senzu beans in the future. However, before that, he had to learn their planting technique and find a place suitable to plant them. Learned it. Launch vigorously nodded her head. Ha ha ha, Launch is indeed very hard working. Now, she takes care of all the senzu beans on Corin Tower. Corin laughed out loud. He was very satisfied with Launch's performance in these past two years. In fact, fearing that she might feel lonely being in Corin Tower, Corin specially gave her the flying nimbus so she can go sightseeing in the mortal world whenever she had free time. And, as expected, Launch's pure heart allowed her to ride the flying Nimbus. Immortal Corin, it seems you have been treating Launch as a servant. Zayaya gave Corin a contemptuous glance, as soon as he noticed the fresh ingredients placed on the flying Nimbus. It seems since Launch had been living on Corin Tower for two years, Corin was living quite comfortably. Cough, cough, how can you think like that? I have been teaching Launch very diligently. You really don't know how to appreciate kindness. Yet, yeah, Corin Immortal has been very nice to me. Thinking that Zayaya was blaming Corin, Launch hurriedly spoke up on his behalf. This made Zayaya despise Immortal Corin even more. He looked at the honest Launch and wondered how Corin doesn't feel shame in making her look after it. Immortal Corin. Oh, by the way, there are two girls who have also come with me to Earth. I will take you to meet them in a while. Zayaya said. Xiling and Myers already knew about Launch, so it wasn't a bad idea to let them meet. They would surely like Launch because of her gentle personality. All right. Laugh agreed in a gentle voice. She was already so gentle at such a young age, it wasn't a surprise that she would grow into an adorable and gentle girl in future. Zayaya thought while gazing at Launch. Zayaya could recall that Launch's age wasn't disclosed in the original work, however he did remember that she seemed to be around the same age as Bulma. It was only when he had asked Launch later that he discovered she was older than Bulma by two years. She was only ten years old this year. No need to mention the exchange that occurred between Zayaya, Corin, and Launch on the Corin Tower. At this time, northern region of the North Area. Cooler's face was gloomy and his complexion dreadful. Ilos, haven't you found the whereabouts of the Tree of Might's fruit yet? Cooler asked with an indifferent tone. He had looked for its whereabout for so many years but didn't find it yet, he can't wait any longer. Ilos lowered his head, his thoughts hidden as he replied in a dark tone, this subordinate has already dispatched everyone, but the exact whereabouts of Tree of Might has not yet been discovered. Watching Cooler's face turn even more unsightly, he quickly added, but our exploration isn't completely without harvest, we have found a few locations where the Tree of Might may be. Oh. Cooler became interested. Speak, what do you know? Yes. Ilos raised his head and signaled two of his companions who stood at the side. These two were also members of the new armored squadron, Maddox and Duke, and both had outstanding battle power as well. Their outstanding capabilities was evident from the fact that Cooler selected them to enter the armored squadron. Maddox and Duke nodded, took out a ball-shaped device from their arms, and threw them high up in the sky. Immediately, 
a helix-shaped galaxy star chart appeared in the air. It shone in the void and the star chart gradually enlarged. Slowly, the center of the Milky Way galaxy and the four major galaxies in the north, south, east and west directions became clear. Dozens of red little tiny dots became visible on the star chart. King Cooler, these 32 small dots are the places where the tree of might is most likely to be it. The smile on ILO's face vanished as he explained meticulously, after inspection, 28 of these dots have been excluded, leaving only four locations to be inspected. Please have a look, King Cooler. ILO's pointed at the four small dots that were specially marked. These dots were separately located in the southern and eastern region of the north area, and two places in the east area. This planet Bahert, in the east area, is the planet that is most likely to have the Tree of Might. This is because, 300 years ago, a mysterious item similar to the Tree of Might's fruit had appeared on a low-level planet not far from planet Bahert and, for a time, its emergence caused quite a stir in the surrounding starfields. But, when the aliens in the vicinity rushed over to investigate, the low-level planet had turned desolate. All the signs were the same as those described in the records of the Tree of Might. There must have been a Tree of Might growing on that low-level planet. Ilos concluded confidently. So, you're saying that the Tree of Might's fruit is likely to be on that planet Bahert? Cooler asked as a hint of surprise broke through his indifferent mask. This was the best news he'd heard. Yes. Cooler waved his arm and said, What are you still waiting for then? Quickly, send someone to look into it. Nowadays, the pressure from my father's side is growing immensely ah. Oh, by the way, don't overlook the other three places, I don't want anything to go wrong. Yes, King Cooler. Facing Cooler's threatening aura, everyone present looked apprehensive as responded loudly. Ilos was also inwardly startled. But as he had once seen King Cooler releasing his aura, he was much more calm compared to others. The two new armored squadron members, Maddox and Duke, somewhat couldn't endure Cooler's threatening aura. At this moment, they were sweating profusely, almost prostrating on the ground. Eyes filled with horror, they looked towards Cooler. King Cooler, there is one more thing, Ilos hesitated for a while and said to Cooler. Speak. Ilos took a deep breath and said, King Cooler, there are two target planets which are located in a starfield of the east area, and they are a long way off from the north area. Even with the fastest spaceship, I'm afraid that it will take more than a year. In addition, there are two planets in the area that are under the influence of Mr. Frisia and King Cold. Don't worry about it so much, and spare no effort to investigate. At this moment, your primary objective is to find the Tree of Might's fruit, understand. Cooler's purple lips curled upwards into a cruel smile. Now, he doesn't give a damn about anything as his conflict with King Cold has been intensifying. Don't know how King Cold found out that he was looking for Tree of Might's fruit. Recently, the conflict between the eastern and northern region's forces had already become a lot more fierce than usual and it faintly seems his mighty father is losing patience. However, these were all temporary. After he gets the Tree of Might's fruit, his strength would soar, and the entire north area would be in his pocket. Everyone withdraw. Once he was done talking, Cooler waved them off and walked back to his throne. Yes. Ilos bowed and excused himself. Yes, Your Majesty. As if they had just received amnesty, the aliens while facing Cooler tremblingly withdrew from the hall. Those without courage wouldn't be able to endure being in King Cooler's presence. Chapter 177, Slug It wasn't until Maddox and Duke, the new armored squadron members, left Cooler's palace and stepped outside to the fresh breeze, that the extreme pressure and suffocating feeling in their hearts disappeared. Among the new armored squadron, only Captain Ilos was able to maintain a calm demeanor around King Cooler. Captain Ilos, how are we gonna select people who would go and scout out those four planets? Maddox asked Ilos. The four planets suspected of having Tree of Might were located in a special place. Two of the four planets were located within the sphere of influence of His Highness Frisia and King Cold. Presently, the forces of several parties were in turmoil, and it was very likely that they would cause a misunderstanding if they recklessly rush over there. This was the same way how no one dares to stroll around in front of a tiger's cave let alone thinking of pulling a tooth from the tiger's mouth. Maddox and Duke weren't willing to go. Ilos glanced at his two companions, pondered for a while and said, although the two planets in the eastern and southern regions are within the range of the north area, it was unlikely that Tree of Might was there, so sending warriors from the corp to have a look should be fine. However, we should personally go to the two places in the east area. After that, 
Ilos paused for a bit and continued, but, the East Area isn't a starfield we are familiar with, and we also don't know the situation there. Therefore, just to be safe, it's better we move together. So, I will go to Planet Donk, and you two will go to Planet Bahert. Remember, Planet Bahert is the top priority. This time, you both have been given an opportunity, and you must grasp it. Ilos warned. Okay. Understood. Both Maddox and Duke nodded, understanding. They are more willing to go to the unfamiliar east area than the southern and eastern region where the situation is unknown. At the same time, their eyes held a fiery look, because they could make a great contribution if they found the Tree of Might which was most likely located on planet Bahert. The thought of secretly hiding the Tree of Might's fruit, if they found it, never crossed their minds. After all, the horror of King Cooler was still deeply engraved in their heart. They didn't dare to have even a slightest bit of such a thought. Captain Iolos had given them the opportunity to scout planet Behurt the planet most likely having the Tree of Might. This was a chance for them to render a meritorious service. So, both Maddox and Duke nursed hearts full of gratitude. Afterwards, the new armored squadron discussed and planned for a while, and transferred some experts from the Cooler Corps as the two targets in the North area were also important. Moreover, that place was too much sensitive so the aliens designated to execute the mission were all experts. Soon, multiple beautiful rays of light rose from Cooler's planet and streaked off, deep into the universe. Several days later, King Cold's palace. In the middle of a magnificent hall, the tall and sturdy King Cold, was leisurely leaning on the throne, drinking from a wine glass in his hand with a satisfied expression. Fine wine is a true luxury, but it tastes best only when one drinks it while in a good mood. Right. What are the most recent movements at Cooler's place? King Cold asked without any warning. The alien at his side froze for a moment and hurriedly replied, Since Cooler's core clashed with Your Majesty's strongest battle squad at Planet Vedoya in the eastern region, Sir Cooler's forces were laying low, and nothing has changed for the time being. That's good. King Cold took a sip of the red wine, straightened up the glass and stood up. Hee <laughs> hee, tree of might's fruit that thing from legend. How can it be found so easily? Cooler boy, how hasn't he learned to be good like his younger brother Frisia yet? Now, he even wants to rebel against this king. He he he. King Cold laughed as a frigid light flashed in his scarlet eyes. Since Cooler has pinned his hopes on that so-called tree of might's fruit, obviously, he has nursed the aim to surpass this king for a long time. Although he was cautious of Cooler, he definitely wasn't afraid at all. He was furious when he first got the information that Cooler was looking for tree of might's fruit, from one of his spies at Cooler's place. But, after that, he sneered. He considered Cooler's attempts to find the fruit and rebel against him, King Cold, futile and naive. Although he doesn't believe in the Tree of Might's existence, however just to be safe, he still had people closely monitor every movement from Cooler's side. Cooler's actions, the past few years, had gotten more and more unbridled. He didn't put his father in his eyes, at all. As the head of the Frost Demon race, King Cold felt very dissatisfied. As he had suffered injuries in his fight against King Davido, he had no choice but to hide behind the scenes, and divide his territory and leave the management to his two sons. Who would have thought that after many years, with the rise in his strength, Cooler's ambitions would begin to grow? Now, he even dared to rebel against his father openly. These thoughts caused King Cold to radiate a cold and murderous aura, which made the surrounding temperature to fall below freezing point. Pay attention to Cooler's every movement, if there is anything unusual, report it to me immediately. King Cold waved his hand and ordered in an indifferent voice. If the legendary tree of might does exist, I'll let that Cooler boy continue to look for it, and when he finds it, it will eventually fall into this king's hands. King Cold sneered in his heart. The Frost Demon race didn't have the so-called family love. Instead, the members of the race made use of each other without reservations. Yes, King Cold. That alien acknowledged in a loud voice and bowed, before withdrawing from the palace. At the same time, in a starfield far from the cooler headquarters. Slug's planet. This was the headquarter of the force of Slug, a generation's overlord. Slug was originally a Namekian. He had just been born when planet Namek experienced a major climate change. As a heavenly gifted super Namekian, Slug was born a lot stronger than an adult warrior of planet Namek, making him one of the rare genius warrior of planet Namek. In order to let him survive, his parents had sent him to the unfamiliar planet Slug to live. But Slug was a different kind of Namekian. 
as a heavenly gifted super name Kian, Slug possessed a frightening battle power, and at the same time, had an extremely evil heart. Speaking of natural disposition, Slug was very ruthless, and this treatment was extended to his subordinates as well. If someone displeased him, even a little bit, they would end up being killed. In his youth, Slug, born with immense battle power, battled all the experts on planet Slug and proclaimed himself the king. Self-proclaiming himself to be of demon clan, he gradually gathered many subordinates under him. For many years, he and his subordinates ran amok in the universe, committing all kinds of crime. The evil in his heart and his battle power both grew alongside his age. Slug only had a few opponents in the North area, and was self-proclaimed as Universe Emperor for a time. However, ever since he encountered King Cold and his sons, a huge shadow had been cast over his path of the Universe Emperor. The strength of the Frost Demon race was far beyond Slug's imagination. Even, as a rare super name Kian, Slug was far from their match. Particularly remembering his fight with Cooler in the past, the always arrogant Lord Slug, suffered the biggest trauma of his life. Faced with Cooler's immense strength, Slug was easily defeated. His territories, which were acquired from many years of campaigns, were completely divided up by the Frost Demon race. In order to survive, Slug could only hole up on this small planet Slug. This is the worst humiliation of Slug's life. Slug wanted to take revenge, but he was denied by time a very difficult enemy to defeat. Several hundreds years had passed, and he had already turned old. Although his appearance was that of a middle-aged person, his eyes carried hints of age and decay. The Frost Demon race was powerful, while his body gradually got older, this made it impossible for him to realize his dream. Chapter 178, Inoshikicho King Slug, we just received a message from our spy inside Cooler Core. Cooler is currently looking for the fruit of the legendary Tree of Might. Just as King Slug was wallowing in the frustration of being denied his long-cherished dream, a sturdy green-skinned alien ran over, stood before him and reported. Tree of Might's Fruit His cloudy and dim eyes suddenly lit up as Slug became spirited. Is this Tree of Might's Fruit, as recorded in a document, the fruit of life that is condensed after absorbing the essence of a whole planet? Slug asked with an urgent tone. If it really was the fruit in Legends, that is condensed after absorbing the essence of an entire planet, then it definitely could extend lifespan by a significant margin after eating. Yes, your majesty. The green alien hollered, its face flushed with excitement. Legend states that when Tree of Might's fruit grows, it would absorb the whole essence of a life planet. Once the fruit had fully grown, the planet would turn into a desert and be completely barren for a few hundred years. How wonderful was the fruit since it has been condensed from so much vitality. Tell me the details. Slug felt as though his vitality was abundant again, he had rediscovered his purpose for struggling. It's like this. The alien reported everything in detail and explained the reason behind the clash of Cooler's and King Cold's forces, and also gave a proper analysis. In other words, Cooler has chosen four planets as the likely targets. Slug stroked his chin, and his cloudy eyes suddenly lit up. Miji, immediately deploy people, I have to quickly get the news of Tree of Might's fruit before Cooler. But King Slug, Cooler has sent the armored squadron personally to execute the mission, so our people may not be their match. The green alien said, somewhat perplexed. Slug waved his hand and replied, don't worry about the armored squadron. The east area is far away from here, and, what's more, we are much closer to the east area than Cooler and the others. Even if the armored squadron found the whereabouts of Tree of Might's Fruit, we could be the first one to rush there and obtain the Tree of Might's Fruit. So, the most important thing for us is to quickly and thoroughly search the southern and eastern regions of the north area, before Cooler's people arrive. That is the territory of Frisia and King Cold, after all. I won't feel at ease as this concerns the Frost Demon race. If by any chance the Tree of Might's Fruit appears in these two areas, it would be too bad. Slug had been extremely afraid of the Frost Demon race since he lost to them. Yes, this subordinate understands. The green alien answered in a loud voice. They were the aliens who had followed King Slug from early on. From their standpoint, their days would only become good if King Slug became more powerful. Earth. The bright sun shone down on the beach and revealed a bit of sparkling crystal clear lights. The sunlight on the beach wasn't scorching, instead, it gave off a warm feeling. Xiling and Myers frolicked around in the sea. Launch, who was dressed in a green swimsuit and a tied red ribbon, was also playing with them on the side. However, Launch remained on the shore and hadn't entered the water. A few days ago, 
After departing Koran Tower, Ziaya brought Launch along with him to Xiling's villa, which was purchased in the peninsula city. Initially when the first time they met her, Xiling and Myers had no interest in Launch, who had a gentle and demure nature. Especially as Launch's battle power was weak, only slightly more than forty. They feared that they might kill her just by breathing close to her. However, after interacting with each other for a period of time, and especially after tasting the delicious food that Launch cooked, Xiling began to look at Launch in a favorable light and gradually adapted to Launch's existence. The gap between the three girls soon disappeared. Launch, aren't you going over to play with them? Ziaya asked as he walked over and pointed at Xiling and Myers, who were flying above the sea surface and occasionally stirring up enormous waves. Launch quietly shook her head, Xiling and Myers are too powerful, so I will just watch from here. Upon hearing this, Ziaya nodded his head. Indeed, an average human wouldn't be able to survive playing together with people like Xiling. Huge waves rose with every movement they makes, and the waves crashing back down has a force exceeding tens of thousands of tons. Wouldn't that scare normal people to death? Hey, Launch, why are you sitting there? Come and play with us. After playing with Xiling for a while, Myers who had started feeling bored shouted towards Launch, who was sitting on the shore. Go, I will have them pay attention. Okay. Launch, who had long been itching to go, ran towards the sea. Leisurely, Ziaya basked in the sun. He found the warm sunlight spraying down on his body very comfortable. He raised his head, looked towards the clear blue sea and saw the three girls having fun. Xiling was the oldest among them, nearing adulthood. As he thought about all this, a wave of exhaustion assaulted him, and under the warm sea breeze, Ziaya inadvertently fell asleep. When he woke up, he found Xiling and Myers building a sand castle around him while Launch watched from the side. Oh, by the way, Myers, is the tail behind you real? Launch pointed at the hairy brown tail behind Myers. She wanted to ask this question a long time ago but felt embarrassed. Every scion has a tail. Myers coiled the tail at her waist and answered as if it was something natural. Then, how come Ziaya and Xiling don't have tails? They are also scion. Heh <laughs> because scions transform into a great ape during a full moon. If their latent talent is not good, they would likely lose their rationality after body transformation. So, I and Xiling Jad removed our tail very early on. Xiaya answered with a smile. Although a scions can transform into ten times strength great ape with the help of a tail, it was easy to lose rationality if it isn't controlled properly. Xiaya could still recall the time when Xiling had transformed on planet Selma, that night was fraught with grave danger. Oh. ERM, I want to go back to my home village to have a look. Ziaya, can you accompany me? Launch suddenly asked. It has already been several years since Launch had returned to her home village where the villagers had been killed by bandits. Okay. Ziaya agreed. But, speaking of Launch's home village, he hadn't heard her mention it before. When he first met Launch, she was wandering around outside by herself. He had heard that her family was killed by the bandits. Now that she sought to go back, it may be to offer sacrifice to her family. So, they returned to the villa to change their clothes. Ziaya put on white training clothes, while the girls changed into beautiful fashionable clothes. Soon, they flew high into the sky, Launch flew as well on the flying Nimbus. Launch's home village was a remote village. There was only a rugged path cut into a mountain, leading outside. It was a simple mountain village, far away from the bustling mundane world. Many villagers had fled after the village got plundered by bandits a few years ago. But, after a few years had passed, size of human habitation gradually again became apparent in the surroundings. In a desolate corner of the old village, Launch knelt in front of a grave. It was the grave of her grandfather. After offering sacrifice to her grandfather, Launch wiped away her tears, returned to Ziaya's side and thanked him, Thank you for coming with me. Ziaya patted Launch's beautiful deep blue hair and signaled Xiling to step forward and comfort her. This was because Xiling's words would be much more effective, as she too was a girl. That's all right, we will be your family in future, Xiling said. Yes, yes. On the side, Myers nodded her head repeatedly, but her eyes turned as she thought of Launch's delicious cooking. This brat has completely grown crafty. Okay, it's getting late, there is no need to return so we will just go find a lodging nearby. Hey, there seems to be a village on that mountain. We can stay there tonight. 
Xiling suggested as she spotted the rising smoke on the other side of a huge mountain. Okay. This time, they did not fly. Instead, they walked towards the mountain. On the undulating mountain, a zigzag path extended out of the huge mountain. This was the only path that led to outside of the several nearby villages. Click clack, the sound of an tractor starting up echoed, and black smoke appeared. A tractor filled with luggage moved at full speed, swiftly heading towards the other side of the mountain in apparent panic. What happened? Ziaya blocked the tractor's path and asked. The driver, who was escaping with his family, got down from the tractor, wiped his sweat and said, A monster has appeared ahead. You shouldn't go forward. Right now, everybody is escaping. What monster? Hearing him, Myers immediately became spirited. It's Inoshikacho, a mysterious monster that specializes in destroying villages. The villages that it has appeared in, in the past, were all completely destroyed. Chapter 179, Who Killed Inoshikacho? What is a Inoshikacho? Is that a wild boar? After the tractor drove off, Myers curiously blinked her eyes. Remembering the delicious taste of the roasted suckling pig, she couldn't help but swallow her saliva. Wild boar, I don't think it tastes that good, Zayai replied with a strange expression. Just now, when the villager mentioned the name Inoshikacho, Zayaya only thought it sounded familiar. However, when Myers mentioned a wild boar, Zayai recalled that there was indeed a monster called Inoshikacho in the Dragon Ball world. It was a strange creature that had been raised by Master Rashi and Master Shen when they were young and when Sun Goku was on his way to train after participating in the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament, he encountered Inoshikacho. At that time, it was collaborating with Tian Shenyan and Tietsu in deceiving the villagers. After Tian Shenyan and Tietsu had Inoshikacho wreak havoc in the village, they would arrive, under the guise of passing martial arts, and help the villagers eliminate the dangerous Inoshikacho and receive rewards. To put it plainly, it was a fraudulent act that was not only brilliant but also very effective. Whatever, let's first go and have a look. Maybe it would taste good. Myers blinked, her black hair fluttering in the wind. Fine, we will go and take a look, Zayai replied with a smile. That Inoshikacho had appeared, maybe he could also see Tian Shinyan as a child. Currently, Tian Shinyan and Tietsu should be training under the tutelage of Master Shen. Although Tian Shinyan, the future Z warrior, had a ruthless personality early on, he eventually turned over a new leaf and risked his life several times to defend Earth's peace. Zayaya admires him quite a bit. Unfortunately, in later battles, his strength became inconsequential, and he gradually disappeared into the currents of time. But, he was much better than Launch, who had been buried much deeper, at least, he would often appear. Therefore, they hastened their steps, and, in the blink of an eye, several afterimages streaked across the mountain road. Their footsteps appeared slow, but with each step the distance shrunk. Their single step covered tens of meters, and in the blink of an eye, they had disappeared amidst the zigzagging mountain road. Neighboring Mountain Village As a result of Inoshikacho's rampage, the houses had collapsed and farms were destroyed in the village. The strong and healthy adults of the village picked up weapons to battle with Inoshikacho. However, they were all flung away by its brute strength, receiving severe injuries. Ah, that's Inoshikacho, it looks so ugly, it certainly doesn't seem like it would be tasty. A crisp female voice rang out. Myers jumped, landed atop a big tree, seven to eight meters tall and concluded with a somewhat regretful voice while gazing at the strange creature continuously attacking with brute strength in a farm. Inoshikacho had dark blue skin. It had the body of a wild boar, antlers on its head and wings similar to butterfly on its back. Its appearance was ugly but comical. At this time, Inoshikacho was breathing heavily while seriously injuring the charging villagers with its brute force. It's really Master Shen's Inoshikacho. Would Tian Shinyan and Tietsu be here as well like in the original work? Zayaya, who stood beside Myers, smiled and sized up the surroundings. Zayaya, is this Inoshikacho very powerful? Since she was still unable to sense Ki, Launch couldn't accurately determine the strength of Inoshikacho. Myers curled her lips into a contemptuous smile, powerful? It's just a trash. Its battle power is less than 70. I don't even have to attack, using Ki is enough to squash it into meat pulp. 70 battle power was not worth mentioning in front of Myers. She had no need to move or touch it, and could kill Inoshikacho with just her imposing aura that had been condensed using her ki. This was similar to when Sun Goku fighting with Frieza on planet Namek, 
had only needed to stare at the ground to blow open a big hole in it and bury the dead Vegeta. This was the usage of Ki. 70 battle power, those people are no match for it. Startled, Launch shook her head. Her battle power was only a little bit over 40, and she couldn't even exhibit 30 battle power in the blue-haired mode. Zayaya smiled and glanced at Myers, Myers, don't show off too much, and go deal with that Inoshikacho. All right. Myers responded happily. Her body flashed and appeared in front of Inoshikacho. When they saw a little girl appear in front of the dangerous monster, the strong and healthy men of the village all panicked and shouted, It's dangerous, quickly come back. Myers paid no heed to the villagers' warnings and flashed them a huge smile. Afterward, she turned around and observed Inoshikacho with great interest. Inoshikacho seemed to instinctively sense a threat to its life. It responded immediately and, moving its obese body, retreated backward while panting heavily, its two front hooves rubbing against the ground. What's going on? Why does it seem like that Inoshikacho is afraid? The villagers saw Inoshikacho acting frightened. It's not possible, how can Inoshikacho be afraid of this little girl? It's true, look. The villagers rubbed their eyes in disbelief. The Inoshikacho really was retreating in fear because of the little girl. What happened? Inoshikacho, who couldn't even be subdued by the joint attack of dozens of adults, was unexpectedly afraid of a little girl who seemed no older than ten years. Hehe, <laughs> let me taste the flavor of your meat. Myers rubbed off her drool and uttered this savage words. Woo woo woo. Inoshikacho's nerves were taut, and it continued retreating. It flapped its butterfly wings, and tiny flying dust particles emitting faint fluorescence light immediately scattered out from above the wings. Seizing the opportunity, Inoshikacho ran away. Cough, cough, what is this? Myers waved her hand and coughed violently, her face stinging. Suddenly, a trace of killing intent flashed through her dark eyes. This weak little thing dared to plot against her. Myers, who wanted to show off, felt very humiliated. She gathered a small ball of electric rays in her hand and threw it at Inoshikacho. A sparkling ray of light streaked across the sky, and the electrified energy wave struck the target successfully. With a rumbling sound and a heart-rending roar, Inoshikacho collapsed in a huge crater amidst a huge explosion motionless. With 180,000 battle power, Myers could casually wave her hand, and the gesture would create a violent storm that could sweep across the entire continent. Then what would happen with an energy wave? When they saw that the monstrous Inoshikacho was motionless with just a casual attack of the little girl, who knows if it was dead or not, the spectating villagers were all dumbstruck and felt dizzy. Feeling disbelief at what they were seeing, the villagers pinched their thighs. It hurts, so this really isn't a dream. So powerful, this little girl, is she a legendary martial artist? I heard that a martial artist is much more powerful than a normal person. Yeah, yeah, I have also heard that. The villagers were sluggish for a while but soon broke out into a heated discussion. Regarding Myers, who had eliminated the Inoshikacho, they directly assigned her the identity of a martial artist. From their understanding, only martial artists could wield such strength. Well, Launch, can you help me make this Inoshikacho into a dish? I want to taste it. Myers asked Launch. She was obviously one year younger than Launch, however she seems to ignore it. Okay. Launch answered with a happy smile. At this time, due to the noise of the previous explosion, two figures in the distance came over to look. When they saw the dead Inoshikacho lying in a crater, its whole body exuding black smoke, their faces greatly changed, and they hurriedly ran over. Who are you people? Who the hell killed Master's Inoshikacho? The two people weren't tall. They were dressed in green martial arts clothing, with hats on their heads. Chapter 180, Golden Haired Launch Astonishingly, they were Tian Shinyan and Tietsu. Tian Shinyan was in a bad mood, right now. Inoshikacho, which had been given in their care by Master two days ago suddenly ran out, so he and Tietsu had chased it all the way here, however, they hadn't expected that it would be killed by someone. Who are you? Who the hell killed Master's Inoshikacho? Tian Shinyan gazed coldly at the four people before him. Master's Inoshikacho had been killed by someone. He and Tietsu would definitely be held responsible. The thought of possibly facing their master's punishment after going back worsened Tian Shinyan's mood. However, Tian Shinyan had been, after all, studying under the tutelage of Master Shen for many years, so he could instinctively sense that the order side was extraordinary. At the same time, 
Ziaya also sized up the two travel-worn youngsters before him who had rushed over hurriedly. Are they Tian Xinyan and Chiatsu? This was the first time he had seen a Z warrior from the original work, he couldn't help but feel a little curious. There was still eight years to go for the storyline to begin, so Tian Xinyan and Chiatsu weren't adult yet. They weren't tall, and their present battle power couldn't be compared to the battle power they had when they appeared in the storyline. Tian Xinyan's current battle power is only 43, but it's already amazing for him to attain this level before reaching 10 years of age, Ziaya exclaimed in his heart. Chiatsu also wasn't bad. Although he didn't have much battle power at age 5 to 6 years old, both Chiatsu and Tian Xinyan were still regarded as the best amongst their peers. That would explain why Master Shen took them in as his pupils. I killed it, so what? Myers glared, her tone haughty. She wants to eat a roast pig, yet someone actually dared to make such irresponsible remarks. Was he tired of living? When her gaze focused on the Tian Xinyan and Chiatsu, an intangible, Imposing aura took the shape of a whirlwind and swept out towards them, like a monstrous wave. Tian Xinyan's expression changed greatly as though he had been smashed in the chest by a sledgehammer, and he staggered backwards, beads of cold sweat dripping down his forehead. Who the hell is this brat? How can she be so powerful? Tian Xinyan could barely remain standing as he gazed at Myers in astonishment. Dot. Tian Xin, this person is so dangerous. Tietsu pulled at Tian Xinyan's sleeve. Even someone young like him could feel the danger. UMM. Tian Xinyan nodded with a grave expression. He knew that he had met his equal this time. It seemed the little girl, who appeared to be around the same age as him, was definitely an expert. Tian Xinyan deduced in his heart. This feeling of not being able to do anything, he had only experienced in front of his master Master Shen. Could it be that this little girl's strength was already comparable to his master's? But, how was it possible? His master Shen was a martial arts expert as famous as Master Rashi, the god of martial arts. She was so small, yet already so powerful? No, maybe even master is not necessarily her opponent. A thought suddenly popped up in Tian Xinyan's mind that even he didn't dare believe in. This terrified him. Enough Myers, withdraw your aura. Ziaya stepped forward and softly shouted for her to stop. He knew that if he didn't stop her, she would kill Tian Xinyan the future Z warrior. Oh. Myers shrugged and retreated to the side, without saying anything. The pressure enveloping Tian Xinyan and Tietsu vanished. Did you raise this Eno Shikicho? Ziaya arrived in front of them and asked Tian Xinyan in an indifferent voice. In the original work, Eno Shikicho was deliberately released by Tian Xinyan and Tietsu so as to extort money from villagers. What, someone was raising the Eno Shikicho? Our village was destroyed by this Eno Shikicho. What do they want by raising Eno Shikicho? Hearing that Eno Shikicho was being raised by someone, the villagers were immediately filled with resentment, and cursed. Because of the hateful Eno Shikicho, several villages nearby had been destroyed. Yes, Tian Xinyan groaned in his herd and nodded, admitting. Normally, he wouldn't put these villagers in his eyes at all, but now that there were mysterious experts present, he could only be honest and admit. But, this time, it ran away by itself. Tian Xinyan quickly added. It's good that you admitted it, we have already killed this Eno Shikicho. As its master, how are you going to take responsibility? Launch. Ziaya suddenly shouted. What? Launch reflexively responded. Ziaya smiled at her and said to Tian Xinyan, As long as you can defeat my companion, and compensate the villagers for their losses then I will let you off this time. After listening to him, Tian Xinyan gazed at Launch and seeing that the blue-haired girl was nothing special he nodded in agreement. Okay, I can spar with your companion. Launch, who only now understood Ziaya's intention, repeatedly waved her hands and said, No, no, I don't know any martial arts. She proceeded to look pitifully at Ziaya. At Korin Tower, Launch had only learned how to plant Senzu beans. She doesn't know how to fight. You aren't the one going to spar with him, the other Launch is. She should also come out to exercise. Ziaya replied to Launch. After hearing him, Launch froze before she realized Ziaya's intentions. Her other self had learned martial arts from Korin, so fighting should not be an issue. Immediately, she said happily, Right, why didn't I think of it? She picked up a handful of hair and used them to tickle her nostrils. Her nose immediately itched. Achoo. Launch's blue hair suddenly turned gold 
and her innocent expression became fierce and intimidating, even her temperament became different. Her persona had completely changed. Yi, launch transformed. Myers wrinkled her eyebrows and looked with a curious expression. Double personality. Xiling's beautiful eyes suddenly lit up. Um, where is this? Blonde-haired Launch looked around to discover that she was in an unfamiliar mountain village and pondered, could it be that my other self was finally willing to leave that awful place? Ha ha ha. Finally got away from that awful place. Blonde-haired Launch burst into a loud laughter, obviously delighted. At this time, Blonde-haired Launch noticed Zayaya on the side and thought, that person looks somewhat familiar. Where have I seen him before? Suddenly, she remembered. Wasn't he the culprit who had sent her to Corin Tower? Oh no, why is this person also here? It seems that I can't escape this time as well. Why are you also here? Blonde-haired Launch awkwardly laughed while her body sagged in defeat. Blonde-haired Launch, it's been a while. Zayaya smiled faintly and greeted. He noticed the energy in Launch's body begin to move after her transformation. If the former blue-haired Launch could only exert 20 or 30 battle power, then after transforming into blonde-haired Launch, she could exert 100% of her power. Sure enough, only the blonde-haired Launch could exert all the power within her body. Tell me then, why did you have me come out? Blonde-haired Launch knew that she couldn't escape, so she spoke impudently since a dead pig wasn't afraid of boiling water. Hee hee, I had you come out because I want to see the results of your training in these past two years. Well, do you see that person? Defeat him. Otherwise, you understand, right? Zayaya pointed at Tian Xinyan and laughed towards Launch. Blonde-haired Launch shuddered. She remembered that this person had once brought her flying into the sky, and beads of cold sweat flowed down. Humph, leave this guy to me. Blonde-haired Launch spoke in a tough tone. After that, she approached Tian Xinyan and Tiatsu, Boy, don't blame me for not showing mercy. If I don't defeat you, then today, I would have to suffer. Humph. Tian Xinyan's eyebrows wriggled and he snorted as his complexion turned somewhat gloomy. Tian Xin, Tiatsu cried out. Don't worry, leave it to me. Tian Xinyan said coldly. At this time, Tian Xinyan still hadn't received Master Rashi's teaching so his personality was still very gloomy. If he wasn't apprehensive about the several mysterious experts on the side, those who dared to speak to him in such a manner, whether they were male or female, would have long been killed by him. He <laughs> he, this blonde-haired launch doesn't seem to have trained much, but she is so interesting. Myers laughed as though she had found an interesting toy. The blonde-haired launch's strength is about the same as that human. Xiling lightly nodded. Xiaoya smiled as he looked at them. In the original work, blonde-haired launch had always liked Tian Xinyan. Although ultimately nothing happened between the two of them, now seeing them about to fight, he found it quite interesting. Chapter 181, Advising Tian Xinyan Xiaoya and the two girls withdrew to give launch and Tian Xinyan some vacant space, and after watching them, the villagers followed suit and also backed off one by one. A spar between martial artists was very novel for them who had lived deep in the mountains for a long time. It was akin to watching a movie, the chance was rare, and no one wanted to miss the excitement. In the vacant space destroyed by Inoshikacho, blonde-haired Launch swaggered over and stood facing Tian Xinyan. As her delicate body faced the strong wind blowing among the mountains, her golden wavy hair fluttered wildly. She looked at Tian Xinyan nonchalantly without putting up any defense, full of openings. Still, Tian Xinyan's expression grew much more serious. Hehe, <laughs> this launch can really put on airs. Myers rolled her eyes. Blonde-haired Launch stood there without putting up any defenses, making her appear full of openings, but a careful eye would notice that her body was currently emitting profound principles which made it more difficult for an opponent to begin their attack. Really worthy of being taught by Corin. Zayaya's eyes lit up after seeing this, but there was no change in his expression, only slightly nodding. A real martial artist moves has long become instincts, and are not like a beginner. Every time, before they began fighting, they would assume attacking or a defensive posture. They usually do things at their own pace and are unpredictable. They could give their enemies problems right before the fight has started. Facing the blonde-haired launch who hadn't put up any defense, Tian Xinyan doesn't know how to attack. However, Xiaoya knew that if blonde-haired launch held the advantage in strength, she wouldn't sit back and wait for her opponent to take the initiative, instead, she would have directly attacked. After all, in certain circumstances, attack was the best form of defense, 
so a martial artist should be adept at seizing the initiative. But, if the fight gets locked in a stalemate, one would deduce that the strength of both sides was evenly matched. As both sides weren't assured of restraining the other, they wouldn't dare act rashly lest they are the first party to expose weakness. Therefore, blonde-haired Launch may have seemed nonchalant, but only the unskilled would think she wasn't taking the fight seriously. This girl, is actually so strong. As the one facing her, Tian Xinyan didn't consider it as much as Xiaoya. His eyebrows were raised, and for the first time in his life, he had doubts about the martial arts that his master had taught him. Since you are not attacking, don't blame me for not going easy on you. Blonde-haired Launch shouted at Tian Xinyan. Then, her right foot stepped forward, lifting up a cloud of dust. Suddenly, Launch swooped down like an agile bird, her movements not the slightest bit sloppy. Bang! Tian Xinyan's countenance suddenly changed, and he turned over his hand and began to counterattack. In an instant, the silence between them was suddenly broken. Both sides rushed out, attacking each other. The villagers could only hear the sound of footsteps and the echoes of blows being traded. As they have never witnessed martial artists spar before, the gorgeous and quick movements made by the silhouettes of both fighters were too much for the eyes of the villagers to take in. Launch's imposing aura is not bad, she must have trained seriously while following Corin. Looking at both of them fighting, Xiaoya laughed and said to Xiling. In his eyes, blonde-haired Launch's movements could only be considered as not bad, and not particularly outstanding. However, only Xiaoya could say this, as his experiences were fairly high. Whether it is his strength or martial arts level, he was at a high level, and he could see through every trick of martial artists and quickly discern the openings. But, blonde-haired Launch was enough to be regarded as a martial artist in the eyes of the Earthlings. Tian Xinyan's attacking speed, although a little slower, seems to have its own style, however his moves are a little bit sinister. Xiling casually analyzed, completely seeing through Tian Xinyan's moves. That's the martial art of Crane School, and which together with Turtle School, is a well-known martial arts school on Earth. Xiaoya explained. After Master Mutato passed away 300 years ago, his two disciples, Master Rashi and Master Shen, parted ways because of different thoughts. Then, they founded the Turtle School and Crane School with their respective training methods. Both are well-known styles of earth martial arts, but they oppose each other and wouldn't acknowledge each other. They have been fighting for more than 100 years. As Xiaoya spoke, the fight between blonde-haired Launch and Tian Xinyan continued. They both had almost similar energy levels. Blonde-haired Launch was using the breathing method that Corin taught her, so her aura, when fighting, was much more leisurely. The fierce movements consumed an astonishing amount of energy, and it didn't take long before Tian Xinyan began to pant and gradually becoming disadvantaged. On the other hand, blonde-haired Launch could still fight although her aura was already in disorder. If I continue to fight, it will only get more and more disadvantageous for me. Although Tian Xinyan was still young, he analyzed the situation quite maturely. He knew that if he continued to fight, his gains wouldn't equal his losses, so it would be better to go all out and have a final fight. Doden Ray. Tian Xinyan pointed his index finger and shouted. Immediately, the energy within his body coalesced, and a bright red dot appeared and flickered on his finger. Shu. A cold light flashed, and the crimson ray streaked through the sky. What is this? When blonde-haired Launch saw the Doden Ray streaking over, she was startled, and her black pupils contracted. She bit her lips, extended her fist and resolutely smashed at the incoming laser. Boom! The fist smashed above the tiny ray. Doden Ray was forcibly punched to the ground, smashing a huge crater. How is this possible? Someone actually received the Doden Ray head-on. Tian Xinyan's expression was somewhat sluggish when he saw his unique skill deflected by someone without any difficulty. The Doden Ray was a secret technique of the Crane School, and only its direct disciples had the qualifications to learn it. Tian Xinyan's innate talent was very good, he hadn't taken much time to learn Doden Ray. Ah, it hurts, what the hell was that? Blonde-haired Launch caressed her bright red fist and cursed, her whole arm still feeling numb. She looked at Tian Xinyan and said fiercely, Boy, what move did you use? Now, you have made me angry. Immediately, her body turned illusory. It was an afterimage. Not good. Tian Xinyan suddenly shouted. However, he didn't have any strength left to react. That Doden Ray just now had exhausted all his strength, and he could only look on helplessly as blonde-haired Launch's fist smashed down. Bang! 
the enormous power smashed down, like a train collided with him at a great momentum, Tian Xinyan's body was sent flying dozens of meters away. Tian Xin. Tietsu anxiously cried out, rushed towards Tian Xinyan and helped him up. Launch, you can stop. Xiaoya hollered at blonde haired Launch, this caused her to stop her next attack. The outcome of the spar was clear. Launch and Tian Xinyan were evenly matched when it came to strength, however, Launch surpassed him in terms of skill. After all, Corin had personally trained blonde haired Launch for two years. Although Corin itself wasn't strong, the quality of its teaching was, nevertheless, one of the best. Tian Xinyan stared listlessly at Xiaoya and others in the distance, and then stood up with Tietsu's support. I have lost. Tian Xinyan shook his head and laughed bitterly. He still couldn't accept the fact that someone had received his Doden Ray with their bare hands. After all, Doden Ray was a move similar to Kamehameha. Both were legendary techniques. How could someone receive it using their bare hands? This reality had given Tian Xinyan a huge blow. Young man, do you know why you lost? Xiaoya walked over to Tian Xinyan. What? Tian Xinyan looked over at the approaching Xiaoya. Crane School is one of the best martial arts schools on earth. Foundation is very important, and it can be seen from your martial arts. You lost only because you have yet to master fighting techniques. Although Crane School is powerful, its moves are somewhat more sinister than those of Turtle School. Of course, one's own strength is also very important. Your Doden Ray is very powerful, but you lack strength to exert its full power. If you want to go further on the road of martial arts, you might want to go and challenge Korin Tower. Xiaoya chuckled as he generously gave Tian Xinyan some advice for the sake of his future. He turned to Tietsu and said, after compensating the losses of the villagers, bring away your companion. UMM. Tietsu nodded fearfully. He then threw down a bag of coins and hurriedly left with Tian Xinyan. Xiaoya watched them until they disappear in the zigzagging mountain road before he turned around. You seem to think quite highly of them. Xiling said to Xiaoya. I just think that those two can become good warriors in future if they walk on the right path. Xiaoya shook his head and casually said. You are really strange, they're just some earthlings. Are they really worth so much of your attention? Who knows? Maybe they won't be worse than Scions in the future. Xiaoya joked. He thought in his heart, if Tian Xinyan listens to me and goes to Korin Tower for training early on, perhaps he wouldn't chase after Sun Goku's footsteps so hard in the future, and get buried amidst the torrents of time. Chapter 182, Master Shen and Mercenary Tao On the other side, Tian Xinyan left the mountain village with Tietsu's support. It was dark when they finally arrived at a building. This building was the base of the Crane School, where its members lives. Master! Tian Xinyan called out. Soon, the door of the building opened, and a blue-haired crane-faced old man dressed in a green martial arts robe came out. He was slightly startled at the sight of his injured student, and his expression immediately became gloomy. What happened to Tian Xinyan? I had you go look for Ino Shikicho, so how did you get so seriously injured? Master Shen inquired while somewhat angry. Master, when we rushed over, Ino Shikicho had already been killed by someone. Tian Shen wasn't an opponent of the perpetrators, and was defeated. Tietsu was afraid that Master Shen would get angry, so he hurriedly explained. What? Master Shen's countenance changed greatly, and a terrifying, blood-curdling aura erupted out from his body. He he he, who dares to oppose our crane school? Was it someone from that old turtle's side? Well, Tian Shen Yan, tell me everything in detail. Master Shen's hands were behind his back, and the veins on his fists twitched revealing the anger in his heart. But as the master of a huge school, Master Shen didn't lack patience. Yes. Tian Xinyan replied, and then he explained everything that happened when they encountered Xiaoya. Especially when he described Myers, it made Master Shen, who was listening, somewhat frightened. After he had listened to Tian Xinyan's narrative, Master Shen sucked in a breath of cold air and said, Are you sure that the little girl who defeated you is the same age as you? And, the person who had killed Ino Shikicho has an aura more powerful than Master's. Yes. Master. Tian Xinyan spoke without hesitation. Regarding the strength of blonde-haired Launch, Tian Xinyan could still make some judgment, but the one who had taken action at the start, Myers, was like a deep cave, and Tian Xinyan couldn't determine her real strength. In his opinion, even his master's aura was far from her equal. Oh, by the way, Master, 
that person also mentioned Koran Tower. What does Koran Tower refer to? Is it a martial arts school like Oran Temple? Koran Tower ah! Master Shen murmured, reminiscing. He seemed to have returned back to the days of his youth, when he followed his teacher, Master Mutato, to train. Upon seeing this, Tian Shenyan realized that Koran Tower must be a mysterious place. He was just about to speak when he saw Master Shen raise his hand, stopping him. Master Shen shook his head and said, This Koran Tower is the most sacred place of martial arts on earth. Whether it is me or that old turtle, we had both undergone its challenge when we were young, however, those who could successfully climb the Koran Tower are very few, ah. Speaking this, Master Shen muttered to himself, since the other person knows the name of Koran Tower, he must not be an ordinary person. On earth, only the famous old schools were privy to the secrets of Koran Tower. Ordinary people only knew of an extremely tall divine tower in the forest of the Northern Hemisphere, but they don't know what it represents. Master Shen was a martial artist who had lived for several hundred years, after all. Although his personality was somewhat sinister, he didn't lack the wisdom of a martial artist. He muttered to himself for a while and said, you should first go down and treat your injuries, and wait a few days for your martial uncle mercenary Tao to come, we'll talk more about it then. Yes. Tian Shenyan and Tietzu responded and withdrew with belly full of doubts. A few days later, they were informed by Master Shen that the number one assassin on earth, mercenary Tao, had arrived at the base. What? Tian Shenyan was injured by someone. Do you want me to go and kill that person? The moment mercenary Tao came in through the door, he was already speaking of killing someone. Regarding his martial nephew Tian Shenyan, mercenary Tao was quite concerned. The person who injured Tian Shenyan is not ordinary. Master Shen sat upright on a bench and held a pot of tea in his hand. Why do you say that? Mercenary Tao asked with astonishment. Naturally, as the Earth's number one assassin, Mercenary Tao's fighting ability was one of the best on Earth. In his eyes, there weren't many people who could go head to head with him, except for his older brother Master Shen, and that old turtle who pursues fame and compliments. I heard from Tian Shenyan that it was a child who injured him. Additionally, the one who attacked earlier than that even possesses skills above us. Master Shen said in a gloomy voice. Ha ha ha, how is that possible? Mercenary Tao laughed disdainfully, but he recalled something, suddenly, and asked doubtfully, You are saying that a child injured Tian Shenyan? Yes. Boy or girl? Tian Shenyan was wounded by a blonde girl amongst those people. What skills can a little girl have? Wait, you just said among those people. Wasn't the other person alone? Mercenary Tao asked with a frown. Master Shen nodded, there were four people altogether, three females and one male. The man, and one female were slightly older while the other two females were little girls. Tian Shenyan said that it was one of the little girls who attacked him. There was a boy. Mercenary Tao's countenance immediately turned gloomy. He recalled his experience in that small town, two years ago. At that time, he was sent flying from just a palm wind by a seemingly very ordinary boy. This was a thorn in the heart of Earth's number one assassin, and the only experience that made him feel fear. According to Tian Shenyan, that boy, who was traveling together with the person who had injured Tian Shenyan, was probably the one who had sent him flying that day. Why? Do you know something? Perceiving the change in mercenary Tao's countenance, Master Shen asked. UMM, there is a clue. If it is really that person, I had better not go look for them to take revenge. Mercenary Tao words were evasive, and then he spoke of his encounter two years ago. After listening to Mercenary Tao's recounting, Master Shen eyes widened. He somewhat didn't dare to believe what he had just heard. Where the hell did these people come from? That person you spoke of just now defeated you with only a palm wind. Master Shen asked gloomily. Suddenly, he realized that the martial arts world that he was familiar with had, at some unknown time, become unfamiliar. If the assassin widely known as Earth's number one could be easily defeated by someone, then what would he and Master Shen be counted as in the eyes of others? I don't know, that person is of mysterious origin. I later searched, but there was no such person in the martial arts world. Mercenary Tao sighed. The most powerful and greatest schools in Earth's martial arts world were the Turtle School and the Crane School, inherited from Master Mutato. Many experts could be found in both these schools. Sigh, one of them mentioned Korin Tower. Do you think they came from sacred land of Korin? Master Shen asked. Dot. 
Is that the tower that guy, Master Rashi, climbed? How can there be someone in that place? Mercenary Tao sneered. The fact that the sacred land of Koran was regarded as the sacred land of martial arts wasn't baseless because many schools have originated from there, however, Mercenary Tao doesn't believe that Koran Tower is magical. Only Master Rashi, that fool would have climbed Koran Tower. But, Mercenary Tao didn't know that Master Shen had also attempted the tower's challenge when he was young but gave up halfway. A few days later. Master, I want to go out with Tietzu for a period of time for training. Tian Xinyan bowed to Master Shen. Hmm. Master Shen held a teacup and took a sip of tea. He nodded, although it has not been many years since you joined the school, your innate talent is outstanding, so you have learned everything there is to learn. Therefore, it may not be a bad idea to go out and train for a period of time. Master Shen was very satisfied with his two students. His older student Tian Xinyan had only joined the school for a few years, but he has already learned the Crane School's secret skill, Doden Ray, which was comparable to Master Rashi's legendary level technique, Kamehameha. It couldn't be considered training if one doesn't experience several decades of hardship. Therefore, when Tian Xinyan proposed to go out on his own, Master Shen readily agreed. After you go out, speed up your training, and if you run into someone from the Turtle School, ruthlessly teach them a lesson for me. Yes, Master. Tian Xinyan nodded vigorously, walked out from the entrance of the building together with Tietzu, went down the spiraling mountain road, and quickly disappeared into the hazy mist. In the early hours of a slightly cold autumn's day, a cold wind blew. Together with the perplexing gloomy weather, tiny lights flickered in the middle of the mountain. Chapter 183 Muying Reminiscing As time flew by, the passing of spring signaled the imminent arrival of winter. In the blink of an eye, it had been five years since the Scions moved to planet Hongshan. In these past five years, the most remarkable change was the experiences of the Scions who had come from planet Vegeta. That year, when the Scions fled to planet Hongshan in panic, their numbers were trifling less than 15,000. However, after five years of development, and as more and more babies were born, the number of Scions began to rise gradually. Now, they had a population of 18,000 people. As the young children will grow up, the number of adult Scions will increase. Naturally, other than the population increase, the overall strength of planet Hongshan had also undergone earth-shattering changes. Planet Hongshan had a lot of outstanding Scions who in the past five years had benefited from the excellent training environment on the planet and increased their strength greatly. As the members of the 12 divisions of the Special Battle Squadron grew up, which includes Xiaoya, Xiling, and the others, there are currently, on planet Hongshan, 7 Scions at the Super Warrior level, and 300 Scions at the Elite Warrior level. This extent of growth, though compared from two years ago has slowed down, however compared with the peak period of planet Vegeta's time, not only has their strength fully recovered, but it couldn't even be compared to that time. Planet Hongshan's strength had now stabilized, and they would require a special opportunity, so they could keep growing stronger in the future. Otherwise, they won't make any more major breakthroughs. In the boundless night sky, the stars were numerous like beans scattered on a black screen, their glow was resplendent and crystal clear. Starlight flickered about haphazardly, like a picture scroll slowly being unfurled. In the quiet darkness. Suddenly, a bright light streaked across the night sky, it was a small silvery grey spaceship. Muying was a scion who has just recently reached adulthood. His latent talent was average just enough to be considered middle level. But, this didn't stop him from working hard for his future because he believes that his hard work would surely net him satisfactory results. On planet Hongshan, this point had already been proven many times. A lot of warriors who didn't have good latent talents still became elite warriors after hard work. The great Sir Ziaya and the scion hero, Mr. Bardock, were the best examples. Both Sir's latent talent couldn't be said to be outstanding, especially Mr. Bardock, it is said that he was born as a low-level warrior, but now he was one of the few super warriors among the Scion's best warriors. Right, last time, when Sir Ziaya had given a lecture to everyone, he had said when heaven is about to confer a great responsibility on a person, it will first fill his heart with suffering, toil his sinews and bones, and expose his body to hunger. Mr. Bardock had undergone such tempering and grew from a low-level warrior to his current super-warrior level. However, the term low-level warrior was considered strange, so no one called it that, instead, everyone uses the term ordinary warrior. Muying found the term ordinary warrior much more pleasing. 
warriors were judged based on their strength and not the grade of their bloodline. Although outsiders may consider the aforementioned method of classification as simple and crude, and not practical and realistic, however different civilizations have different way of thinking. In Wiang's view, this method was the best to judge. Six years ago, Wiang was still quite young, only 12 years old. As he was born a low-level warrior, he only had battle power around 500, which was considered average amongst low-level warriors. However, Muying was very fortunate that Great Sir Ziaya included his family in the first group of people to transfer to planet Hongshan. Muying could still recall that day, it was a scorching hot noon, and the air was a little dry. Back then, he had just returned after completing a squad mission when his parents asked him to follow them to a hot and dry oasis on planet Vegeta. They arrived and proceeded to wait there. The weather was hot and the wait was boring. However, there were a lot of scions waiting around the same spot. It was as if something big was going to happen. Muying could still clearly recall everything that happened that day. Now, thinking about it, he felt that he had been really very lucky that day. That was the first time he saw Sir Ziaya, who was younger than him yet had extraordinary abilities. Muying had no idea what training Sir Ziaya had undergone, as before that day he hadn't imagined that Scions could become so powerful. Sir Ziaya had used a magical ability to bring everyone to their current home planet Hongshan. Immediately after he arrived at planet Hongshan, its immense gravity almost caused Mu Ying to faint his body couldn't even move. It took him a long time before he could finally adapt to the pressure. Sir Ziaya said that this was the new home of Scions. When he heard Sir Ziaya's words, Mu Ying could only feel his doomsday approaching. After that he began to live on planet Hongshan. Until, a year later, a large number of Scions appeared on planet Hongshan. They brought the news that Frisia had destroyed planet Vegeta. When Mu Ying heard this, he heaved a sigh of relief, and had lingering fears. Only 10,000 out of a million Scions escaped. Truly tragic ah! Afterwards, Sir Ziaya publicly announced that he would gather planet Hongshan's Guardian Corps and train special battle squadrons. Unfortunately, at that time, Mu Ying's strength was too weak, so he didn't qualify for the selection. Hence, he immersed himself in training for many years, and as a result, Mu Ying's battle power continued to rise steadily. And just a year ago, a new opportunity appeared before Mu Ying. Sir Ziaya and Planet Onction's top-level personnel jointly announced that they would hold a planet-wide martial arts assembly in 10 years and another in 20 years. The top three would receive, in addition to generous rewards, a bottle of mysterious spring water. Although Mu Ying had no idea what the spring water was, he still decided to firmly grasp the opportunity. For Scions, pursuing honor is different from ordinary people. There are many Scions who have same plans as Mu Ying. Since the announcement, every Scion had been filled with a sense of urgency, so they all trained fiercely with all their strength, so they could win the martial arts assembly being held in ten years. In reality, there had been many impressive examples of people with poor bloodline succeeding in turning the tables, and these had greatly motivated Mu Ying. He believed that he could become a powerful warrior, like Bardock and other heroes, as long as he works hard enough. So, in order to temper himself, Mu Ying is currently carrying out a mission outside with his father and uncle. Clang clang clang. The sound's wine glasses knocking against each other jolted Mu Ying out of his reverie. He turned around and saw several middle-aged scions, who were brimming with energy, drinking wine, and eating meat. They were Mu Ying's father and several uncles. They had carried out several missions together. Mu Ying's father and uncle had violent temperaments, and their most favorite things to do were, drinking alcohol, eating meat, and fighting. Although they looks like messy drunkards, they became dazzling unsheathed swords when they are fighting. Mu Ying, don't just sit there and think, come over and drink together with us. Are there really scions as shy as you are? Mu Ying's father yelled at him when he noticed him sitting alone, lost in thoughts. This time, after they complete this mission, they would get a generous reward which would be enough for them to be unrestrained for a period of time. Nowadays, Planet Hongshan has the support of Feidea people in technological field, while in the economic field, Planet Bakuf's Hoi Poi capsule business was getting more and more popular, gradually becoming famous in the East area. The scions of Planet Hongshan could now afford to eat, drink and enjoy fights, whenever they wanted. The level of comfort that they enjoyed was apparent. This couldn't be compared to their time on planet Vegeta. All Scions, including Mu Ying's father, were very satisfied with their current life. Really? I won't drink alcohol. I would rather spend the time training a little more. Mu Ying spoke solemnly. 
The spaceship that they are using to carry out this mission had been bought with the commission they earned from previous several missions. The Silvery Grey spaceship was the latest product of the Fadea people. Not only was it fully equipped for living, but it also has a hibernation cabin installed. Additionally, it also has a gravity machine used for training. It was equivalent to a basic level training room that had been adjusted to 2-0x gravity. It was suitable for Mu Ying whose battle power had reached 5,000. Chapter 184, Energy Responses Ahead Ha ha ha! Don't pressure Mu Ying, his goal is to secure a place in the martial arts assembly happening in 10 years' time. Nowadays, there are many scions also working hard, so how would he dare to relax, ah? An uncle spoke casually and bit off a chunk of pig's trotter. But, it won't be easy to secure a spot, so Mu Ying still has to work hard. Someone encouraged. They were all part of the first group of low-level warriors who had been evacuated to planet Hongshan. When they were young, they didn't possess good foundations, and they were currently way past their prime of battle power increasing, they couldn't improve much through training any longer. And it seems Mu Ying, the younger generation, was close to catching up to their current level of strength. Ha ha ha! Don't say it, don't say it! Mu Ying's father roared with laughter. As Mu Ying's father, he clearly knew what his son's goals were, and has always been supportive. And now that his son's battle power was quickly catching up to his, he felt even more satisfied. It would be great if his son, Mu Ying, could break through 10,000 in the future and become an elite warrior. This would have him bragging rights when he was with his friends. Oh, by the way, how much longer before we arrive at our destination? Mu Ying's father turned around and asked. We still have to travel for three days. That place is very close to the north area, and there are not many planets close to it. The scion who was responsible for piloting the spaceship looked at the star chart and answered. There was a very expansive void in the region bordering the north area and east area. It acted like an invisible ribbon and completely separated the two starfields. It would take several months of flying to cross such a void, even with the most advanced spaceship. Well, this time, the difficulty of the mission is not high but you all must still brace up and keep your guards up at all times. That is only natural, after all, we are all seasoned warriors. Several middle-aged scions chatting and drinking made for a bustling scene. Mu Ying who was watching them laughed, such scenes were already common occurrences for him. Therefore, he got up and left the room, changed into his martial arts clothes, and began training. A few days later, the spaceship arrived at their destination. It was an average planet that was in the midst of civil war. Normally, Galactic Patrol Organization wouldn't intervene in civil wars that occurred on average planets, however, the Commerce Alliance's forces seemed to have secretly meddled in this particular civil war. Although Galactic Patrol Organization couldn't match the might of the Universe Commerce Alliance, they still had some power within the galaxy. Therefore, after this incident happened, they issued a mission to the mercenaries of the East Area, put down the rebellion. Ultimately, this mission was accepted by planet Hongshan in the East Area. Planet Ike was an average planet. Although its inhabitants possessed over 1,000 battle power, their strength was limited, so when a strong side Mu Ying and the others intervened, they were quickly able to suppress the situation. A few days later, after making sure the rebellion wouldn't happen again, Mu Ying and the others began their journey back, as their mission had been completed. They planned to return to planet Hongshan to rest and reorganize, they doesn't plan to accept any mission anytime soon. As their commission was enough to last them a while, they discussed and agreed to upgrade their spaceship and add a large gravity machine. The plan seemed promising and everyone felt relaxed. But, halfway through their journey, sharp warning alarms from their ship's energy detection device jolted everyone from their rest. Beep beep beep. It had detected an energy response ahead. What happened? Everyone rushed to the pilot's cabin after being jolted awake by the alarm. The spaceship's pilot pressed various buttons in the cockpit and said, a lot of energy responses has been discovered ahead in the starry sky. It seems there are aliens fighting. How much is their energy's strength? Mu Ying asked. As they were too far away, they couldn't sense the other side's auras. Wait a minute. It's displaying, there are 15 energy sources, 10 of them are emitting a battle power around 6,000, and the other 5, are above 10,000 battle power. The Scion pilot wiped his sweat, and said with disbelief. What? 10,000 battle power. The expressions of Mu Ying and others changed. They wouldn't have worried if the enemies were ordinary, however, they were at the elite warrior level, they weren't the enemy's match at all. Is there any way to avoid them? 
Mu Ying's father asked with a grave expression. No, the other party has already found us. Oh no, they are approaching us the pilot suddenly shouted. Then, there is no other way. Everyone be quiet. Put on your gear and prepare to fight. After speaking, Mu Ying's father headed towards the storage room. Upon seeing this, everyone's faces sank, and they quickly donned their battle armor. As they were in space, and with no planets nearby, they could only put on their small breathing apparatus to avoid suffocating. The breathing apparatus was only the size of a mask and didn't impede during battle when worn. Phew! The silvery-gray spaceship began to slow down and when it came to a complete stop, the several scions floated out of it after which the spaceship turned into a hoi poi capsule. Since they couldn't flee from aliens with battle powers above 10,000, they decided to put away their ship as soon as possible, as it was a conspicuous target. Everyone, be careful! Mu Ying's father shouted. As the saying goes, the one who approaches surely has bad intentions, as no one with good intentions would come. As they didn't know who the approaching enemies were, the Scion squad were prepared for the worst. They acknowledged Mu Ying's father's warning with a nod and entered battle mode, waiting. Mu Ying, are you afraid? His father asked. Not afraid. Mu Ying's face was slightly pale, but he clenched his teeth and answered. Good, that's my son. Mu Ying's father laughed heartily. Soon, two figures flew over from the distance, and in the blink of an eye, suddenly arrived before them. It was a middle-aged burly man, who was more than two meters tall, and a green-haired alien. They donned a small breathing apparatus on their face. However, the scions cared more about the battle powers of the two figures than their appearance. How could it be possible? Their battle powers are 18,000 and 14,000. Mu Ying and the others cried out in alarm. Their hearts sunk, their faces were suffused with gloominess. The other side's battle power far exceeds them. It seemed that it would be difficult for them to even get a chance to flee. Boss Dudunjia, these people, do they not look somewhat familiar? Suddenly, the green-haired alien turned and reminded his companion. Oh, really? The middle-aged burly man touched his head and pondered. Indeed. He did find them somewhat familiar but couldn't remember where he had seen them before. They seem to be scions. What, you are saying that they are scions? Startled, the tall burly fellow, Dudunjia, opened his eyes widely and carefully scrutinized them, and sure enough, he saw a tail coiled around their waists. Um, they really are scions. Suddenly, Dudunjia's face became cloudy, as though he had just recalled a painful memory. Suddenly, his body trembled and he burst into laughter before flying over to Mu Ying. Hey! It is Sion Brothers, ah! It was a misunderstanding, misunderstanding. I thought you were the aliens that we had been teaching a lesson to. Dudunjia spoke in an amicable manner. They may be forgiven as they were also warriors hired by the Galactic Patrol Organization. If the experts back on planet Hongshan found out that they had bullied their people, they would most certainly not have a good time. You are. Mu Ying was confused by Dudunjia's 180-degree change in attitude. He thought that a fierce battle would erupt, but unexpectedly, the other person's attitude was good, so he carefully asked on the public channel via a portable communication device. Ha ha ha, we are the Dudunjia Battle Squadron. You know, we had visited planet Hongshan several years ago. Dudunjia replied with a loud laughter, however his words contained a tinge of embarrassment. But... Mu Ying and the others who were in a state of high tension missed it. Mu Ying doesn't know who Dudunjia was, but his father pondered for a bit and recalled that the other side had really visited planet Hongshan a few years ago. So, they are not enemies. Realizing this point, the several scions' expression relaxed, as if a huge stone had been unloaded from their hearts. So mister, what are you all doing? It seems that there are people fighting ahead. Mu Ying came to himself and asked in a serious tone. Oh. Nothing. It's just some little guys who don't seem to have eyes on their head, Dudunjia laughed heartily and said, I don't know where they came from. I, Dudunjia, am famous in the mercenary circle, yet they don't even know me. Do you want to come and have a look? Those insects are so weak that they couldn't stand two to three hits before they collapsed. Dudunjia's gong-like voice reverberated through the communication device as he extended an invitation. Mu Ying and the Scion crew glanced at each other. They were indeed interested in having a look, so they nodded. Ha ha ha, come with me. Dudunjia and green-haired Sijin lead the way, while Mu Ying and others followed. Soon, 
they arrived at an expanse of the starry sky and saw several damaged spherical spaceships floating around, and their fragmented parts floating in outer space. Chapter 185, Frisia's Subordinates After seeing these broken spherical spaceships, the Scions' faces suddenly changed. They were extremely familiar with these spaceships, after all, back then on planet Vegeta, they each had one. What's wrong, do you know those people? Dudunajay's heart lurched when he noticed the Scion's expression change and he muttered to himself, the people that I taught a lesson wouldn't happen to have any connection with Scions, right? Mu Ying's father solemnly nodded, these spherical spaceships probably belong to a force that we know very well. Mr. Dudunjiya, can you bring me to look at those people? They may be the subordinates of the Scion's archenemy. It's fine if they weren't Scion's relatives. Dudunjiya grinned and said, okay, come with me. Dudunjiya proceeded to lead them to look at the aliens captured by his squadron. The aliens were all dressed in a brown battle armor, the armor protruding from both shoulders. This was similar to the design of battle armor of the North Area's Frost Demon race, there were no armors similar to it in the East Area. When he saw the aliens who resembled dinosaurs, Mu Ying's black eyes burned with hatred, and he spoke with a cold voice, these people are most likely Frisia's subordinates. I didn't expect Frisia to have extended his claws to the East Area. Frisia Force was located in the southern region of the North Area which was very close to the center of the galaxy, and around a year's distance away from the East Area. If he was seeing the Frost Demon race design battle armor in the East Area, then they are most likely to be Frisia's subordinates. You are Frisia's subordinates. Mu Ying stepped forward and asked coldly. If you know that we are King Frisia's people, then be sensible and quickly let us go. Those aliens snorted as they talked tough. When they looked up and got a clear look at Mu Ying and the others, their expressions turned to one of surprise, and they felt shocked in their hearts, Ah, oh, it's the Scions. Weren't they all destroyed by King Frisia? These aliens all have battle power around 6,000 and were members of Frisia's first corp. They had participated in the mission in which planet Vegeta was destroyed. So, with just a glimpse, they realized that these people, standing before them, were Scions who should have long since been destroyed. This is bad. There are still Scions living in the East Area. The aliens' hearts thumped. Things weren't looking good. As they were quite high level among Frisia's subordinates, they could have easily remained safe if they had kept a low profile, however, they were used to being rampant in the North Area and failed to exercise restraint on their temperaments when they arrived at the East Area recklessly killing and burning. Unfortunately, they had run into Dudunjiya's squad and were captured. He he he, it seems they really are Frisia's subordinates. Killing intent erupted out of several scions as though they had seen their prey. Dudunjiya frowned and asked, they are Frisia's subordinates. The reputation of the frost demon races in the galaxy was quite resounding. Dudunjiya who was from the mercenary circle had also heard of Frisia's name. Yes, they are Frisia's subordinates. Hold on, since you know King Frisia's name then quickly let us go, otherwise, King Frisia will not let you off. Their eyes turning around, the first corp aliens shouted, seemingly having found their confidence. Yes. King Frisia's name is enough to guarantee their safety. When they noticed Dudunjiya's expression change slightly, they believed that they had found something to rely on. At this time, shouting King Frisia's name, they could definitely save their lives. At least, they were certain that this tall and burly man wouldn't dare act rashly against them. Noisy. They hadn't thought that Dudunjiya would suddenly slap them in the face his eyes flashing with a cold light. Suddenly getting hit made the aliens feel confused. What's going on? Was this tall and burly man not afraid of the mighty King Frisia? How could he hit them? They didn't know that they were better off without mentioning Frisia, the moment they did, Dudunjaya became even angrier. After all, this was the East Area. Frisia's influence would have been somewhat effective in the North Area but it wasn't much in the East Area. Using Frisia's name to try and scare him. Just who did they think Dudunjaya is? The tall and burly man, Dudunjaya, also had a violent temper. He walked towards the aliens and ruthlessly beat them up, dispelling the resentment in his heart. Since they have an enmity with you Scions, I will hand them over to you. Dudunjiya smiled and said to Mu Ying and others. He waved his hand to gesture to his squad members to break the hands and feet of the aliens and then hand them over to Mu Ying and others. Dudunjia felt that it was worth it to make connections with planet Hongshan, using these aliens. Thank you. Mu Ying's father sincerely thanked him on behalf of the squad. Then. He took out the Hoi Poi capsule, transformed it back into a silvery-gray spaceship, and locked up the first corpse aliens inside. 
these hostages would be transported to planet Hongshan. It's all right. I, Du Dunjia, am a person of character. Du Dunjia waved and bid farewell to Mu Ying and the others, before immediately leaving together with the rest of his squad, Jack, Afyud, Sijin, Weiss. After Du Dunjia left, Mu Ying's father said, we should also hurry back, and notify Planet Onction's administration office, and have them make preparations. I didn't expect Frisia to also extend his claws to the east area. Yes. At this time, in the distant north area. Frisia's headquarters. Communication with the first corp members was lost after they were captured by Mu Ying and others. This time, in order to expand the east area's force, Frisia had sent more than 100 aliens from the first corp to the east area. But, except for the 10 aliens who were captured by Mu Ying, a large number of them weren't lucky and ran into some big forces headquarters who annihilated them. Only a few scattered people were left wandering around in the east area. King Frisia, we have lost contact with a majority of the first corp members, who were sent to the east area. Dodoria complexion was somewhat ugly. Crash. The sound of a wine glass shattering by hand resounded, and a blood-red liquid spilled onto the ground. Frisia sneered, and a suffocating, Chilly aura erupted out from his body which gathered into aura waves and spread out in all directions forming an oppressive domain. A long time later, he restrained his aura. Snort, Mr. Dodoria, it seems that it isn't the time to advance towards the east area, hey. Frisia's face was cold, and was speaking very politely, but Dodoria knew that, at this time, King Frisia was certainly enraged in his heart. If he wasn't able to gather information about the situation in the east area, then he certainly can't rashly send troops there. By the way, didn't those dead good-for-nothings send back any useful information? Frisia leisurely walked over. Dodoria swallowed and laughed awkwardly, the people of the First Corp were killed by some mysterious experts as soon as they entered the East Area, so... Useless. Naturally, the aliens who were able to join the First Corp weren't useless, however, they had been completely wiped out so quickly. This made evident that East Area's forces were very powerful, or the First Corp aliens were unlucky and were unbridled in their actions. In fact, Frisia could inquire about the East Area's concrete situation from the Universe Commerce Alliance, but he would have to pay a huge price, which couldn't be offset completely without conquering a few planets. Forget it, put the matter of conquering East Area to the side. And once more, send someone to scout out the situation. But, remember to send an expert this time. Frisia pondered for a while and said. Yes. King Frisia. Dodorius shuddered and wiped off the sweat on his head. This time, he had to supervise properly. It was best to send someone with a battle power above 10,000, otherwise, if there is another mishap, then he will not be able to shirk the responsibility. King Frisia, some time ago, there was someone from Sir Cooler's side who secretly entered into Your Majesty's area of influence, and that guy from Planet Slug has also extended his tentacles here. Dodoria reported. Oh. What's the movements at Cooler's side? There isn't much. They seem to be only looking for a certain planet and will soon go back, however, that old guy from Planet Slug is becoming gutsier. Frisia nodded and looked into the distance with a smile yet not a smile, since everything is okay, forget it. That Cooler guy even dared to go against father's orders. This king will eventually let him know how powerful I am. As for that old guy Slug, I don't think he has many days left to live. Frisia doesn't know why Namekians have a different kind of people, like Slug, but he knew that after living for so many years, that Namekians' lifespan should be quickly coming to an end. Zs, they are all weak races. How can they be equal to my noble frost demon race? Frisia thought happily. If there was no comparison, then there would be no harm, similarly, if there was no comparison, then there would be no superiority. Every time he saw those races struggling between life and death he feels very happy. Chapter 186, All Three Sides Moving Out Planet Hongshan, Mission Administration Office The administration office had been in a state of turmoil since they received the report from Mu Ying and the others. Even though Fadea people hates Frisia as Zarbon had attacked their home world they don't understand Frisia's horror. However, Scions were different, they had deeply experienced the horror and pain that Frisia brought when he killed people of their race. Therefore, when news of the appearance of Frisia's subordinates spread, Every Scion thought that Frisia was preparing to invade the East Area. The news surprised the Scions, who had survived the battle that resulted in Planet Vegeta's destruction, 
as the fires of long-lasting hatred burned in their hearts. Frisia who the Scions regarded as a nightmare-like existence had always been a thorn stuck in their throats. Their hatred would never be resolved unless they completely destroy Frisia's race. However, Frisia was too strong, the Scions, with their current strength, couldn't exact their vengeance on him. Therefore, the first corp members who had been caught became scapegoats that the Scions used to vent their hatred. One could only imagine the tragic end that awaited them. In a location close to planet Bahurt, East Area. After sailing for more than a year, the members of the Armored Squadron, Maddox, and Duke, gradually closed in on their destination planet Bahurt. Beep. The spacecraft's central computer beeped consecutively. About to reach the target, planet Bahurt. The estimated time of arrival is three days. About to reach the target, planet Bahurt. The estimated time of arrival is three days. As the beeping sounds continued, both Armored Squadron members, Maddox and Duke, awoke from their hibernation and stood up before moving around their bodies which issued creaking sounds. Hee <laughs> hee. Soon, we will reach planet Bahurt. I feel my bones have grown rusty after being in hibernation for over a year. Maddox exercised his wrists and said to Duke. Maddox, contact Captain Ilos and inquire about the situation on their side, Duke said as he licked his lips with his lizard-like tongue. Captain Ilos had gone to planet Donk, which was much closer than planet Bahurt. Therefore, he should have already obtained some information from planet Donk. Maddox laughed and replied, Right, right, I will ask him now. Beep. 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 The call connected, and Maddox quickly got in touch with Ilos. After Maddox hung up, his eyes revealed a fiery glow. Captain Ilos informed me that they didn't discover any trace of the Tree of Might on planet Donk or the other two planets in the North area. So, Tree of Might is most likely on planet Bahurt. Duke gulped, his eyes glowing. Tree of Might is a very magical plant, it is said to be a type of divine plant. Therefore, it is usually impossible for two Trees of Might to appear simultaneously. The probability of the Tree of Might being located on planet Bahurt had increased greatly since it wasn't on planet Donk and the other two planets. Hurry up. Let the spaceship advance at full speed. I can't wait to arrive at planet Bahurt. Feeling that his tongue was dry, Duke quenched his thirst with a glass of water. Finding the Tree of Might would be a great achievement. He couldn't wait. Well, spaceship, advance at full speed. As soon as he spoke, a beam of light flashed past in the dark void. The small spaceship rapidly streaked through the starry sky like a meteor. Three days later, Armored Squadron's spaceship approached the galaxy where planet Bahurt was located. The galaxy was still young that was burning with endless brilliance and heat, nourishing a yellowish-brown planet situated in a distant habitable area. Look! What is that? When the spaceship neared planet Bahurt, Maddox suddenly pointed at an umbrella-like object that was protruding out of the side of the planet. It was a huge plant. One could clearly see the giant tree even from outer space. Its trunk looked extremely sturdy and had numerous crooked branches extending in all directions. Below the ground, its sturdy roots permeated the planet's crust, absorbing the life force of the entire planet. The planet which used to be suitable for life had now turned yellowish-brown, and large expanses of its land had turned into deserts. Once the tree of mites fruits ripened, the planet would become completely barren within several hundred years gradually turning into a dead planet. Yes. That must be the tree of might. Maddox and Duke looked at each other and saw burning excitement in each other's eyes. Although they hadn't seen the Tree of Might before, it fits the tree's description in documents. The spaceship gradually approached planet Bahurt and quickly passed through its atmosphere. Since Tree of Might was growing here, the planet's atmosphere has become thin. As they approached Tree of Might, it rapidly became larger, causing them to sigh in amazement at its size. Its enormous branches blotted out the sky as though they were thick clouds, depriving the ground of sunlight. Orange fruits the size of a clenched fist hung at the intersection between branches and leaves. The fruit had still not ripened. Hurry up. Contact King Cooler. We have found Tree of Might and its fruits on planet Bahurt. Yes. In the faraway northern region of the North Area. A message was delivered that caused the entire Cooler's palace to seethe with excitement. A purple alien hurriedly ran into the palace and kneeled before Cooler, King Cooler. Sir Maddox and Sir Duke of the Armored Squadron have found the Tree of Might on planet Bahurt. Swoosh. Cooler suddenly stood up from his throne, his sandstone armor glowing with a resplendent white light. Cooler laughed heartily, and his clear voice reverberated across the palace. Good. Good. Prepare the spaceship immediately. 
This king will personally go to planet Bahurt. Cooler waved his hand and ordered the aliens at his side. Oh, by the way, tell both of them to properly guard the Tree of Might. If anyone makes trouble, they should kill them all without any mercy. After they have done this, I can reward them with some fruits of Tree of Might. Furthermore, restrict this information and ensure that nothing pertaining to the Tree of Might leaks out. Otherwise, don't blame this king for not showing mercy. King Cooler found it necessary to emphasize this threat as the information pertains to the Tree of Might's fruit. Yes. Everyone acted immediately while trembling with fear, soon, the spaceship was prepped and ready to depart for the East Area. Planet Slug Shortly after Cooler set off on a spaceship, the alien who had been closely monitoring Cooler's headquarter, immediately passed on the information. Slug held the information in his hands and laughed crazily, ha ha ha. The Tree of Might has finally been found. He <laughs> he. Cooler, you wouldn't have thought that I sent someone to monitor you. The one who ultimately gets the Tree of Might's fruit will surely be me. It is a legendary fruit formed from the life force of an entire planet. After eating it, I can definitely become young. As long as I have a sufficiently long life, the Frost Demon race will surely die by my hands someday. Slug thought while filled with confidence. Then, he ordered to march towards the East Area. Planet Slag was closer to the East Area so he could certainly reach before Cooler. At the same time, in the eastern part of the north area. All the information had been collected and was placed atop King Cold's desk. As King Cold read the report, his scarlet pupils flashed with a cold light, and his purple lips curled up, revealing a cruel expression. Chapter 187, Scientals Maddox and Duke who were on planet Bahard had no idea that the information, regarding their discovery of the Tree of Might and its fruit that they had sent to Cooler, had set the entire North Area's forces astir. While, they were feeling ecstatic that they had performed an outstanding service, and were fantasizing of when they would receive extra credits from King Cooler. King Cooler had just now sent back a message, which contained an order asking them to properly guard the Tree of Might. Thus, after receiving the instructions, they obviously didn't dare be careless. They knew that the information regarding the Tree of Might's existence couldn't remain bottled up forever, and it would certainly draw the attention of the surrounding starfields. The fruit was about to ripen, and if it gets stolen before King Cooler arrived, they'd to definitely shoulder the blame. When Cooler's angry appearance comes to their minds, they shuddered. If they weren't careful, they would lose their lives, ah. Therefore, they remained in a state of combat readiness and carefully guarded the Tree of Might. However, the Tree of Might was too huge, so they couldn't possibly keep an eye on every nook and cranny of it. Fortunately, Although planet Bahard was suitable to live, there were no civilizations on the planet. The Tree of Might's fruit hasn't ripened yet, however, it should be close to ripening by the time King Cooler arrives. It seems that even the gods are aiding King Cooler. Maddox laughed, as he gazed at the unripened fruit. That's true, when that time comes, King Cooler will become the ruler of the entire North Area, and he has even promised to reward us with some fruits when all of this is done. Duke licked his lips, and his pale, golden, erect beast-like pupils flickered. The numerous fruits on the Tree of Might were well within their reach, however, King Cooler's Might made them give up any ideas of taking even half a step forward let alone overstep their boundaries. Suddenly, the glass monocle-type detector beside their ears began making beeping sounds that attracted their attention. Startled, Maddox said with surprise, weird. Why did the energy detector suddenly start beeping? Could there still be other living beings on planet Bahurt? Wait, let me see. Duke tapped on the energy detector beside his ear. It beeped, and a series of data highlighting the energy source suddenly appeared on the lens. Wow! There really is a little mouse hidden on planet Bahurt, after a while, Duke indifferently smiled. He pointed in a direction and informed, the energy source has battle power close to 17,000, and is about 40 kilometers away from here. Oh! Interesting! This battle power it seems that we have an expert nearby. Maddox exclaimed with a hint of admiration, it just so happens that my hands and feet have somewhat gotten rusty, let me finish off that little mouse. As you wish. Duke shrugged, letting Maddox do whatever he wants. A pitiful 17,000 battle power doesn't really interest him. Good. Maddox laughed heartily as soon as Duke assented. He nodded at Duke and soared into the sky, before shooting off in the direction of that hidden little mouse. In the blink of an eye, he had disappeared into the horizon. Duke shook his head helplessly and found a comfortable position atop a huge branch of the Tree of Might, he proceeded to lay down and prepared to sleep. 
After all, Maddox alone could easily handle that insignificant little thing possessing 17,000 battle power. At the same time, more than 40 kilometers east of their position. The enormous branches of the tree of might also blotted out the sun and sky here. The thick leaves resembled an enormous unfurled umbrella blocking out the light. Sunlight couldn't pass through, causing the down below to appear dark and cool. However, the energy source on Maddox's energy detector flickered consecutively, which was very bright. Soon, Maddox found his target in the middle of a huge branch. Ha ha ha. So it was hiding here. It didn't take long for this uncle to find it. After speaking, Maddox streaked towards the target. Maddox's harsh yell jolted the sleeping person on the tree branch awake. When the person saw Maddox who had suddenly appeared, his complexion changed, and he inquired with vigilance who are you? This is Uncle Tulls's territory. If you know your place, leave quickly. Tulls had kept watch beside the tree of might for many years. However, seeing that when the fruit was about to ripen, a troublemaker suddenly had pop out, Tulls expression was quite unsightly. However, after pondering over it carefully, he still left some leeway in his words. Oh, you can really talk big. Maddox was just about to taunt, however, after getting a clear look at the other person's appearance, he was surprised, hey, you're only a little fellow. Bastard. You dare to look down on Uncle Tulls. Tulls was immediately enraged by Maddox's words. Initially, he had wanted to remain well behaved, but his heart now burned like gunpowder, he was angry. Maddox looked on with interest as if watching a clown's clumsy performance. Looking down from above, and the feeling of having everything within his group, always brought Maddox an infinite amount of pleasure that left him feeling quite intoxicated. Aya. You are unexpectedly a scion. Weren't all of them destroyed? It seems that a fish managed to slip through the net. After noticing the brown tail behind Tulls, Maddox laughed out loud, A scion's battle power can actually reach 17,000? <laughs> Hehe. It seems that you have definitely eaten fruits from the Tree of Might. Snort. This uncle isn't the same as those scions from Planet Vegeta. That useless guy, King Vegeta, this uncle has already surpassed him. Turtles proclaimed with pride. Tulls was very pleased with himself. How could that trifling King Vegeta be his match? Fortunately for Tulls, he wasn't on Planet Vegeta when it was destroyed, thus, escaping the disaster. Afterward, Frisia deployed his subordinates to annihilate any surviving scions, but due to various coincidences Turtles was able to escape through the net. He had then wandered over to the East Area. At that time, as a low-level warrior, Tulls wasn't capable of protecting himself, so he acted extremely carefully, for fear of attracting anyone's attention. Until, one day, Tulls came across fruit of the magical tree of might on a deserted planet. After eating the fruit, his strength began to skyrocket, initially, his battle power that wasn't even 1,000, slowly rose to an astonishing 3,000. This left him feeling ecstatic. With a battle power of 3,000, Tulls was close to the middle of mid-level warrior. He realized that, if he can get more of these fruits, he could become a high-level warrior, or even a more powerful existence. At that time, wouldn't success just come naturally? Then he brought the seeds of the Tree of Might and carefully hidden himself on the relatively remote planet Bahert, and planted the seeds. When the tree grew and bore fruits, Tulls was able to consume more than a dozen ripe fruits, causing his battle power to soar to 17,000. He spectacularly transformed from an ordinary mid-level warrior to a universe-level warrior. At this point, the dormant ambitions in his heart were ignited. Looking at the innumerable fruits about to ripen, Tulls began to fantasize about the day when he'd become the emperor of the universe. Unexpectedly, other aliens had now arrived at planet Bahert, and Tulls realized that things weren't looking good. Kill him, so that the Tree of Might will remain a secret. As long as these fruits ripen, this uncle can dominate the universe. Tulls decided in his heart and immediately attacked first, hoping to gain the upper hand. However, Tulls had no idea that his opponent was a member of Cooler's armored squadron. If his opponent could be selected by Cool, then he definitely couldn't be someone ordinary. Maddox's battle power had reached 130,000, this was enough to make him look down on everything including the scion monkey making threatening gestures at him. Oh, you even dare to attack Maddox looked astonished, as he swayed lightly, just dodging Tulsa's every attack. Zs, these attacks strength is really only 17,000. It isn't even enough to scratch an itch on my body. Maddox sneered at Tulsa, feeling somewhat regretful. Suddenly, he extended his arm and caught Tulsa's fist. What? 
Tolls was shocked, and instinctively felt a sense of foreboding in his heart, the pores on his entire body couldn't help but tighten. Maddox chuckled and exerted strength into his palm which held Tolls' fist. Kaka. The sound of bones shattering could be heard, and Tolls gave a heartbreaking scream, he wobbled for a while and fell to his knees. Maddox haughtily looked down and sighed with disappointment. This scion couldn't even land a hit on me. He had barely warmed up, yet the scion monkey was already down. Sigh, these scions, useless wild monkeys. They even dared to presumptuously claim that they are a fighting race. Really too embarrassing. Boy, obediently accept your death. Sir Maddox has already gotten tired of playing with you. Maddox said without sparing Tolls a glance and began to condense a crimson energy wave in his hand. No, no. Tolls's pupils suddenly contracted. He hadn't accomplished his ambitions yet, and there were still numerous fruits on the tree of might that he hadn't eaten. He couldn't die like this. He raised his head and looked at the unripe fruits his heart filled with unwillingness. Chapter 188, Pseudo Super Scion Rumble The crimson energy wave hit the ground with a resounding roar, and a horrific blaze erupted very close to Tulls. A berserk whirlwind immediately followed, carrying within it a gust of swift and fierce wind blades, which caused the unripe fruits to sway wildly. After the raging winds subsided, the smoke gradually dispersed only leaving behind a sunken land and a charred corpse. Maddox laughed out loud and thought, it was just killing a little monkey. Really boring. Then, he swayed and flew back to Duke's position. How was it? Has that little mouse been killed? Duke, who was lying down on a tree branch and resting, opened his eyes and casually asked Maddox, who had just returned. Maddox tapped the detector beside his ear and landed next to Duke, it was just a little guy with less than 20,000 battle power. Finished him in just 2-3 seconds. Hey, do you know who that guy was? It was actually a scion. Scion? Impossible. How can a scion have such high battle power? Duke froze, in disbelief at Maddox's words. In the past, the strongest scion on planet Vegeta had only a little over 10,000 battle power. In the eyes of genuinely strong experts, their race would only be considered as not bad, and they would definitely not be counted as experts. It really was a scion it should be a fish that slipped through the net when planet Vegeta was destroyed. Hehe. <laughs> Scions can't possess that much battle battle power, unless, Duke looked up at the little fruits hanging between the branches and leaves and said with a delighted look on his face, even a little scion was able to upgrade to this level. As expected, it seems the fruit of this tree of might is as magical as the legends portray. Yet. Then, we will wait for King Cooler to arrive. Zs. We can only look at this many tree of might's fruits, but we can't try it right away, it's really unbearable, ah. Can't help it. These fruits are still not ripened, and even if they were ripened, do you dare eat them without King Cooler's consent? Makes sense. Unless they no longer desire to work under Cooler, then they could pick Tree of Might's fruits and hurriedly run away. Otherwise, with the eyesight that Cooler possess, he would easily be able to tell if they had eaten a fruit, would he not? Temptation in life. They obviously chose the latter. After which, they stopped talking. Time flew by, soon one year has passed. Armored squadrons Maddox and Duke were still fulfilling their duty and remained beside the Tree of Might, guarding against those who sought to pry into the matters here, while on the other side of the distant starry sky, the spaceships of Slug, Cooler, and King Cold hurried towards planet Bahurt. Meanwhile, on another planet, the atmosphere here was blistering hot as though it was on fire. The unusual high temperature caused the airflow to become distorted, and the clouds of dust floating in the sky were extremely dry. The scorching sun roasted the ground causing it to split open and form rugged, snaking cracks. The planet's gravity was also unusually high, which caused the scattered dust flying all over to soon disperse and drop back down to the ground like nails. In a cracked sunken depression, it was littered with air-dried, cracked rock fragments everywhere, and not far away, there were two beautiful girls attacking each other, while dripping with sweat. Ta-ta-ta! Numerous afterimages, which were barely visible, appeared on the mountain cliffs and in midair. Both girls gasped for breath, with sparkling beads of perspiration dripping down their cheeks. The beads of sweat that were about to land on the ground were quickly turned into steam. It was one big, and one little girl. The big girl was almost an adult with a 1.7 m tall body and amazingly long and slender limbs. Her body looked strong and healthy, yet it did not lose its gentleness and beauty, and her exquisite and delicate face seemed to have been carefully sculpted. 
The black hair behind her back was tied with a ribbon, and only a few strands of her beautiful hair were leisurely hanging down to her chest, giving her a valiant and heroic look. Dot. The height of the smaller, petite girl was close to 1.5 m tall. She looked delicate and pretty, but her face still retained some immaturity. She had a kind of face that could be confused for either a lowly and young girl, and this ambiguity oozed an overwhelming sense of seductiveness. These two girls were Xiling and Myers. Before leaving Earth two years ago, they entrusted the villa in the Peninsula City to launch to look after. Usually, they would only go back there when they had some free time, otherwise, they spent most of their time training on this scorching planet, which had a high temperature and immense gravity. Both of them have an unyielding personality. After they knew that Zaya's battle power had immensely exceeded theirs, they hardened their resolves and especially sought this harsh planet for training. In an instant two years passed, they kept training day and night. Sometimes, they would spar while they had heavy objects on their backs. Other times, they would train by themselves trying to challenge their own limits. In these two years, they continued to go through this hellish bitter training, without eating a single senzu bean. This made them feel really proud. They applied Zaya's words which he had repeatedly educated them with, no pain, no gain. Although they had no idea where Zaya had learned this profound principle from, they seriously pondered upon it and found that this sentence really makes sense. Xiling, what's your battle power? Myers asked as she wiped the beads of sweat on her cheeks. Xiling removed the weight on her body and immediately felt the vast surging energy in her body, and she replied, if I go all out, about 750,000 battle power. What about you? Wu, my battle power is only 500,000. The gap with Zaya is getting bigger and bigger, Myers unwillingly bit her lip. There was no happiness on her face because her battle power had increased. It was already beyond imagination for a scion to increase their battle power by several hundreds of thousands in just two years. However, Xiling and Myers were still not satisfied. Without comparison, there is no harm. Although the speed at which they progressed was extremely fast, it couldn't be compared to Zaya's progress speed. Zaya has more than 7 million battle power. Speaking of this, they couldn't help but sigh. After Scions hit puberty, their strength will usher in a golden phase, which is an excellent opportunity for them to temper themselves. They thought that their girl's battle power was increasing at a considerably fast rate, but when compared with Zaya's battle power, the gap was only getting bigger and bigger. I really don't know how Zaya trains. He obviously trains same as us. Why is his battle power increasing so fast? Is it because we haven't fought an actual battle? Xiling's smoky, elegant eyebrows puckered up slightly. She remembered the fight with the armored squadron, that was the first time she got seriously injured in a fight, and after she had recovered, her battle power had advanced by leaps and bounds. Xiaoyu recounted his experiences in Universe 6 to her. The reason why his battle power has increased so quickly, and to such a large extent was because of the day and night fighting in the tempering altar. How about we also go and carry out a mission? Meyer's eyes lit up. She proudly puffed out her chest and continued, I haven't suffered an injury, even once, since I was born. Xiling rolled her eyes, forget it, fighting is not the same as sustaining injuries. What are you so proud of? Meyer's mouth was wide open as she blinked her eyes, her beautiful little face revealing a smile. Suddenly, a terrifying aura descended from the sky, without any warning and the entire planet began to shake violently. Xiling and Myers almost fell to the ground. What's going on? This formidable aura. Xiling appeared shocked, and as she turned to look, she saw that Myers was looking pale. They found it difficult to withstand the imposing aura that had powerful coercion. This is Zaya's key. How did he suddenly become so strong? Myers shouted in disbelief. The powerful and imposing aura made the two girls feel as though they were in the midst of turbulent waves in a vast ocean, and a little wave would easily wipe them out at any time. This wasn't something that 7 million battle power could bring about. Did Zaya once again made a major breakthrough? Xiling and Myers looked at each other and saw looks of shock on each other's face. Immediately, they dashed toward Zaya's direction. Thousands of kilometers away, a barren plateau. The imposing aura was threatening like knife blades as it ruthlessly swept out in all directions. The fierce winds whistled, and everything in this place was crushed into dust. Kaka. The land suddenly sunk by more than 10 meters, and a huge crater, with a diameter of several hundred meters, was cracked open. A golden flame burned brightly at the center of the enormous crater. Hwa wah. 
Zayaya's upper body was naked, and his black hair fiercely fluttered upwards. His body was covered in a golden flame, as numerous fragments of gravel broke away from the planet's gravity and hovered in midair. After a long time, he converged his aura, and the frightening aura disappeared as everything once again turned calm. I still can't break through to Super Scion mode, it seems I am lacking the right opportunity. Zayaya contemplated while standing there. In the original work, Sun Goku only had 3 million battle power, but he broke through to Super Scion, whereas he has more than 7 million battle power, yet he hadn't been able to break through. Although I haven't broken through to Super Scion, I have luckily attained Pseudo Super Scion. Zayaya laughed. His battle power was almost 30 million in Pseudo Super Scion mode. Although this increase couldn't be compared with the one he'd gain in Super Scion mode, it was still very powerful. Chapter 189, The Turning Point for a Breakthrough Just as Zayaya was lost in thoughts, Xiling and Myers hurried over to his location. While hovering in the sky, both girls could see Zayaya standing in a huge crater, and their faces donned a surprised expression, Zayaya, why did your key became so powerful just now? Did you transformed into a Super Scion? Both girls, Xiling and Myers, had heard Zayaya mention Super Scion before that was in existence above Ordinary Scion. Super Scion is a very powerful method of transformation that causes strength to explosively increase by dozens of times under normal state. Previously, Zayaya felt that his strength has encountered a barrier that he couldn't cross, so while Xiling and Myers spent most of their time training, Zayaya didn't stay idle and was preparing to break through to Super Scion. Since they had known of Zayaya's plan, when the strong aura erupted previously, Zayaya and Myers first thought that Zayaya had successfully broken through, this is why they had made that inquiry just now. Zayaya leisurely glanced up at them and smiled, I had a small breakthrough, but unfortunately I still couldn't transform into the legendary Super Scion. While speaking, he sighed in his heart. As expected, breaking through to Super Scion isn't easy, otherwise, this body transformation wouldn't be a legend. A Super Scion hadn't appeared for a long time so a lot of scions were even doubtful of its existence. What? This is considered a small breakthrough? The aura that erupted out of you almost made me unable to breathe. Myers said, greatly dissatisfied in her heart at Zayaya's remark. It was obviously so powerful, yet he is saying that it's just a small breakthrough. Really too infuriating. Upon hearing her, Zayaya spread out his hand towards Myers. Pseudo Super Scion really couldn't be regarded as Super Scion, what he had said wasn't wrong. Don't spout nonsense. Zayaya, quickly let us take a look at your transformation. Xiling said, interested. Right, right, Myers also began to clamor. Zayaya thought about it and nodded, okay, both of you stand a little farther away, the key in pseudo super scion mode is not easy to control. I am afraid that it will injure you. Although Xiling and Myers didn't understand his reason, they adhered to Zayaya's instruction and moved far away before concentrating all their attention on him. When he saw both girls move back, Zayaya slightly nodded and then began to adjust the aura within his body. After adjusting his state to the peak, he erupted. Huo! Huo! A golden blaze appeared around Zayaya, as a powerful and overbearing aura akin to a prehistoric creature suddenly swept across the entire planet. As he slowly launched Pseudo Super Scion transformation, Zayaya's battle power continued to break upper limits. 15 million. 22.5 million. 30 million. His black hair rose in the air uncontrollably, and a formidable aura shattered everything within a radius of a hundred meters. The ground began to sink, and the surrounding pebbles floated in midair as if they have lost gravity. This, this is the key in pseudo super scion mode. Myers put her hand in front of her forehead so as to withstand the violent shock waves while there was an unusual excitement on her face. Xiling also went all out to withstand the shockwaves, but her gaze remained fixed on the man in the middle of the imposing aura while shrouded in golden flames, Zayaya's key has increased by three times. This is the pseudo super scion transformation. Her eyes lit up, and a bright glow flickered in its depths. Under pseudo super scion mode, he has an entire 30 million battle power. Hwa! Oh, Zayaya retracted his aura and panted with weariness. Pseudo Super Scion transformation differs from the regular Super Scion transformation. It was somewhat like Kaioken, which brings a great burden on the body and consumes even more ki. Naturally, Pseudo Super Scion was the same. However, Zayaya's Pseudo Super Scion was somewhat different from Son Goku's Pseudo Super Scion. First, 
the power increase didn't reach the level that Sun Goku's did, and the increase in power was about two or three times of Kaioken. Second, and the biggest difference is that during Zaya's pseudo-body transformation, his pupil does not disappear, and he remains extremely clear-headed. Zaya's previous state may not said to be pseudo-super scion, instead, it was more like the transition between ordinary scion and super scion. Before he could find a way to transform into super scion, pseudo-super scion transformation would be a temporary means for Zaya to increase his battle power. So powerful. Zaya's key, just now, had reached 30 million battle power, Myers ran over and grabbed Zaya's hand, chattering non-stop. At the same time, she checked him up and down, trying to find out if there was any difference between the current Zaya and the previous Zaya. This transformation seems to exert a huge burden on your body, right? Xiling also walked over and asked with concern. She took out a handkerchief and handed it to Zaya to wipe his sweat. Zaya nodded lightly and said, Yes, this is not a normal transformation method. Just now, under Pseudo Super Scion, those strong energies also caused harm to me. Maybe I am still not proficient. It would be better to use it less in future. Xiling knitted her brows and said. Zaya chuckled lightly, don't worry. Although I hadn't directly transformed into Super Scion, I feel I am not that far away from it. Do you have any idea? Xiling inquired. I could feel it somewhat, however, I am not sure when I can pass through that barrier. Zaya scratched his head and said. Those who were destined to pass through this barrier would do so easily, while those who were not would try their hardest to pass through for a long time, but ultimately to no avail. A leaf before the eyes could shut out Mount Tai Asterisk The small leaf is very close to the eyes, blocking out the view of the beautiful scenery in the distance. Note Asterisk have one's view of the important overshadowed by the trivial. In the original work, Sun Goku's battle power reached a certain limit, but because of Krillin's death, he had broken through that barrier under extreme anger, while Vegeta, who because of his strong pride wasn't willing to be left behind Son Goku, and had broken through. They all used strong emotions to break through the boundary of Super Scion. However, Zaya believes that it should be only one of the critical moment to break through into Super Scion. Strong emotions could help a Scion break through, but it was not the only method. Zaya hopes to utilize his own power to naturally break through the boundary between Ordinary Scion and Super Scion. In his view, the reliance on extreme emotions was just one of the methods to forcibly break through. However, this method was more like overdrafting in advance or to say that it is borrowing the Super Scion's power, but one's physique still wouldn't be able to achieve the optimum level. Super Scion, who relies entirely on emotions to control the transformation can get powerful strength but it has to in fact undergo enormous trials, however, it still wouldn't be able to exhibit the true strength of Super Scion. Although they were both called Super Scion, Sun Goku's FRST time Super Scion transformation on planet Namek, and the Super Scion transformation after he returned from planet Yardrat were on two completely different levels. After staying on planet Yardrat for more than one year, his Super Scion transformation, before and after he returned from planet Yardrat, were completely different, and his mastery in Super Scion transformation was also different. The former was achieved through anger and there were so many times that he had excessively used his full potential. While the latter, after returning from planet Yardrat, was in a completely different state. During his latter transformation, he could most likely be called as a real super scion, after all, he was able to transform with great ease, and his body didn't have to endure any pressure from the transformation. Although it may take much longer to accumulate in the early days, Zaya believes that if he abandoned transforming using emotions, and instead use a transformation method that uses gradually filling his body to the limit, he would definitely be more powerful after transformation. Sufficient accumulation meant that the starting point of his transformation would be higher, resulting in a Super Scion state more powerful than Sun Goku and the others. Similar to Sun Goku's Super Scion state after he returned from planet Yardrat. He was able to freely control his Super Scion transformation and the key within his body. Now, that is a real expert. This wasn't just a matter of early transformation or late transformation, but increasing or decreasing the steps for transformation. In fact, Zaya already has his method, so he was not in a hurry to break through to Super Scion via emotions. After pondering this matter for a while, Zaya smiled at Xiling and Myers. You have to work harder, or I will leave you both even more far behind. I want to become stronger, but I don't know how to do it. Myers pouted. Her innate talent was not weak but her battle power seemed to have encountered a bottleneck. Thus, 
her improvement slowed down immensely. It may be because you are too impatient, you should relax properly by going outside for a stroll. Life needs proper balance between work and rest, so going out into the world to train can bring better enlightenment. Zayaya expressed his thoughts. You may have said this before. Um, it seems we really are somewhat impatient. Xiling nodded. You can't be rushed in your training. In fact, you are already unattainable existences in the eyes of others. As he remembered those scions on planet Hongshan who crazily worships Xiling and Myers, a smile hung on Xiaoya's face. Xiling's cheeks were slightly flushed as she looked at him, I can't control the attitudes of those ordinary people. Ha ha ha, let's go. We should go back since we have been training for so long. Xiaoya laughed out loud and stepped forward, before hugging Xiling and Myers. The two girls didn't resist, as Xiaoya launched instant transmission to leave. Planet Hongshan. Xiaoya's home. When Xiaoya and the others returned, the sky was slowly darkening, and the glow from the bright red sunset permeated the sky, resulting in a soft and beautiful sunset. As Xiaoya's home was amply luxurious, there were several bathrooms. Therefore, after they came back, they directly entered the bathroom. After washing away the sweat and dust from their bodies, they put on new clothes and walked out. I will first go and prepare a meal. Myers, come over and help. At her speaking, Xiling dragged Myers who was feeling bored towards the kitchen. After learning on Earth for a while, Xiling's cooking skills had finally made some progress. Xiaoya looked at the two girls getting busy in the kitchen, and soon the smell of the meal being cooked wafted over. Xiaoya sat on a comfy sofa and looked at the pendulum clock on the wall with a smile, days like these are quite good. Chapter 190, News Brought by Jaco The next day, at the crack of dawn, Xiaoya got out from under the blanket and glanced at the girl who was sound asleep beside him on the bed, with her back to him. The girl was sleeping sideways with one arm stretched out as her beautiful black hair were scattered over the pillow. A large part of the bedsheet had slid down, revealing the girl's slender arm, and the white skin on her back. After living together for so many years, Xiling had finally been eaten by him, she was tormented endlessly during last night's intense activities, so she was tired to her bones. Xiaoya gently pulled the blanket and covered Xiling before walking out of the bedroom. He proceeded to the training room and did a simple workout. The gravity machine in the training room was not switched on, keeping the planet's natural gravity. Although this low-intensity workout wasn't of any help to him, he still did it out of habit. He had serious expression as he executed every movement, integrating training into life, and a kind of profound artistic ambience was produced naturally. After two hours had passed, Zayaya stopped his workout and took a deep breath of air. His aura was smooth and steady, as if he hadn't done any intense exercises. He walked out of the training room with a towel, entered the bathroom for a shower, and then came to the dining hall. At this time, Xiling had prepared a sumptuous breakfast, and Myers, who sat on the side, was already eating. Upon smelling the sweet fragrance of the delicious food, Xiaoya's appetite was roused. While eating, he asked, Xiling, I haven't seen Uncle Adri these past two days. Xiling carried out a plate of food and said while faintly smiling, Father encountered a bottleneck during his training. Since he hadn't broken through for a long time, he went out with Uncle Brooke and the others to seek enlightenment for breakthrough. Oh. Zayaya nodded his head after listening to her, bowed his head and resumed eating. After Adri and others broke through 100,000 battle power and became super warriors, the speed at which they advanced slowed down immensely obviously not as good as before. Especially when their battle power got close to 150,000, they all encountered a bottleneck, and their power began to stagnate. Zayaya knew that Adri and the others had reached their limits, thus, it was very difficult for them to make any more breakthroughs. Before on planet Vegda, most high-level warriors had a limit of 8,000 to 9,000 battle power, and only a handful of high-level warriors were able to break through to 10,000 battle power by chance, and even fewer of them were able to exceed 10,000 battle power. After coming to planet Hongshan, the overall level of the Scions had greatly increased because Zayaya transmitted the key training method to them. Warriors who possessed 10,000 battle power or lower were referred to as ordinary warriors. However, Zayaya understood that the advantages and disadvantages of bloodline still existed, and it was only the level that had been increased by a lot. This limit appeared again when the Scions reached the elite warrior and even super warrior levels. Adri and the others, who were originally high-level warriors, encountered that bottleneck when they reached 150,000 battle power, and if they wanted to make a breakthrough, 
they would have to seek another opportunity. Suddenly ding dong. Ding dong. The doorbell rang consecutively. When they opened the door, they saw two sneaky little scions standing at the door. Larit, Elise, didn't you two go to participate in training? What are you doing here? Are you skipping classes? Xiling said. Surprisingly, the two little scions at the door were, Xiling's younger brother, Larit, and Bardock's youngest daughter, Elise. They were already four years old. At this age, on planet Hongshan, scions would begin to receive key training, and the sooner they learned it, the better they would be. All young scions, after three years of age, on planet Hongshan will begin learning to train Qi. Definitely not, sister. I am not skipping. Mom asked you and brother to go to Guardian Corps' observation center, it seems some guests are coming over. Larit pouted angrily and glared at Xiling. Xiling froze for a while before she said with surprise, who is coming over to planet Hongshan that warrants us to personally go. Xiaoya and Xiling were the most distinguished people on planet Hongshan. Usually, they didn't need to personally appear. The Guardian Corps' observation center and the administration office can naturally able to handle the visitors, properly. Uh, it seems to be people from the Galactic, something organization, Elise thought for a while and said. If it's someone from the Galactic Patrol organization, then let's go over there. Xiaoya, who had just received a notification from Charlene, said as he walked out with Myers. The Guardian Corps' observation center was located on the other side of the city. There are 1,000 people in Planet Onction's Guardian Corp, who are in charge of Planet Onction's security. With their speed, they arrived at the Guardian Corps observation center in the blink of an eye. Sir Zayaya, you are here. Charlene, who had been anxiously waiting with a group of people, quickly rushed forward to receive Zayaya and the others. Why did the Galactic Patrol organization send people here? Zayaya asked. Charlene shook her head, it's still unclear so far but if it were an ordinary matter, they would have used a communication device. They didn't have to send someone in person. I think there may be something especially important. Xiaoya nodded and sat down on a stone bench with Xiling. Myers felt bored, so she secretly slipped away to the training ground, and looked for other scions to compare notes. In fact, this was just an excuse for Myers to show off her strength. Soon, a small spacecraft landed, and a purple-skinned alien climbed out his clothes had the Galactic Patrol logo on it. It's Jaco. When he got a clear look at the person who had just arrived, Zayaya was surprised. He had last seen Jaco at the headquarters of the Galactic Patrol organization. At that time, Jaco had just returned from Earth after carrying out a mission and was getting reprimanded by Galactic King, because it seems he hadn't completed the mission. Speaking of Jaco, he had a somewhat strong supporting role in the later stages of the original work. He was good friends with Bulma's older sister, Tights, and also has a very good relationship with Dr. Brief's family. He is clearly weak, but still thinks about upholding justice. He is just like a cockroach, hard to kill. Ah, Mr. Zayaya, when he saw Zayaya from far away, Jaco immediately ran over to Zayaya's side, stood straight, and saluted. Zayaya glanced at Jaco and nodded. Why did Galactic Patrol send you over? Well, something big has happened. I don't know why, but Slug, Cooler, and King Cold together with their subordinates have come over to the East Area. Right now, they have entered the East Area's area of influence. Sir East Kai has issued an order to the Galactic Patrol, asking all the experts to come forward and stop them. Ah, I forgot to explain, Slug and the others are the overlords in the North Area. Jaco thought that Zayaya and others didn't know the identities of Slug and the others, so he talked incessantly and stated their origins. Stop. You don't have to say any more. I am very clear about those people's strength. Zayaya interrupted Jaco, as his heart became unsettled. Slug, Cooler, and King Cold, this three guys, who each dominates a region, had actually come to the East Area at the same time. It was no wonder that even East Kai himself had begun to worry. For the time being, he wasn't a match for Cooler and King Cold. Even if he became a super scion, he wouldn't be able to deal with them anytime soon. There was also that Slug, he should be the evil name Kian that Zayaya knew. Although Slug's strength was no match for Frisia's, it was still enough to dominate a region in the galaxy. Before Zayaya received a report from Fadea people that a group of people had entered the East Area, he did not expect them to be Slug, Cooler, and King Cold. Moreover, they had personally brought their squads with them. Go back, and tell the Galactic King that we, 
the Scions, will not participate in this matter. Ziaya waved his hand and refused the request of the Galactic Patrol Organization. Although Scions were war addicts, Ziaya also understood how to judge situations. Even if a lot of Scions went, they would still be unable to involve themselves with people of King Cold's level. Moreover, Scions couldn't survive in space, and this was an even bigger limitation. As the leader of the Scions, Ziaya couldn't let his people suffer casualties for no reason. Jaco opened his mouth to say something but held himself back in the end, Oh, I have already conveyed the news. Since you are not willing to go, forget it. You really shouldn't get involved in the battle between those monsters. After that, Jaco climbed into the spacecraft and was ready to leave. Jaco, if you have time, go to Earth. Tights have been looking forward to the time when you would take her on tours to various planets. Ziaya shouted towards Jaco. When he heard Ziaya mention Tights, Jaco froze for a while before he remembered that he had such a friend on Earth. He made an okay gesture with his fingers and left on his spacecraft. Chapter 191, Riga Visits Do you really not intend to get involved in this matter? Slug, Cooler, and King Cold are well-known powerful experts in the North area. They have mustered so many people and are poking their noses around in the East area. I feel that something bad is surely going to happen. After Jaco left, Xiling knitted her eyebrows and said to Ziaya. Something bad happening is a certainty. However, this time, the enemy is too strong, so it wouldn't be good to get involved. Ziaya replied in a serious tone as he watched Jaco's spaceship recede further into the horizon. At the present stage, Ziaya still doesn't want Scions to get involved in Slug and others' disputes so early on, because Scions' current weak physique couldn't stand the impact of such great storms. The weak needs to recognize their own position. If they rashly got involved in the fights of powerful experts, the most likely outcome would an end to their lives. Scions still had to accumulate strength and at least, wait until the emergence of a super Scion, then they could confidently challenge Slug and the Frost Demon race. After sending Jaco off, Ziaya was free, so he took a tour around every place on planet Hongshan. As the lush forests and rolling hills rapidly flashed past his eyes, Ziaya's face donned a look of satisfaction. The natural environment on planet Hongshan had always been protected, right from the start, thus, the original ecology remained as lush as it was before. Living on such a planet made people feel extremely delighted. The peaceful days passed by, and Scions continued to live intense and fulfilling days as usual. The disputes beneath the undercurrents of East Area hadn't affected planet Hongshan at all, or to say that in the Scions' territory, no force dared to act as they wish. After Ziaya and Xiling made their relationship clear, their interactions became more and more frequent. Especially Xiling. After she had gotten the delicious taste of sex, it was as though she had become addicted. Almost every night, she would shamelessly climb into bed and tangle with Ziaya till late night. With the constitution that the Scions possessed, after the initial shyness had worn off, the intensity of the succeeding activities could be well imagined. It was to the extent that it made Myers, whose room was next door, wasn't able to fall asleep every night, so next day, she would have bright red eyes and her spirits listless like a tree without moisture. Every time she looked at Ziaya and Xiling, her eyes contained a near-substantial, dark resentment. You are like this every day, how can I still sleep? Myers was almost driven mad. Day by day passed like this. Until one day, another unexpected guest visited Planet Hongshan. Mr. Riga, I really didn't expect you to come to Planet Hongshan. I don't know what you are here for. Ziaya smiled at the yellow-skinned alien in front of him. This time, it was surprisingly Mr. Riga the guardian of the trading planet Bakuf who had come to Planet Hongshan. Wait, if you have come to persuade me on behalf of the Galactic Patrol Organization, then it is not necessary. Ziaya was on good terms with Riga, so he spoke politely. However, it concerns the future and fate of Scions, so it was necessary to refuse. Riga laughed out loud and said, To be honest, Mr. Ziaya, I had also received a message from the Galactic Patrol Organization, but I have not come here because Galactic Patrol Organization entrusted me to it. Then, why? Ziaya became interested. Riga's expression turned serious as he said, Mr. Ziaya, you should have heard some rumors about me, right? I am originally from a uncivilized, low-level planet. Riga spoke about his experience. Ziaya listened attentively. Although he had long heard about Riga's past, Ziaya felt it to be much more wonderful, hearing it directly from Riga's mouth. Riga was originally an aboriginal from a low-level planet. 
when he was young, he had accidentally eaten a strange fruit which caused his strength to suddenly increase, creating a uproar in the nearby starfields. When they heard about Rega's legend, a large group of aliens rushed over to Rega's home world to investigate. Naturally, they found nothing when they came to investigate because Rega's home world had long since somehow turned into a barren planet. In fact, they all thought I was lucky to pick up that fruit. Rega gave a complicated smile. Is there some other secret? Zayaya asked. Rega said, it's more or less the same, but at that time, I didn't just find one fruit, but a lot of them. Also, I had no idea how an enormous, demonic tree had suddenly appeared on my home world, and because of that demonic tree, no sunlight shone upon my home world for many years. But I destroyed that demonic tree in the end, so the people who came afterward weren't able to find a trace of it. Before that, I had eaten a lot of fruits while thinking that they were a reward from God. But who would have thought that something worse had yet to come, my home world began to continuously appear more barren, and soon, not even a single blade of grass grew anymore. It was at that time I realized how evil that demonic tree was. So, I destroyed it. At this point, Riga's handsome face was suffused with complicated emotions. He loathed the demonic tree that destroyed his home world, but he was also grateful to the demonic tree for his life's achievements. Tree of Might's Fruit While he listened to Riga's description, the image of the Tree of Might appeared in Zayaya's mind, and his expression couldn't help but become serious. The demonic tree that Riga had described was similar to the Tree of Might that Zayaya knew of, it would also turn an entire planet barren, resulting in a dead planet. Riga glanced at Zayaya with astonishment and nodded, yes, it was Tree of Might. Afterward, I went to Planet Bakuf and poured through a lot of information, until I finally found a document that recounted the origin of that demonic tree. Is Mr. Riga's visit to Planet Hongshan because of the Tree of Might? Yes, I went back to my homeworld a few years ago and found out that the Tree of Might's previous location had been upturned by someone. They had taken away the remaining Tree of Might's fruits. Do you still have those fruits? Zayaya exclaimed. Riga sighed, maybe I wasn't too greedy at that time. After destroying the demonic tree, I only kept a few fruits. Now it seems like, I may have made a mistake. You want us to help you locate the whereabouts of the Tree of Might. Zayaya quickly understood Riga's intentions. Zayaya didn't understand why the other party would turn to the Scions for help, knowing their reputation. Wasn't he worried that Scion would turn on him and hog all the fruits of Tree of Might? Riga shook his head, I already know the approximate position of that demonic tree. I secretly went over there to observe, and it seems that someone else had already again planted the tree there, but there are two very powerful experts guarding it. With my strength alone, it's difficult for me to beat them. Therefore, I need your help. I can give you all those demonic fruits, as long as you help me destroy the demonic tree, and promise that it will not be replanted in the future. This is my long-cherished wish to wash away the guilt towards my home world. Zayaya lowered his head and pondered. He desired the fruits of the Tree of Might as they were formed from the life force of a planet. After eating it, there would surely be many benefits. Although it was unlikely that these fruits would cause Zayaya's strength to increase immensely, he would surely gain some benefits. Unlike other medicines or plants, the Tree of Might's fruit was primarily made up of life force. But there were two guardians next to the Tree of Might who even Riga, whose battle power was close to 180,000, couldn't capture. They were most likely not weak. Well, I can promise you. Zayaya lifted his head and said with sincerity. Really? Riga asked, pleasantly surprised. He knew that Zayaya, the leader of Planet Onction's Scions, was extremely strong with over 700,000 battle power. As long as he is willing to help, destroying the demonic tree was a matter of course. Riga had no idea that Zayaya's strength had increased rapidly in the past few years, and now it was completely beyond his imagination. We, Scions, can help you destroy the Tree of Might, but all its fruits will be taken away by Scions according to my demand. Zayaya clearly specified the terms in order to prevent disagreements later on. Okay, I just want to destroy the demonic tree to fulfill my long-cherished desire. Rega was in a good mood as he laughed. The demonic tree reappeared in the northwest region of the East Area, a place called Planet Bahurt. Planet Bahurt, I will remember it. I will arrange personnel, and then we will immediately go over there. Zayaya said to Riga. Afterward, Zayaya had Charlene arrange a room for Riga to rest, while he convened with all the higher UPS of Planet Hongshan. 
As this was an important matter pertaining to the future of the Science aside from Adri, Brooke and some others who had gone out to temper themselves everyone showed up, including Bardock, Alice, Lisa, and others. This tree of might's fruits must be obtained. After listening to Zaya gave a general introduction of the tree of might's fruit, Bardock spoke without hesitation. If they didn't take what heaven has given them, they would have to accept its punishment in turn. In his opinion, the tree of might's fruits were a rare treasure, and there was no reason whatsoever to give it up. Besides, Zaya, the current leader of science, had power beyond the reach of ordinary people. If he and the other science also helped from side, the probability of them obtaining the fruits would be really high. It would be a pity if they doesn't give it a try. Zaya also nodded. Naturally, he had considered other aspects. The tree of might's fruits may not be of much help to him, Xiling, and the others in improving their battle power, however, they could still provide immense benefits that'll aid them in training their bodies. For most ordinary warriors, elite warriors, and even super warriors on planet Hongshan, the fruits would greatly improve their battle power or aid in training their bodies. Moreover, if he didn't take it himself, then someone else would, and he wasn't willing to aid his enemies. Chapter 192, Tree of Might's Fruit There's no time to lose, so let's hurry up. I have a feeling that this affair involving Tree of Might's Fruit will be quite big. Zaya has a faint premonition. Since Rega could find traces of the Tree of Might, couldn't others do it too? Such as Slug and the others? Those overlords of North Area has rushed over to the East Area for no reason, no one would believe it that they haven't done it in order to obtain something. Their objective, most likely, is Tree of Might's Fruits. These are really strong experts ah. Just the mention of their names would scare people out of their wits. However, as Planet Hongshan was located in the East Area, the Scions had the advantage of being in the right place at the right time, so they could compete with them. At the very least, Zaya believes that they would arrive at Planet Bahurt before the others. Additionally, at East Kai's request, the Galactic Patrol Organization recruited a large number of experts and tasked them with intercepting those overlords, which would buy enough time for Zaya and his party to rush over to Planet Bahurt and grab the fruits before the arrival of these experts. Really delightful. I will arrange it immediately. How many scions are we sending? Rebecca faced Zaya and asked. Her daughter has changed in these past two days, and as an experienced person, she understood the reason why, and although that made her delighted, she also felt the need to remind them to refrain from overly indulging in that kind of thing. Young people should have a bit of moderation, after all. I plan to take all 1,000 members of the Guardian Corp along. Aunt Rebecca, you all will come as well. We must move quickly, so that we can deal with this matter as soon as possible, in order to avoid any unexpected trouble due to the delay. Zaya decided. Everyone nodded. The Guardian Corps Observation Center worked at full speed, and soon, every member of the Guardian Corp, who stood guard on planet Hongshan, were assembled. Looking at the Guardian Corp members donning dark red uniforms with black border below, Zaya's heart was tranquil, yet he inevitably also felt a sense of pride. These Guardian Corp members had been carefully selected from the most powerful people on planet Hongshan. After training for many years, they had already become an invincible troop. The number of elite warriors among them accounted for more than half of all elite warriors on planet Hongshan. Mr. Riga, these are the people who will travel with us, Zaya said to Riga, who was stunned by the strength of the planet Hongshan's warriors. Riga curbed his astonishment and sighed, Scions really deserve to be called a fighting race. This small planet have so many warriors who has more than 10,000 battle power. If an ordinary high-level planet possessed four or five experts with battle powers higher than 10,000, it would be considered quite impressive. Although the number of scions on planet Hongshan wasn't too much, no one would have thought that there would be so many experts among them. When he shifted his gaze from the dense crowd of Guardian Corp members to Bardock, Rebecca, and the others standing on a tall platform, Riga's face twitched, experts these were all great experts. The aura emanating from these scions was just as powerful as his, especially that middle-aged scion named Bardock. The energy being exuded from his body made Riga, who stood in front of him, tremble. Frightening, really frightening. His battle power must be no less than 180,000, ah. The scion's high-end combat strength was unexpectedly so shocking. This made Riga rejoice that Planet Bakuf maintained a good business relationship with Planet Hongshan. It really was a wise move to invite the Scions to participate in this operation. The demonic tree would surely be eradicated, then he would be able to comfort the people from his home world. 
This was a wish that Rega had cherished for a long time. When Rega looked around and didn't see even the shadow of a spaceship, he was flabbergasted. Are they planning to fly with their individual strength? But I heard that Scions couldn't survive in the space for a long period of time. Rega's eyes flashed, and he spoke to Zaya, who stood at his side. Planet Bahard is located in the northwestern region of the East Area, it is extremely far away from Planet Hongshan. If there are no spaceships, it may be quite difficult to go there. Zaya smiled, rest assured Mr. Riga, we have our own way. Afterward, Zaya gestured at Xiling and Myers with his eyes and on cue, the two ladies quickly rounded up the more than 1,000 scions and made them hold each other's hands. We will use instant transmission to directly reach Planet Bahart, this saves both time and effort. Zaya smiled faintly at the sight of Riga's startled expression. Get ready to depart. Xiling and Myers also made preparations as to launch Planet Yardrat's instant transmission, they would need to sense the other side's aura, moreover, the aura being sensed also couldn't be too far away, or else, they wouldn't be able to sense it. Therefore, this time, they could only rely on Zaya's instant transmission to go to Planet Bahart. With a burst of flickering resplendent brilliance, the crowd in the square, who numbered more than 1,000, vanished into thin air, moving together to the other side of the distant starry sky. Planet Bahart. The sky covering enormous tree branches extended out of the atmosphere, and as the branches were spread out like a huge umbrella, it blocked the warm sunlight shining down from a star. On a cold and dark tree branch, Maddox and Duke were bored stiff from keeping watch. They yawned from time to time, as they tossed a pebble back and forth to each other. Hey, Duke, did you really not find anyone else in this godforsaken place? We have been here for so long and, there isn't even a fly to be seen except for that scion monkey at the beginning. Maddox soon got tired of their stone-tossing game, he floated over and leisurely circled around the trunk of the Tree of Might. He didn't find anything, so he again returned to the tree branch, and laid down on his back. Isn't it good that you haven't found anything, King Cooler had us guard the Tree of Might, and I don't want anything to go wrong. Duke's eyelids slightly jiggled as he said those words, although he was also feeling very bored. Aya, that's boring. Maddox shook his head, took off the energy detector on his ear and played with it throwing it into sky again and again. Suddenly, his energy detector began beeping non-stop. Beep. 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 These beeps were accompanied by many numbers continuously flashing on the screen appeared in front of his eyes, before the energy detector exploded with a bang. What happened? How could the detector suddenly explode? Maddox frowned, voicing the astonishment that he felt. It must be known that these new types of energy detectors could calculate energy in several tens of thousands, so it was impossible for it to suddenly burn down like this. Did it break down because you tossed it? Duke asked. Its quality wouldn't be so bad, right? Who knows, let me check it out. Duke smiled and switched on his detector. In order to save energy, they alternated the use of the detectors, Duke's detector had been turned off before. As soon as Duke pressed the switch on his detector, his expression turned grave because his detector burned down just like Madrix's did. How can this be? They were shocked, the previous expressions of content and leisure that donned their faces had long since evaporated. Immediately, they stood up and paid attention to their surroundings with great vigilance. Duke's ashen expression became grave as he said, two detectors have simultaneously burned down. The only logical explanation is that it has detected a strong energy signature on planet Bahart. Damn it! King Cooler is about to arrive. We must protect the Tree of Might's fruits before King Cooler arrives. Maddox nodded, the probability of the detector's malfunctioning is very low. Since both energy detectors burned down, the opponent's battle power has to be at least 50,000. Didn't you notice, just now, before the energy detector had burned down, a series of numbers appeared. It seems a lot of people have come. Duke muttered icily, and a murderous aura erupted out from his body. Caution is never wrong. We should immediately inform King Cooler about this. I hope he can hurry over as quickly as possible. Hmm. Madrix and Duke glanced at each other before jumping and rushing over to the place they had landed their spacecrafts. After they got there, they sent news of the new development on planet Bahar to Cooler's headquarters in clear and simple words. Afterward, they waited near the Tree of Life in combat readiness. Without a backup energy detector, they could not find the traces of the intruders. On the other side of the planet, Zaya arrived with a lot of science. When he appeared, he was shocked by the Tree of Might's body, which covered the sky and sun like a huge lid covering the planet. 
and when they spotted the red fruits amongst the mass of green fruits, which resembled apples, their eyes glowed with a crimson light. Hurry up and collect the red fruits. Don't bother with those green ones, just pick those crimson red fruits. Zayaya hurriedly yelled at everyone without much hesitation. Those fruits were very useful, and represented everyone's future, thus, the more they pick up the better. Yes, Sir Zayaya. Let's get moving. Don't bother with those half-green, unripened fruits. You, you, quickly open Hoi Poi capsules. Fervently shouting, the scions stroked the crimson fruits with bloodshot eyes, just like they would a lover that they hadn't seen for a long time. Even Bardock and Rebecca had forsaken their usual calm and joined the fruit-plucking frenzy. Mr. Riga, 2,000 kilometers away from here, in the southwest direction, there are two aliens with battle powers 170,000 and 130,000. Are those the aliens that you said to have seen? Zayaya turned to ask Rega once he had sensed the auras on planet Bahert. Rega didn't understand how Zayaya discerned their location, but he nodded and said, Yes, I had indeed discovered two aliens last time I got close. It should be them. After receiving confirmation, Zayaya pondered for a bit before yelling towards Xiling and Myers, who were both nearby moving back and forth among the tree's branches, plucking tree of might fruits, Xiling, Myers. Don't be in a hurry to pick the tree of might fruits. First, go and finish off those two aliens. Zayaya was worried that the two aliens might try to destroy the tree of might if they were driven to desperate situation, so the safest method was to thunderously capture them before they could react. Chapter 193, Afraid Frankly, these nobodies like Maddox and Duke, who only had a few hundred thousand battle power, could be handled by anyone of Xiling or Myers with just a casual attack, however. Considering that Tree of Might was growing here, Zayaya decided to play it safe and assigned both of them to attack together. When they heard Zayaya's instruction, Xiling and Myers cleverly understood his intentions. In fact, they also wanted to fight, so without speaking any nonsense, they immediately handed the Tree of Might's fruits in their hands to Rebecca. Afterward, they carefully tried to sense the location of the aliens' auras, this was a very simple thing for them. After they discerned the locations of the aliens, they directly used instant transmission to teleport. After Xiling and Myers left, Zayaya smiled and said to Riga, should we also go over and have a look? Okay. Riga readily agreed. Honestly, he did not feel relieved when those two girls were tasked with dealing with those two aliens by themselves. Hence, he stepped forward and touched Zayaya's shoulder, and both of them quickly disappeared from where they stood. At this time, Xiling and Myers appeared 2,000 kilometers away from where Sions had descended. When they suddenly appeared, Maddox and Duke gazed at them with astonishment, as if they were facing a strong enemy. The big girl and little girl who had just appeared were floating in the sky, and both girls exuded a valiant and heroic temperament. Maddox and Duke felt pressure just from standing before these girls. As they had just lost their energy detectors and had no understanding of ki, Maddox and Duke were blind to the level of strength, whether weak or strong, possessed by the two girls. Their habit of using energy detectors had led to their failure to adapt. However, the strength disparity between both sides has to be very big. Even though Xiling and Myers, did not reveal their full strength, they still felt a sense of oppression similar to the one they would only feel when facing King Cooler. When one became strong to a certain extent, their body could instinctively feel the danger. Are these two women as powerful as King Cooler? Duke was slightly startled. He found the thought, which had just sprung up in his heart, really absurd. But, how is that possible? He took a deep breath and drew closer to Maddox, whispering, it seems somewhat fishy. These two women are not simple. They are really not easy, they can actually make this uncle feel the taste of fear. Maddox bared his teeth, and his face darkened like the bottom of a pot. When Duke heard him, his face donned a surprised expression, and his heart tensed. Even Maddox is having this feeling, so it seems like his intuition was right. Not good, it meant that they weren't a match for these two women. When both aliens considered the demeanor of the two girls, they realized that those who'd come came with bad intentions, as people with good intentions would never come. With these thoughts in mind, Duke began to consider the thoughts of retreating. He was just about to share his thoughts with Maddox, but he saw that Maddox had already stepped forward and shouted at the two women in the sky. Who are you? Maddox shouted, his surging energy voicing his hostility to the two women more than his shout did. Fool! Duke cursed in his heart. He really wanted to pry open Maddox's head and examine what is inside was it filled with straw? 
It was obvious that both women were much stronger than they were, so why is he showing hostility? Suddenly, he felt immense regret that he was associated with someone who seemed to have no brains whatsoever. In this situation, preserving their lives was the most important. After all, the tree of might's fruit was merely a worldly possession. Suddenly, he noticed the tail behind Myers, and his expression abruptly changed, as he shouted, Impossible, how can there be other scions on planet Bahurt besides that little mouse from before? Weren't the scion race completely destroyed along with planet Vegeta? How come they were now appearing one after another? Moreover, this soul-oppressing feeling that was making him shudder couldn't be from scions as they weren't this powerful. Maddox, he suddenly shouted. What? Maddox asked, baffled. Restrain your aura. We can't fight with them. Why? If we don't fight, they will take away the Tree of Might's fruits, then no matter whether we obstructed them or not, King Cooler will not let us off. Duke was speechless for a while. Yet, yeah, King Cooler wasn't a kind person, he wouldn't care if they had tried their best or not to stop the intruders. He only cared about the results. Even if one knew they weren't a match for the enemy, Cooler would still prefer they died in battle. This was the only way they could prove their loyalty to him. However, if they dared to abandon the fruits and escape, then Cooler had many ways to ensure they died. Therefore, they weren't allowed to retreat, even if they faced a powerful enemy. When he realized this, Duke turned silent, and his expression while looking at Maddox changed. Sure enough, Maddox's behavior, although rash, was more in line with Cooler's wishes. Suddenly, his heart chilled, awash with an indescribable sorrow. What happened to them? Myers rolled her eyes. Don't know. Xiling ignored the internal strife faced by the aliens, and she turned to Myers with a smile, it just so happens that there are two people here, so we'll have one each. That weak one is yours. All right. Myers complied and looked at Maddox in high spirits with a grin, 130000 battle power, he is quite strong. With her 500,000 battle power, Myers naturally held Maddox with such weak strength in contempt, even though a person with 130,000 battle power was already considered quite strong enough, within the universe, to show off. It seems that I am being despised by these people. Maddox couldn't help but become very angry and immediately, his body erupted with an earth-shattering energy. Battle power of 130,000 was definitely not low. However, Maddox knew that he couldn't hold back at this time, so he crazily urged the energy within his body to move and revealed his full strength all at once. As the energy within his body erupted out, the surrounding air seemed to freeze. With a huge bang, a sonic boom reverberated across the surroundings, accompanied by distorted ripples in the air. The ground trembled and cracks appeared on it. A huge cloud of soil suddenly splashed out, and a light flashed, like an arrow swiftly shooting out. Maddox's face was flushed with anger as he took the initiative to launch the offensive. Rumble. At the same time, Duke also took action. He knew that he couldn't retreat even if he wanted to. Despite the pressure, he had no choice but to throw caution to the wind. His light yellow erect pupils flashed with an icy cold light, as he charged at Xiling before indiscriminately launching attacks. Perhaps it was the instincts of a warrior, but Duke understood the disparity between him and his opponent, so he did not choose close combat. Instead, he maintained his distance and bombarded his opponent with energy waves. This granted him the opportunity to advance and attack or retreat and defend at will. For a moment, the huge flashes and the resounding explosions continued, and several tens of meters diameter branches of the Tree of Might, fiercely swayed in the wind, and the orange fruits continuously dropped down. Several hundred meters above, Zayaya and Rega hovered in the sky and quietly watched the fight below. No, it should be a one-sided slaughter. Miss Xiling and Miss Myers, they are actually, so powerful. Rega watched the fight in amazement. If the strength of the two aliens below was considered, then they are not the slightest bit inferior to him, their battle powers was at least several hundred thousands, yet from the direction that the battle below was heading to, Rega could see that the aliens had no hope for victory. In fact, Xiling and Myers seemed like they were only playing around. Their expressions were at ease, and it was obvious that they weren't using their full strength. This rendered Riga speechless. Xiling's battle power is 750,000, and Myers's is 500,000. Intentionally or unintentionally, Zayaya said to Riga. When Riga heard this, he was so shocked that he couldn't help but suck in a breath of cold air. Planet Onction's leader Zayaya's strength, he was aware of. However, he didn't expect that, 
in addition to Mr. Ziaya, Planet Hongshan still has such powerful warriors. Adding the powerful Sion warriors he saw before, the experts on Planet Hongshan were simply innumerable, ah! The depth of their foundation was too abundant. Fortunately, such a powerful force was cooperating with the Galactic Patrol Organization. Otherwise, if the Scions also contended for hegemony, he was afraid that no force in the entire East Area would be able to compete with them. If that happens, the East Area would become even more chaotic. Below, Myers and Xiling attacks were taking its toll on the surroundings, destroying many fruits on the Tree of Might. Seeing this, Xiaoya felt pain in his heart. Zaya knitted his eyebrows and was about to instruct Xiling and Myers to end the battle quickly, and stop playing, when he noticed Xiling's body back up by ten meters. It seemed like she had gotten serious. He saw Xiling hover in the sky with a calm expression on her face and next second, her black long hair fluttered in the wind, and a powerful aura suddenly erupted out of her, without any warning. Swift and fierce winds whistled, as though a giant hammer was pummeling the hearts of everyone. Such a formidable oppressive feeling, Rega was speechless, and his forehead exuded beads of strength as he sensed the strength of the aura. He had never imagined that someone could be so powerful in the universe. He had lived in the universe for hundreds of years, but he suddenly felt like he had lived all those years in vain. On second thought, since the Scion race was so strong, why were they unable to save their home world? The only plausible explanation was that their opponents were even more formidable than they were. This conclusion rendered Riga speechless. In the past, he believed that he was an expert. He protects Planet Bakuf and prevented robbers and thieves from acting unbridled. Naturally, he had nursed a feeling of complacency in his heart. However, it now seemed like he had been looking at the sky from the bottom of a well, despising everyone in the world. Although Rega's deduction seemed ridiculous, it was very close to the truth. The strength of the Frost Demon race was indeed something that the Scions couldn't compare with. However, Rega's 180,000 battle power also couldn't be considered weak and was, in fact, very rare as a phoenix in the universe. Beside him, Zayaya, hadn't been the least bit affected by the imposing aura from below, and remained the same, with a faint smile hanging on his face. Rega took a deep breath and inwardly compared the disparity existed between them, and the result left him feeling extremely depressed. The disparity between them was incomparable. Oh, why didn't you told me that you are going all out? A crisp voice echoed, and Myers glanced at Xiling with a dissatisfied look on her face. Suddenly, she forcefully swung her arm and used her signature move. Immediately, as if some switch had been turned on, an equally boundless and surging energy erupted out of Myers. The imposing aura wasn't as strong as Xiling, but it still brought about changes to the heaven and earth. Snaking electric arcs fell from the sky, and the free electrons in air produced electric discharge. As they faced the suddenly appearing two whirlpools of aura, which were like the bright moon hanging in the sky, the two members of Armored Squadron were scared witless, and beads of sweat dripped down from their foreheads. Their eyes were full of fear as they looked at Xiling and Myers. We will die. We will die. A nightmare-like voice echoed in their hearts. Thump. 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 Their hearts beat violently as though it is going to jump out of their chests. These two scions. How could they be so powerful? Maddox's face was deathly pale, as his face was sweating bean-sized beads of sweat. Duke had a worried look on his face as he prayed in his heart, why has King Cooler not arrived yet, for the first time in his life, he felt that time was passing by so slowly. Because of Xiling and Meyer's full-strength energy eruption, the changes in environment were astonishing, and it was not only the few people present at the scene who were affected by it. Chapter 194, I Want to Arrive in Half an Hour On the other side of the planet Bahert, Scions who had been busy picking the Tree of Might's fruits came to an abrupt stop when they felt the rising auras of Xiling and Myers. The earth-shaking auras greatly startled them. After a long silence, heated discussion suddenly broke out among the crowd. These auras belong to Madame Xiling and Madame Myers so strong. It's so stifling that I can't breathe. Amazing. So Scions can also become this powerful. Their strength is really formidable. Long live. Everyone from the Guardian Corps cheered. They all looked elated, and their eyes glowed with a fervent blaze. They had all experienced the destruction of their home planet, Planet Vegeta, so they understood that the current auras of Miss Xiling and Miss Myers were not any weaker than the aura that Frisia emitted back then. This revelation boosted their confidence and they were hopeful regarding their vengeance. Xiling, this child, she always loves to show off, Rebecca joked, feeling gratified. 
however, her voice didn't contain any traces of scolding. Her daughter's current achievements had completely exceeded her imagination, and there wasn't any miracle she had not yet seen because of them. This time, Xiling and Myers are going to be in limelight. Alice lowered her head with a few fruits cradled in her arms, as her bright eyes sparkled. Xiling has really grown up. Lisa said in a hoarse voice. Her delicate face was like a young girl's, without the slightest traces of years. She had seen Xiling grow up little by little, but she hadn't expected Xiling to surpass her so quickly by so much. It was really unimaginable. Not far away from them, Bardock also looked up, his eyes shining. Suddenly, he had a vision, and fragmented scenes flashed through his minds. An azure planet revolved around a huge burning fireball, closely followed by an icy blue planet. Suddenly, the surface of the azure planet trembled, and a large cloud of dust covered the sky like a black curtain blocking the sunlight. The dim color was as if ink had sprinkled all over the ground. Huel. 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 He saw two figures rapidly moving like flashes of lightning in the sky. They collided with each other multiple times, and then separated right after, before beginning their battle anew. One figure was male, and the other was female. The male was an alien whose body was covered in white leather, he was short, and had devil-like purple pupils, the female had blonde hair and blue eyes. Her hair fluttered wildly upwards to the sky, and her body was shrouded in golden flames. The face of the female was somewhat blurry, but from her graceful and exquisite figure, she seemed no older than twenty years old. Suddenly, the scene changed. This new scene showcased another battle, and one of its participants was the beautiful female from before, but her opponent, this time, was a petite woman who had orange hair and cyan skin. The beautiful female was still shrouded in golden flames, and her body exuded an awe-inspiring aura, but her opponent, the petite woman, who has orange-colored curly hair which were fluttering in the sky, seemed just as powerful as she was. The golden flame female seemed to be at a disadvantage. Is this a vision of the future, but who are the people in it? Bardock massaged his temples when he came back to himself. The scenes only flashed briefly, like passing clouds, and vanished quickly. The only figure that Bardock could remember, from his vision albeit vaguely, was the blonde female with blue eyes. That woman was a super scion. Bardock furrowed his eyebrows. He had seen how a super scion looks like on planet Kanasa, the scenes of fight between Kakarot and Frisia. Although he doesn't know why that scene had changed later this on, he could clearly recall what a super scion looks like. Golden hair, dark green pupils, and violent burning golden flames. Back on the battlefield on the other side of planet Bahurt, as their two female opponents emitted majestic auras, Maddox and Duke both became spiritless and felt the call of impending death. Xiling, Myers, don't waste any more time and quickly finish them off. Zaya's shout in a low voice suddenly echoed from high above in the sky. Maddox and Duke froze. They both looked up and found that there were unexpectedly two people watching them from a few hundred meters above in the sky. Upon seeing them, their hearts sank into the abyss. Oh, no. There are more people in the sky and it seems that these two women take their orders from that person. Duke's heart thumped, turning even more cold. With this discovery, Duke knew that their fates were sealed. Why hasn't King Cooler arrived yet? With a heart filled with anxiety, Duke hollered at Zayaya, this friend, we are members of Cooler's armored squadron. Please give King Cooler some face, he will be arriving here soon. Armored squadron. Zayaya's expression suddenly changed when Cooler's name was mentioned. Wasn't that the squad that I wiped out? I didn't expect it to be re-established so soon. Moreover, from Duke's words, it seemed that Cooler was on his way here. It seems Slug, Cooler, and King Cold's objective was indeed the Tree of Might's Fruits. When he saw the change in Zayaya's expression, Duke felt elation in his heart. He thought that Zayaya was awed by King Cooler's reputation, so he felt more confident in his survival. But, who would have thought that Zayaya's expression would immediately turn into a sneer? Heh heh, so it turns out to be Cooler's armored squadron. I destroyed the armored squadron led by Saiza. Who would have thought that Cooler would re-establish it so soon? Kill them. Zayaya ordered coldly. Okay. Right away. Xiling and Myers immediately acknowledged. They had grasped the deeper meaning of the situation. A strong opponent would soon arrive at planet Bahurt, so the Scions couldn't afford to stay here for too long. They would have to pluck the fruits from the Tree of Might as soon as possible and leave. Shoo. 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 They curbed their earlier playful attitude and used their killing moves. 
Wind blades that flickered with cold lights rained down. Everything in the vicinity rocks and soil included was sliced into pieces. Hwa A blinding crystal brilliance glowed, accompanied by tyrannical bursts of energy that surged like a storm, turning the space into a lump of paste. Under the overwhelming surges of energy, Maddox and Duke couldn't put up any form of resistance and were promptly sliced into smithereens, with shock being the final expressions on their faces. At this time, the raindrops that were slowly and continuously falling down gave off a multicolored sparkling and translucent glow. They were like bright crystals, that were gradually scattered onto Mount Sumeru. Not far away from planet Bahert, in the universe's starry sky. Rows of disc-shaped spaceships were flying rapidly. Each spaceship had a gear-shaped symbol on them, the symbol of Cooler's armored core. How much longer until we reach planet Bahert? Cooler asked coldly, with a darkened face. The last update from Maddox and Duke had made his joy completely evaporate. A huge number of energy signals has appeared on planet Bahert, which means that the Tree of Might's fruits has been discovered by someone. I thought that I could exclusively enjoy the treasure. It might be picked up by someone else before he had arrived there. No wonder Cooler's complexion wasn't good. Your Majesty, it would still take one more hour before we reach planet Bahert. Ilos bowed and replied. Half an hour. I want to be there in half an hour, no matter how. Cooler shouted coldly, his unquestionable attitude making Ilos tremble. King Cooler is really angry. Additionally, let the other core spaceships spread out and surround planet Bahert. Make sure that the people on it are unable to escape. Yes. Ilos replied loudly and immediately made the arrangements. After receiving their orders, the aliens in the pilot's cabin wiped their sweat and inputted a command into the main control screen. Disregarding the consequences, the spaceships began to accelerate, having increased their flight speed to the maximum. Cooler sat on the main seat of the spaceship, and his fingers tapped on the armrest, making tap-tap-tap sounds. Every tap made the hearts of everyone in the pilot's cabin tremble. Chapter 195, Slug Landing In another location, Slug's army was getting closer to Planet Bahert. As Planet Slug was closer to the east area, Slug would arrive at the planet earlier than Cooler's army. King Slug, we will enter the starfield of Planet Bahert in 15 minutes. A cyan-skinned alien standing on the side reported. Oh, this is great. Slug sat on a golden chair while donning a purple headgear. When his subordinate was done with its report, Slug asked with a smile, how long would it take for Cooler and his army to arrive at the planet? At least one hour, and if they advance at full speed, maybe half an hour. After careful calculation, his subordinate replied honestly. Half an hour. Slug suddenly stood up and cackled, ha ha ha, it is already sufficient. After arriving from so far away, what expression will Cooler have once he discovers that the Tree of Might's fruits has already been plucked clean by someone else? Have the army prepare, the window of time that will have to pick up all the fruits, before Cooler arrives, is not much. Slug's voice was low yet filled with enthusiasm, which made evident that this aged expert's mood was good. His elation was filled with lofty spirits. Slug reigned in his elation and sneered. He had decided to avoid the Frost Demon race as much as possible until he regained his youth. As for the future. Slug smiled sinisterly, a super name Kian isn't someone mediocre. Yes, your majesty. His alien subordinates quickly carried out their duties as they made their final preparations. However, both Slug and Cooler wouldn't have imagined that, not far away, a small army has been trailing behind them. It only consists of three disc-shaped spaceships. In order to avoid to escape the detection of the fleet in front, King Cold's spaceships had been traveling slowly all along the way, only content with following from not far behind. He he he, say, when Cooler obtains the Tree of Might's fruits, and this king suddenly appears, would he be shocked? At that time, what choice would he make? King Cold was sitting on a throne, shaking the cup of crimson red wine in his hand, and asked leisurely, would he obediently offer the Tree of Might's fruits, or, would he stubbornly resist? No one answered him. No one dared to answer him. King Cold snorted, and a cold light flashed in his eyes, it looked capable of completely freezing the soul. Familial love was non-existent in the Frost Demon race. As Cooler's strength continued to grow, and his force gradually became stronger, he dared to openly defy King Cold's orders. In his heart, King Cold dreads his son, Cooler. If Cooler was as obedient as Frisia, not only would King Cold have to be afraid, but he could also happily continue to grow stronger. But, unfortunately, Cooler was not as obedient as Frisia. 
the incident of the Tree of Might's Fruits was the fuse that completely ignited a full-blown conflict between the Eastern and Northern forces. King Cold is already prepared to turn hostile, after all, he can no longer allow Cooler to grow stronger. King Cold, we are done with our preparations and can attack any time. His subordinate reported in a loud voice. King Cold nodded and drank the rippling blood-red liquid in his cup. Then his tall figure stood up, as his long, dark red cape dragged on the ground, everyone, listen carefully, if any conflict arises, completely destroy your opponents, and spare no one. My, Cold's, strongest army shouldn't be worse than Cooler's armored corp, right? Of course, please rest assured, your majesty. Destroy. Destroy. Hearing King Cole's order, the strongest corps formed of the North Area's elite warriors, who were gathered below, burst into loud cheers, their blood boiling. As he watched his valiant and battle-ready subordinates, King Cold had a pleased expression on his face while the corners of his mouth curled up into a faint cruel smile. Planet Bahert. After Xiling and Myers killed off Maddox and Duke, the energy pervading the air began to gradually dissipate. Rega was completely speechless at this point. The powerful key waves emanating off Xiling and Myers caused him to feel shocked and surprised at the same time. These members of Armored Squadron, who even he would have found difficult to deal with, weren't able to resist these two Scion girls even a little bit and without any suspense died. Thoroughly crushed. They produced clouds with the flip of one hand, and rain with another, and influenced heaven and earth while raising their hands. Expert, they are true experts. Rega trembled slightly, it wasn't out of fear, but because the blood in his heart was boiling. He glanced at Zayaya, who stood beside him, and thought, few years ago on planet Bakuf, Zayaya told me that his battle power was more than 700,000. Now, after so many years has passed, he should definitely have become stronger. Sion is really an unfathomable race. Rega took a deep breath, suppressed his excitement, and said, Mr. Zayaya, please collect the fruits of Tree of Might as soon as possible, and destroy the Tree of Might from existence. Now that the two alien enemies, who most likely would have tried to hinder the Scions, had been eliminated, all that remained was for the Scions to collect the fruits, and then his long-cherished wish would be fulfilled. Yes, we have to hurry up. Zayaya said seriously. From the appearance of the armored squadrons Maddox and Duke on planet Bahert, he was certain that Slug, Cooler, and King Cold were all rushing over here for the Tree of Might's fruits. In order words, they were already on their way to here, and although he doesn't know when they would arrive, he was sure that they doesn't have much time. This conclusion increased the sense of urgency in Zayaya's heart. Everyone, pick up the pace. Pick up those reddish-purple fruits. We don't have much time. Soon, there might be more powerful enemies coming to planet Bahert. Zayaya shouted to the other Scions when he teleported back with Xiling, Myers, and Riga. Right, right. Speed up. Pick up as many as you can. The Scions were full of enthusiasm, and they quickly moved back and forth on the huge tree of might. After the nearby fruits had been picked, they flew further ahead. Since the tree of might covered a vast area, occupying almost half of the planet, the Scions had to move by themselves, and their figures were no longer visible. When he saw the eager bloodshot eyes of the Scions, Zayaya was reminded of the craze that a gold rush would create in his previous life on Earth. Hadn't the people been full of dreams, hoping to earn a jackpot? The only difference between both scenarios was that the Tree of Might's fruits were actually present, hanging from the branches of the enormous tree, and not vague like the gold that the gold diggers yearn for. Zayaya, catch! Zayaya suddenly heard Xiling's delighted voice before he felt the sound of a gust of wind behind him. He casually reached out his hand and caught the tree of mites fruit that had been tossed over. It was a red-purple fruit, and its pointed horns made it look very ugly. Oh, I haven't eaten the tree of mites fruit yet. Let me taste it. Zayaya smiled faintly at Xiling, raised the fruit to his mouth, and took a bite. It's a bit sour. Upon chewing and swallowing a piece of the fruit in his hand, Zayaya's eyebrows slightly furrowed as he didn't think that the tree of mites fruits would taste so delicious. It tasted somewhat like a sour unripe green apple. As soon as he swallowed the fruit, a warm current filled with vitality suddenly spread from his esophagus to his body, permeating everywhere. It was continuously surging and warm, making him intoxicated. The fruit's vitality wasn't as intense as that of senzu beans. It spread slowly, like clear water flowing out from a small spring, gradually and silently moistening everything. Tree of Might Fruit It really lives up to its reputation. Zayaya praised while savoring its taste. 
the effect of Tree of Might's fruit is hidden. After the few warm currents spread through his body, they quickly disappeared. However, Ziaya knew that they hadn't disappeared, instead they were hidden in every cell, and had turned into vitality. If the fountain of youth is said to greatly extend lifespan, then Tree of Might's fruit nourishes the vitality of each cell, and to some extent, it can also be used as a holy medicine for healing, but it only nourishes over a long period of time, and was not as good and immediate as Senzu beans. After eating several more fruits, Ziaya felt that his ki had only increased by a little bit. Tree of Might's fruits are formed from the essence of an entire planet, and has a significant effect on improving body's inner strength while increasing battle power is only secondary. It was like crafting a large piece of iron into a magic tool. The parts that were chipped off were the borders of the iron edges as the most important part was at the center of the metal. The most important benefit of the Tree of Might's fruit is that it nourishes vitality, while the battle power upgrade is only secondary. Ziaya could roughly deduce that the Tree of Might's fruit was more effective for those with battle powers less than 10,000. Once one's battle power exceeded 10,000, the number of fruits they'd need to improve it further would be significantly higher. The amount of fruits required may even go as high as several hundreds of thousands. Just like Tulls, it took only one fruit to raise his battle power from 1,000 to 3,000, but he had to consume more than a dozen just to increase his battle power from 3,000 to 17,000. Of course, it was also because Tulls was a low-level warrior, and his latent talent was not high, but the drop in battle power increase was not without reason, as battle power increases, the effect of Tree of Might's fruits on increasing battle power becomes lesser and lesser. An expert like Ziaya, whose battle power had exceeded 7 million, would require an astonishing amount of fruits if he wanted to use them to increase his strength. Naturally, this didn't mean that the fruits lose their effects, its essence is just hidden within every cell, which was immensely beneficial from a long-term perspective. Cooler sought to use the Tree of Might's fruits to increase his battle power, so as to fight against King Cold, however, such an approach wouldn't work as he was clearly mistaken about the effectiveness of the Tree of Might's fruit. However, if he ate a lot of Tree of Might fruits and painstakingly trained simultaneously, it wouldn't be impossible to achieve his goal. Time passed. Ten minutes later, Science had picked up a lot of fruits, which were piled up like a mountain. After which, someone proceeded to put them into Hoi Poi capsules. At that moment, Ziaya eyebrows suddenly wrinkled, he looked up into the sky, and his sharp eyes penetrated through the thick clouds, reaching all the way outside the planet. What's wrong? Upon noticing Ziaya's reaction, Xiling asked softly before she also immediately frowned. Hum? Looks like something is approaching this place, as time passed, she could clearly feel a very powerful key approaching. The frightening aura was deep and dark, like a black hole. Ah, such a frightening aura. Xiling's tender and beautiful cheeks immediately turned stiff. For the first time, she was feeling fear. Xiaoya, who the hell is it? How can there be such a powerful aura? Myers asked with a slightly pale face while leaning against Xiaoya, as though seeking comfort. Quick, gather over everyone. Forget about the fruits. Xiaoya's countenance changed, and he loudly shouted. Although he couldn't clearly ascertain the strength of the approaching aura as it was far away, he faintly felt that this opponent who was about to arrive on planet Bahert, was extremely formidable. The dark aura that the approaching opponent exuded was so frightening, that Ziaya didn't dare say that he could win, even if he used the pseudo super scion mode. As the aura got closer, Ziaya could distinguish it much better. The key wasn't as powerful as Cooler's, nor was it as icy as King Cold's, so it could only be that it belongs to someone else, i.e. Namekian Slug. It was rumored that Slug was a natural born super Namekian, and it now seemed that he lives up to his reputation. Everyone is too far apart and will not be able to assemble so quickly. Rebecca flew over from far away. Previously, the Scions had scattered about to pick Tree of Might's fruits, so it would take some time for them to assemble together. Damn. Ziaya eyebrows creased from anger, regretting his carelessness. I don't care anymore. Myers, leave immediately with Aunt Rebecca, Bardock, and the others using instant transmission. And Xiling you go and find the other members of the Guardian Corps and take them away. I will go and stall the enemy for a while. Ziaya looked at Xiling and Myers with a serious expression. They were the only ones here, apart from himself, who could use instant transmission, so the evacuation could only be carried out by them. Leave it to us. Myers patted her partially developed chest. Be careful. Xiling cautioned in a soft voice. She knew that the enemy this time was different from those they had faced before. Usually, 
in the times she had encountered a stronger enemy, she was accompanied by Zayaya. Zayaya's existence was like a harbor. He had always taken care of her as she grew up, but this time, the enemy was someone even Zayaya found troublesome. You be careful too. Zayaya said. Wait, what the hell is going on? Are there still enemies coming over, asked Riga, who was unclear about the situation. Zayaya solemnly replied, it should be that slug who was mentioned by the Galactic Patrol Organization. He is going to arrive soon. Damn, there is no time to talk. Slug. Riga's expression became grave. Without considering much, he courageously said, I will stay to help you. Zayaya and the other scions came here because of him, so he couldn't just leave. No, Mr. Riga, if the opponent is Slug, it will be useless even if you stay. You quickly go with Bardock and the others. Myers will teleport you away. He glanced at Myers, and the little girl resolutely nodded in acknowledgement. She pulled Rebecca's hand and said, I have no way to sense the faraway planet Hongshan directly. I can only first look for a life planet. After saying this, Myers held her breath in concentration and searched for a nearby planet. Then she quickly opened her eyes and vanished along with the crowd of people around her. Zayaya, this time, do you have any certainty? Xiling's bright, shiny eyes stared fixedly at Zayaya. Since the dark aura was somewhat unusual, making her soul tremble, she wasn't feeling very good. She had never felt such enormous darkness. Don't worry. If it's just Slug, I should be able to deal with him, and even if I cannot beat him, I can just escape, don't forget that I can still transform into Pseudo Super Scion. Zayaya smiled heartily, revealing pure white teeth. Pseudo Super Scion puts on a heavy burden on the body, because it wasn't a normal Super Scion form. It was a form situated between the Scion and Super Scion. If the situation is unfavorable, transforming into Pseudo Super Scion could multiply his power by several times. His battle power was 7.5 million in the normal state, but once he transforms into Pseudo Super Scion, it would instantly rise to 30 million. Then, his key wouldn't be much weaker than Slug's. What's more, Slug should be old at this time, based on his knowledge from the original work. Therefore, it was questionable whether he could use his full strength or not. Okay. Xiling lightly nodded and stared at him for a moment before she turned around and soared into the sky. Watching Xiling disappear in the horizon, Zayaya's complexion sank. He was confident that he could deal with Slug. Perhaps fighting with Slug could help him make a breakthrough. However, what made him feel uneasy was the icy aura which was much further away. Cooler was also coming to planet Bahert. Because of their strength, Xiling and Myers couldn't sense Cooler's aura, which was much further away, but Zayaya can. So he knows that he didn't have much time left. First, stop Slug and create enough time for Xiling. Shaking his head, Zayaya focused his consciousness. From the approaching dark aura, he could feel that it was vast, but it was also decaying and old. Slug had grown old, but the strength of his energy still exceeded Zayaya's energy in pseudo super scion form. I hope Slug doesn't disappoint me. Zayaya faintly muttered to himself as his dark eyes shone, while his blood boiled, and an earth shattering battle intent suddenly erupted from him. At the moment, outside planet Bahert's atmosphere, Looking from outer space, an umbrella-shaped colossus like a mushroom was growing on the surface of planet Bahert. King Slug, that is the tree of might. A cyan-colored alien pointed at the huge plant on the not far away planet, his voice filled with disbelief. Ha ha ha, right, right. This is the tree of might. It really is domineering and valiant. Only this kind of divine tree, which absorbs the essence of a whole planet, can bear the life fruit. Slug stared at it as the muscles on his face slightly trembled from the excitement. The spaceship approached planet Bahert, quickly passed through its thin atmosphere and landed on the ground. As the black shadow landed down on the ground, the soil and rocks below it were crushed. Kaka, kaka, like a soft tofu, the ground immediately collapsed, and then more and more spaceships landed. Once the hatch opened, a large group of aliens emerged from the inside. They thoroughly swept away the obstacles on both sides, before finally Slug, who was dressed in a yellow robe, stepped out of the spaceship. Ah, this is Planet Bahert. How wonderful. Slug's voice was not as loud and clear as a young man. Instead, it was faintly hoarse and weak. He took off the purple helmet on his head, revealing the two tentacles that were unique to a name Kian. Children, quickly start working and collect the Tree of Might's fruits. 
we have to leave before Cooler arrives. Slug waved his huge hand and ordered his subordinates to start working. He had suffered a lot at the hands of the Frost Demon race, so he was extremely afraid of Cooler and other Frost Demon race members, thus, he didn't dare to confront them rashly. However, before that, he had decided to first get rid of the two little guys from Cooler's armored squadron. But at this time, a handsome and tall figure appeared before him without any warning, followed by a chilly voice. Slug, the evil name Kian. It's a pity but you are not the first one to arrive on planet Bahert. Who? Slug's countenance suddenly changed as an unfamiliar tall, black-haired young man had suddenly appeared before him. The youth looked indifferent and had his aura restrained, just like an ordinary person without any battle power. But, it made Slug feel even more uneasy in his heart. Slug immediately returned to himself and shook his head helplessly, as he felt that was overthinking things. There weren't that many experts in the universe who has battle powers as high as his, and the ones who did were famous and well-known. How can he so easily come across one of them on this small planet? Hehe, <laughs> let me see how much your battle power is. Slug raised the small detector on his wrist, and with beep 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 sounds, the fluctuating numbers stopped at 12,000. Hehehe, <laughs> he, it's only 12,000 battle power. Slug stroked his chin and laughed evilly, to think that he had been overly anxious just now. When Slug used his energy detector to probe his opponent, Zayaya also quietly launched the Spirit Eye secret skill. Multicolored lights flashed through his pupils, and he immediately saw Slug's complete situation. Slug, 373 years old, battle power 36 million. 36 million battle power. This line of data appeared before him, causing Zayaya's eyes to lit up. This battle power was a lot higher than his in the pseudo super scion form, but he was not sure how much Slug, who already had one foot in the grave, would ultimately be able to use. Chapter 196 Fighting Slug After experiencing Slug's real strength, Zayaya focused and quickly suppressed his battle intent. Now, he had to delay as long as possible so that Xiling can take away all the members of the Guardian Corporate from Planet Bahert. However, this was clearly Zayaya's wishful thinking. Slug, who was greedy for the Tree of Might's fruits, had no desire to expend energy on such trivial matters. Because Slug was aware that Cooler's army was behind him and he didn't have much time left, besides he was itching to taste the Tree of Might's fruits. He waved his hand, beckoning a subordinate over, and gave him an order, You, go and finish off that boy, while others should come with me to collect the Tree of Might's fruits. It was a cyan-skinned, crocodile-shaped alien. It had been following Slug for many years and was deeply trusted by him. Its battle power was close to 20,000, more than enough to deal with the human in front of him. Yes, your majesty. The cyan-faced alien responded in a loud voice, then stepped forward, standing between Zayaya and Slug while the other aliens followed Slug and went ahead to pick up the Tree of Might's fruits. Dot. Zayaya naturally wouldn't allow them to do what they want, as he still needed to delay them for a while. Though. He didn't expect Slug to be so impatient. Zayaya sighed, he realized that he had underestimated Slug's greed for the Tree of Might's fruits and the fear the other had of Cooler. Also, the strength he was currently revealing was perhaps too low, and could not attract Slug's attention. How much ability and destructiveness he had will naturally cause the opponent to pay more attention to him. Right now, he can only rely on strength to delay Slug. After thinking about it, Zayaya flexed his muscles, and with a light shout, a vigorous and boundless imposing aura emanated from him. The aura stirred the surrounding air before turning into key waves, whistling in all directions. Russell, the cyclone began to rotate, suddenly producing violent and powerful waves, like a giant wall being pushed. A short distance away, the alien blocking his path shrieked and was sent flying away. Bang! 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 Slug and his subordinates' energy detectors, worn on their hands, burned down because they had exceeded their measuring range. Hum. The energy detectors actually burned down. Slug turned around, showing a little bit of surprise on his rugged face. Because Slug's real battle power was much higher than what Zayaya currently revealed, the force when Zayaya used his full strength does not pose much of a threat to Slug and as such it was naturally impossible to tell whether Zayaya's current strength was strong or weak. He only felt that it was much more powerful than before. However, he was after all, an overlord who has lived for many years, so he only felt a slight discomfort in his heart. Although Slug wasn't affected, his subordinates, however, were on the verge of dying. When Zayaya's aura erupted out, 
it was as though their bodies were being crushed by an enormous mountain, and they were unable to breathe under the powerful pressure. King Slug, the cyan-faced alien that had been sent flying in the distance again arrived before Slug and cried out while trembling. Under the huge pressure, his badly battered face was oozing with beads of sweat. Good for nothing. Slug furiously cursed at his subordinate, turned around and said to the aliens near the spaceship, Isn't there a large detector on the spaceship, use it to check his battle power. Yes, yes, after receiving the order, the aliens immediately reacted and rushed into the spaceship while rolling and crawling. They then turned on the giant energy detector mounted on the spaceship. The detector which was mounted on the spaceship had an enormous output that could be used to detect large range and high intensity energy fluctuations. There hadn't been any need to use it in the past, causing many people to feel that it was useless, but they didn't expect it would be used on planet Bahert. Zayaya was quietly watching, while secretly checking the auras on the planet. Xiling was quickly moving, and almost every ten seconds or less, there were more than a dozen Scions auras disappearing from planet Bahert, which meant that it would take nearly ten minutes to evacuate all the people. There is no hurry, you can take your time. Zayaya said inwardly. At the same time, seeing that Slug didn't directly take action, he realized that Slug's body had probably aged to a very serious extent. Otherwise, he wouldn't sit back and watch him show off his strength like this. In fact, Zayaya's guess wasn't wrong. At this time, Slug was waiting for his subordinates to report the data. If this person was weak, Slug was prepared to let his subordinates deal with him, but if Zayaya was strong, then he could only take action personally. Sigh. If it wasn't because he was getting old, he would have directly finished off the person in front of him. Thinking of this, his desire for the fruits of the Tree of Might became even stronger. How about it, what is this human's battle power? Slug impatiently asked. King, Slug, the detector is showing, human's battle power to be, 7.54 million. The aliens shuddered and having said the number, their whole body felt cold. What? 7.54 million. Slug was dumbfounded, and his complexion darkened, black like the bottom of a pot. This small amount of battle power naturally didn't scare Slug, who was the hegemon of a region, but he was thinking of something else. Humanity, this weak race certainly can't have such large battle power, but here is planet Bahert which has the magical tree of might's fruits. The only explanation is that this human had eaten the tree of might's fruit, moreover their number should be quite a lot. Damn, these are all this king's things. Slug cursed with a black face while feeling pain in his heart. At the same time, he was also looking forward to the effect of the tree of might's fruits, because even a puny human could become so strong what then will happen after I consume it, perhaps even that cooler wouldn't be my opponent. Slug was satisfyingly fantasizing. Human, you really made this king look at you with new eyes. If it were another time, then maybe this king could have recruited you. Slug said, before his tone suddenly became full of murderous intentions, but you really shouldn't have stolen this king's tree of might's fruits. Slug stepped forward, he was not fast, but with every step, his aura went through earth-shattering changes. Slug walked leisurely, and quickly covered the few meters distance, arriving in front of Zayaya, and his overwhelming energy completely erupted out. Affected by this, a swift and fierce storm spread across all parts of planet Bahert, and the sky became dark as if the end of the world was nigh. Because I ate the tree of might's fruit. The corners of Zayaya's mouth were slightly raised. Looking at the two meters tall slug, he sneered. Is that so? Zayaya shook his head and suddenly loudly shouted. His energy which was already at the peak, once again erupted further. The surging energy was as if the gate of a reservoir that had been accumulating for a long time suddenly opened, and the vast waves found the mouth of a drain as everything began to crazily gush out. At this moment, Zayaya launched the pseudo super scion mode. Not far away, above the spaceship, the energy detector began to beep with electronic sounds beep, 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 and the data began to jump rapidly. 7.6 million 8.74 million. 10 million. The continuously spiking numbers frightened the aliens on the side, their eyes were opened wide, and they sunk into a state of listlessness, extremely frightened. The humans' battle power was still skyrocketing, which was beyond their range of understanding. They looked up and saw a black cloud in the sky which was pressing down upon them, while sound of thunder boomed among the clouds. There were continuous tremors beneath them on the ground, while tiny particles of dust floated above the ground. 15 million. 17 million. Planet Bahert began to shake violently, and the ground cracked open. 
with the irregular cracks as the boundary, the ground trembled and began to sink. The large spaceship tilted. 28 million. 30 million. The numbers finally stopped at 30 million battle power. This was Zaya's final battle power in pseudo super scion mode. Although it was not as good and frightening as Slug's 36 million, considering that Zaya was young while Slug was old, it was not that difficult to bridge this small amount of difference. Looking at the young man in front of him who was shining, while his hair had risen into the sky, Slug's face was dark. This various kinds of abnormal phenomena showed that the young man was not ordinary. At this time, Slug understood that the young man's strength was not at all beneath him. What is the opponent's battle power? Slug's voice was cold while his whole body was emitting disgusting darkness. 3, 30 million battle power. Slug's subordinates said in a stammering voice. Affected by the two powerful energies, even breathing had become extremely difficult. 30 million battle power. After listening, Slug's face turned stiff, and suddenly awe-inspiring killing intent erupted from his eyes. If the killing intent could turn into substance, it would have penetrated a dozen meters of steel plate. Ah, damn it! How much of my tree of might's fruits have you eaten? Slug shouted as he felt pain, you must die to dispel my anger. The leaves in the surroundings which were slowly falling down were crushed by the frightening aura. The fight commenced immediately. Bang! Slug was full of anger, as he punched at Zayaya. However, Zayaya had long noticed, and at the moment of attack, he suddenly laid down and immediately shifted his position, launching a counter-attack against Slug from an unimaginable angle. Bang bang bang! Punching each other and counter-attacking each other. Countless after-images appeared in the sky before they appeared everywhere on the ground, and then very quickly disappeared. The golden aura collided with Slug's energy, and the two awe-inspiring storms pressed against each other, the air making ear-piercing exploding sounds. Zayaya and Slug fighting quickly turned into a gold and white light rays. They sometimes collided with each other before quickly separating, they sometimes even swooped down together from the sky to hundreds of meters below the ground, the frightening air streams wreaking havoc. It seemed as if Doomsday had arrived on the whole planet Bahard as all kinds of natural disasters continuously appeared in various regions of the planet. The aliens who came with Slug were shivering, scared by the frightening powers revealed by Zayaya and Slug, and even the mission of picking Tree of Might's fruits given by Slug was forgotten. Oh, my god! Where the hell did that human monster come from? He is almost on PAR with King Slug. Both people fighting were extremely fast, and dozens or even hundreds of collisions would occur almost every second. Such speed had long exceeded the observative ability of these aliens. They could only rely on the naked eye to see everything and instinctively react. Living creatures are all like this. They have the inherent weakness of avoiding the important and dwell on the trivial, but they often had a strange mentality of liking fearful and rotten things. Just like some of the rumors that humans often spread that could scare themselves to death, these aliens were also continuously imagining, causing them all to be scared paralyzed on the ground. Not good, the whole planet is about to break apart. That human has almost the same battle power as King Slug, more than 30 million. Oh no, I remember that Cooler's army will also arrive here in a few minutes. Our situation would be bad by then. Yeah, what should we do? Can King Slug kill this human before they arrive? Not, not sure. They suddenly remembered that there was also Cooler's army behind them, and their complexion turned deathly pale, therefore it's oozing bean-sized beads of sweat. If Cooler's army arrives here, then it will be a situation of being attacked from both sides, and it would be difficult to run away. At this time, Slug's subordinates completely forgot the heroicness and passion when they set off from Planet Slug. Why did the matter of picking the Tree of Might's fruits, which was easy, become like this? They couldn't understand. Of course, it wasn't only Slug's subordinates who reacted to Zaya and Slug's fierce fight, but also Scions, who were scattered around various parts of Planet Bahard, busy picking the Tree of Might's fruits. It should be said that when Slug came to Planet Bahard, they had already sensed him, but they did not expect him to be so powerful. Sir Zaya's aura is so powerful. There is also that sinister aura, it is also very powerful, my spirit almost froze. These Guardian Corps members' battle power was generally around 10,000, as high as 30,000 to 40,000. Suddenly sensing the fight between experts of battle power above 30 million, they seemed to have opened to a completely new horizon. They all stood there dumbfounded and didn't even notice the fruits of Tree of Might in their hands fall. Not good, this place will soon be affected by Sir Zaya's fight. Suddenly sensing the aura of the people fighting approaching, a scion, 
who was slightly stronger, shouted. Hearing him, these scions all showed a startled expression. Yes, Sir Zaya's aura is coming towards them. Hurry up everyone, leave. Hey, everyone, gather together. Following a crisp female voice, they saw Xiling's graceful figure suddenly appear in the air. Ah, Madam Xiling. Quickly gather up, I am going to use instant transmission. Another voice was heard, the voice was exactly the same as Xiling's. They saw another girl who looked exactly like Xiling appear out of thin air. Ah! There are two Madam Xilings. A female scion cried out, but her collar was quickly grabbed by the just appeared Xiling, and along with the launch of instant transmission, quickly disappeared before the eyes of everyone. In order to speed up the evacuation, and not put a greater burden on Xiaya, Xiling tried her best to use the cloning secret skill she learned from Planet Yardrat. As another Xiling had simultaneously appeared, the speed of evacuation became faster by a lot. Myers, you should also come over and help. Finding Myers who had sent off Rebecca, Bardock, and others, Xiling told her. Okay. Myers quickly nodded and then evacuated the people with Xiling. As three people simultaneously used instant transmission, the efficiency of evacuation greatly improved. Before it would take almost one second to evacuate one person, but now it changed to evacuating a few people a second, suddenly improving by a lot. Good, Xiling and Myers have evacuated all the people in front. Xiaya fought with Slug while observing the situation ahead. When Slug forced him to move the battlefield near the Tree of Might, Xiaya was nervous, but as Xiling and Myers had evacuated the Scions ahead, Xiaya could finally fight without any worries. Hey, the fierce fight stirred the air, because their speed was extremely fast, the air partially turned into a vacuum, producing sonic booms. A strong arm penetrated the air and grabbed Slug's wrist. Immediately, Slug's pupils contracted, and the muscles on his head twisted, revealing blue veins. He suddenly turned his body and attacked. Rumble. Awe-inspiring key blade turned into substance, and a crystal-clear half-inch light ray flashed past. SSSS, the battle armor on Zaya's upper body could not withstand the impacts of the powerful energy and was ripped apart into thin strips. Seeing that his first attack failed, Zaya urged his power and once again attacked, but he was one step late. Slug snorted and seized the opportunity to attack. Slug's battle power was above Zayaya's, and the gap of six million in their eyes may not be as huge as in the eyes of low-level people. But the gap was still a gap, although Slug was getting older, and he couldn't use his strength at his peak, it was still a lot higher than Zayaya's. Bang, a muffled sound. Immense force burst out of the claws, hitting Zayaya's chest. PFF. Spurting out blood from his mouth. Zaya's body shot backward like an artillery shell, as a golden ray drew a line across the sky. At this time, Slug once again moved, directly appearing next to Zaya, like two parallel lines, flying along with Zaya. Then, he cupped his fists and lifted them up. Bang! The powerful fist heavily struck down, like a 10,000 Jin tremendous force erupting out in a flash, and the straight light bent at 90 degrees as Zaya was sent flying straight down towards the ground. Stop! Zaya's heart moved, trying to stop his body, but Slug's strength was so great that he couldn't stop. Huala, his body rapidly flew, getting closer and closer to the ground, a violent friction happening against the surrounding air, produced buzzing sounds. A loud rumble occurred. A huge crater of unknown depth and one kilometer in diameter appeared on the ground. The splashing sand turned into a shock waves and wherever they passed, the mountains and rivers were destroyed and countless trees and branches broke from the middle and were swept into the sky. Suddenly, a deep abyss appeared on the ground. Chapter 197, Super Name Kian He he he, damn human, you actually made this king waste so much energy. Staring at the deep crater of unknown depth beneath him, Slug gasped for air while his dark eyes, like that of a ravenous wolf, flickered with a cold light. Even though Slug looked like a middle-aged man, he was, in fact, an old man passed his prime. If he was an ordinary name Kian, then at this age he wouldn't even be able to move. The reason he could still fight was thanks to his super name Kian physique. But fighting with Zaya already made his body exhausted. At this time, Slug felt that something was amiss, the inside of the crater was too quiet like an extinct volcano that had been silent for many years. Normally, there wouldn't be another possibility for Zaya to erupt out, but Slug's intuition of an expert caused his heart to wildly thump. He looked around, having felt an energy approaching him. That human is definitely not dead yet. 
Slug quietly pondered. He retracted his contemptuous thoughts for Zayaya and cautiously surveyed his surrounding, on guard. Suddenly, feeling an icy airstream coming from his back, Slug reacted and bent down, dodging a tiny knife blade which gleamed with a sparkling white light. At this time, Zayaya's figure had appeared behind him. Dot. Slug was greatly surprised, he wanted to avoid it but found that there wasn't enough time. Swish, a strong punch pierced through the air, forming vacuum for a brief moment. A fist smashed down. Bang. At the critical moment, Slug stamped his foot, changing his angle at the last minute, while his body lightly jumped and dodged by less than a centimeter. A fist energy went past his face, bringing along a scorching and revolting smell. Humph, it's my turn. Zayaya sneered, he hadn't completed his attack before launching another attack. Hwalala, each of his punch was as heavy as a mountain, and due to its extreme speed, an exquisite luster shone at the top of his fist from its friction with the air. Bang bang bang, the sounds of the fierce fight and the dazzling rays of light continuously lit up the sky, causing the color of the sky to change unpredictably. Because of the powerful energy, free electrons were being pulled together. Rumble. In the sky. Lightning flashed and thunder rolled mixing together with an icy whirlwind. Zayaya and Slug continuously battled as countless afterimages which couldn't be seen properly sometimes would appear amidst the enormous tree branches, and sometimes in vast ink-like sky. Then, the insane attacks led to a series of deafening explosions. The bright lights, flames, as well as the continuous explosions, were as if nuclear warheads had detonated together in a split second. In an instant, the ground split open, Lava gushed out and set the surrounding trees on fire due to the scorching temperature. Below, Slug's subordinates who had come together with him were cowering and hiding behind a temporary shelter, scared out of their wits. Even though the tree of mites fruits was almost within their reach, they didn't have any thoughts of picking them. They looked up at the sky feeling apprehensive. Although their eyes had been unable to keep up with the fast battle long ago, they still watched without blinking, waiting expectantly for the battle to end as soon as possible. Frightening as if it is the end of the world. Someone spoke with a frightened expression on his face. This was probably the most intense fight he had ever witnessed since he followed King Slug. In the past, he somehow could have been of some use in the battlefield, but this time he wasn't able to help. Quick, ah! Quickly dispose of that human, King Slug, Cooler's army is going to arrive soon. Some aliens held their fists in front of their chest and began to pray, because if he continued to delay like this, then even if his majesty kills the human, they wouldn't be able to escape Cooler's pursuit. King Slug would definitely kill that human. Hurry up, we should go and protect the spaceships, because if it gets damaged due to the fight, we wouldn't be able to leave the planet. Seeing that the spaceships in the distance had slightly tilted due to the fissures in the ground, some aliens came over and hastily shouted in a loud voice. Right, we should protect the spaceships. The fight continued on for several minutes. As the number of scions remaining on planet Bahurt became fewer and fewer, the area of Zayaya and Slug's fight continuously increased. Soon, the powerful energy storm began to sweep across the entire planet, causing it to fall into chaos. Not far away from planet Bahurt, on a life planet, Xiling had finally moved over all the scion warriors. Now, there was only one scion left on planet Bahurt, Zayaya. Everyone, stay here for now. The fight on Zayaya's side should be over soon. Xiling murmured, worry and weariness apparent on her exquisite face. As she had continuously used cloning secret skill and instantaneous transmission, to and fro between the two planets, she was extremely tired. Will Zayaya be able to defeat that frightening name Kian? Myers was squatted on the ground, nibbling on a tree of mites fruit so as to replenish her strength. Let's go, we should return. Maybe we can help. Taking out a sense of bean to recover her physical strength, Xiling was planning to go to planet Bahurt with Myers. Madam Xiling, please let us come with you to help Sir Zayaya. A Scion warrior requested. As a fighting race, Scions would always only perish in battle when facing more powerful enemies, they would never run away from a fight due to fear, especially as experts amongst Scions, escaping a fight makes them feel disgraceful. Right, right, Miss Xiling, let us come with you. Other scions also followed and requested to fight. Xiling raised her eyebrows, she who usually doesn't get angry, was incensed this time, and berated, Shut up, we spent so much energy to send you here, but now you want to go back. You have also seen Slug's strength, right? He is so powerful, what do you think you can do by going back there? 
you will only hold Zayaya back. It would be better to stay here and wait for Zayaya to come back. Hearing what she said, they couldn't help but become depressed. Yes, wasn't it because he had to stall for time, that Sir Zayaya stayed on planet Bahir to fight with that name Kian Slug? They were elites of planet Hongshan, and weren't reckless. Thinking till here they couldn't help but become silent. Actually, how could Xiling not be worried about Zayaya? But as she had been educated by Zayaya, she knew that there are times when one has to fight and there are times when one must not fight. Facing someone as powerful as Slug, it was unwise to rashly show off. Returning to planet Bahirt will only hold Zayaya back and increase pointless casualties. So it was best for them, who weren't powerful enough, to stay behind. Miss Xiling, let me come with you. A voice sounded, and Rega puffed out his chest and walked over to Xiling. My long-cherished wish is to completely destroy the Tree of Might, and now it is soon going to be fulfilled. How can I stay here and watch it again fall into an evil person's hands? So I beg you to bring me there. Rega said with a determined look. After listening to him, Xiling looked at him with an awkward expression. At this time, Bardock, on the side, who had been silent for a long time spoke, Madam Xiling and Madam Myers, let me also come with Mr. Rega. With our strength, we would be helpful to Sir Zayaya in finishing off those puny underlings. Yet. Yeah. Rega agreed while looking towards Xiling. How about we let them come? At this time, Myers who had finished eating two Tree of Might's fruits walked over. Thinking for a while, Xiling nodded, in that case, Bardock and Riga, you can come with us, while the rest will wait here. After speaking, Xiling glanced at everyone with a dignified expression. Then, she said to Rebecca and the others, Mom, Aunt Lisa, I will leave everything here to you. Okay. Rebecca nodded with a solemn expression. Here except for Bardock and Riga whose battle power was close to 200,000, Rebecca, Lisa, and the others would have only a bin burden even if they came back with them. So, taking everything into consideration, it was better to leave them behind. Chapter 198, Cooler Hurrying Planet Bahert The fight was still going on. In order to keep up with his opponent's pace, from time to time, Zayaya used the acceleration ability on himself. He also used the reflection ability which allowed him to deflect attacks equivalent to one-third of his own strength. However, his continuous use of the pseudo super Scion transformation heightened his fatigue due to the encumbrance it posed on his body. It was the same for his slug. Although his battle power was greater than Zayaya's, the law of nature was fair to everyone. Even though turtles lived for a long time, they still dies eventually. A flying serpent could ride the mist, but it would ultimately turn to dust. Without question, the old eventually succumbs to death. This reality couldn't be changed, no matter how unwilling the one is. Since his body had deteriorated with age, the longer the fight went on for, the more Slug's vigor waned. Nevertheless, his strength was, after all, still greater than Zayaya's, and his battle experience was also extremely rich. These factors caused this situation to appear in which neither opponent could best the other. After a while, the battle entered its climax. They both had blood dripping down the corners of their lips, and their injuries compounded with each bout. With a bang, Zayaya swung his fist at Slug's chest, but Slug quickly raised an arm to block the approaching attack, and the other to counter with a punch. Faced with the counter, Zayaya quickly brought both arms together to meet the attack, and instantly, an intense and painful force traveled up his arms, sending him crashing to the ground. Ha <laughs> ha, die. Slug's voice echoed and Zayaya looked up to see that Slug had instantly arrived before him. Slug's bloodshot eyes flashed with madness as he swung his arm wildly, and the ensuing violent force instantly raised a formidable hurricane. At the same moment, energy blast. With a loud shout, a huge, glaring, white energy ray shot into the sky, and Zayaya changed directions with the help of the recoil. Zayaya then quickly turned back, and with few flashing after images, instantly arrived above Slug. So fast. This was Slug's first reaction before everything before him turned dark, causing his pupils to dilate, and his complexion to darken. Suddenly, a heart-rending pain came from his arm. Slug looked down and saw that his arm had been unknowingly severed, and bright red blood was gushing out of the wound. Ah! Ah! Slug roared with hatred, and his face contorted with pain, sprouting blue veins on his forehead. He exercised his power, and a mucus-covered arm extended out from the stump. Regeneration This was the unique skill of Namekians. This ability couldn't be compared to Majin Buu's immortal body, but
but it was still effective in battle, however, this ability consumes a lot of vigor which was quite unbearable for the physically weak slug. You, damn human! You have really angered this king. Slug's shout was as if it was the grieving cry from hell. Slug glared at Zayaya with resentment, and his black eyes suddenly turned bright red. He he! Slug sneered, and the aura being emitted from his body suddenly, not to know why, again increased. Slug had finally used all of his strength, without any thought to the cost. Although this burst of power would greatly shorten his life, the strength of his opponent had greatly exceeded his expectation. He had initially believed that battle power greater than 30 million was sufficient to deal with the human, but he didn't think that Zayaya was even more powerful than the number 30 million displayed. Where the hell did this human come from? Why is his strength far more powerful than the energy shown? Slug's pupils flickered like a viper's as he pondered. Oh! Oh! The dark red energy erupted, the rioting energy swirled up a tornado, and a planetary storm stirred the air even more violently than before. Is this slug's true strength? Feeling the pressure present everywhere in the air, Zayaya narrowed his eyes and lightly bit the tip of his tongue, as his flashing eyes stared. The two men simultaneously attacked each other. Huo. The initially still space-time almost seemed to collapse. High in the sky, lightning flashed and thunder boomed, and fist shadows interweaved. Energy waves shoot out in all directions, and small pebbles were directly crushed into powder. Loud earth-shaking rumbles resounded consecutively, and in only a few seconds, Zayaya and Slug had exchanged a countless amount of blows. However, even though it seemed that neither opponent had the advantage, Zayaya's energy was, after all, lesser than Slug's, thus, the destructive damage that Zayaya could deal had reduced, and he gradually fell into a disadvantage and numerous new wounds appeared on his body. The severe pain irritating his brain. However, this did little to dampen his joy while fighting, and instead, it heightened his excitement. His science bloodline had been completely aroused. Ha ha ha, I am delighted. Zayaya roared, almost crazily. This intense battle against Slug excited him immensely like never before. Every injury stimulated his potential, and the millions of cells within the body were all invigorated and burst with an unprecedented amount of energy. Such an imposing manner was akin to a mad dog that wouldn't back down until it was dead, and this frightened Slug. An extreme murderous intent welled up in Slug's cold heart. People like him must be eradicated at once. At this time. In the starry sky not far away from planet Bahart, a brilliant ray of light streaked by, like a meteor streaking across the starry sky, and in the blink of an eye, it had disappeared. How long would it take to arrive at planet Bahart? Cooler sat atop his throne and tapped his fingers on the hard material of the armrest, making tap 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 sounds. Five more minutes. An alien in the pilot's cabin stood up and reported while several of its arms swiftly manipulated the buttons. Beep. 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 As the spaceship got closer and closer to planet Bahart, the boundless raging energy above the distant planet was detected by the energy detector above the spaceship. Along with flickering red lights, an ear-piercing alarm continuously rang, immediately breaking the silence in the spaceship. What's going on? Cooler's face was icy, his scarlet eyes flashing with a chilly glow. His subordinate quickly checked, and after a while, it said, King Cooler, the energy detector on the spaceship has detected a strong energy response on the target planet. Oh. How strong is it? Generally, these spaceship detectors were used to detect powerful phenomena that occur in the universe such as supernovas, cosmic radiations, and others that occurs in UD space and to avoid dangers. But, unexpectedly, it had detected something on the target planet, Planet Bahert. There are two energy responses, and both of them are, above 30 million. Hum. Upon hearing his subordinate's report, Cooler's countenance sank, and his face darkened, as his whole body emitted an even more icy aura. Ha ha ha. 30 million battle power. That's good. Cooler smiled and stroked his chin, unexpectedly, such a powerful energy response had been detected on planet Bahert. Tell me, is that the strength of the East Area's alien itself, or its strength after eating the fruit of the Tree of Might? Cooler suddenly stood up, narrowed his eyes and curled the corners of his purple lips. A frightening aura akin to an ancient beast's erupted out of his body. The aura turned into airstreams and swept throughout the spaceship. Under this aura's oppression, everyone in the spaceship trembled with fear. Continue to speed up and arrive at planet Bahert in three minutes. But, your majesty, if we continue to accelerate, the spaceship will not be able to endure it. The alien who was in charge of piloting the spaceship explained. 
speed up. An icy voice sounded, and Cooler's bloodshot eyes flickered with a cold and stern light. Yes. Faced with his terrifying pressure, Cooler's alien subordinates didn't dare refute his order any further, even if the spaceship was on course for destruction, they could only do as Cooler ordered. The command was quickly inputted into the control system, and regardless of the alarms generated from the spaceship's system due to the overload, they piloted the spaceship at full speed. Because of its extreme speed, the spaceship began to violently shake, and it seemed as though it would fall apart at any time. When they detected Cooler's army accelerate, King Cold's army, which was following far behind, still continued to follow at a leisurely pace. They didn't seem to be in any hurry. Chapter 199, Super Scion A gentle breeze blew by, ferrying dead branches, withered leaves, and a cloud of dust. Suddenly, the gentle breeze transformed into a passing storm. The silent battlefield seemed like it had experienced an apocalypse, it was shrouded in terror. Zayaya and Slug looked at each other from far away. One with a gold-colored aura, and the other with a white-colored aura. Both frightening auras confronted each other in midair. The frightening whirlwind stirred up by both auras collided in midair and formed two different independent spaces, depicting the image of two glaring suns shrouded by their respective, powerful gravitational fields. From afar, both spheres seemed to form two partially curved spaces. Even time and space seems to have become chaotic at this moment. Below, Slug's alien subordinates all donned expressions of terror, they had long been incapable of moving an inch due to the pressure from the aura of both opponents. Tui. Zayaya spat out a mouthful of blood, and his body was exhausted. Nevertheless, he was becoming more and more excited, and he was feeling delighted, akin to drinking from a sweet spring. He shouted, and his imposing aura surged once more. Although his heart felt heavy, the corners of his lips curled upwards, and his eyes brimmed with an immense fighting intent. At that moment, every cell within his body trembled crazily, and an enormous amount of golden energy erupted out of him like a sea wave. Adjust breathing. Keep heart steady. Zayaya cautioned himself repeatedly as he strove to adjust his body to its optimum condition suitable for battle. Suddenly, he charged at Slug, leaving a beam of light behind him. With a heart-rending sonic boom, he arrived before Slug in an instant, before kicking with all his might. Slug's face darkened, and he leaned his upper body to the side, avoiding Zayaya's powerful attack, but the violent force which followed the kick gave rise to a sharp whirlwind, which was similar to a razor blade. The accompanying wind blade slashed Slug's stomach and left several gashes so deep that bone was visible. Bastard. Slug gasped, and his aura grew more powerful. His black eyes flashed with viciousness, and the horrifyingly evil aura around him suddenly erupted. Slug's aura surged insanely, and a white aura ignited around him. The sky suddenly changed color, the clouds completely disappeared, and the gloomy atmosphere grew even more oppressive. Now. Zayaya found the right opportunity and punched fiercely. This time, Slug didn't attempt to dodge, he punched out to welcome Zayaya's incoming fist. Bang! Both fists collided in midair, creating powerful shock waves visible to the naked eye, which swept out in all directions. Immediately after, the opponents retreated far away from each other, and continued to launch powerful attacks. Bang! 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 Fist shadows interwined and sharp blade-like whirlwinds scattered in all directions. In a single second, both parties had fought each other innumerable times. Each time they collided, they'd swiftly separate immediately afterward. The insane speed of both parties made their movement impossible to capture with the naked eyes. Only rumbles and explosions made evident the fact that a fight was still going on. This human is so powerful. Slug's body was covered with bulging muscles which resembled dragon claws. As he gasped for breath, he kept his gaze locked onto Zayaya, who wasn't standing so far away from him. Dot. Currently, his body had a frighteningly deep gashes, and his vigor almost couldn't keep up, but suddenly, Slug spotted a huge fruit among the leaves, it was a dark red fruit. That's. Slug's pupil shrank, and a bright light flashed within his mind. Delighted, his body turned into a beam of light as he flew towards it. That's right, on the leaves not too far from Slug hung the dark red tree of Might's fruit. Not good. Realizing Slug's intentions, Zayaya inwardly cried out, and then he also quickly chased after the former, turning into a beam of light. Unfortunately, he was still one step late, as the bright red tree of Might's fruit had fallen into Slug's hands. Slug stuffed the tree of Might's fruit into his mouth. 
pure vitality burst forth from the fruit in his mouth and permeated all his cells, nourishing Slug's aging body. Hwala! A dense, hazy brilliance surged from Slug's body. Ha ha ha! This is how it feels to be young again. This tree of might's fruit has really restored my youth. With his fist clenched and his body bursting with vitality, Slug laughed maniacally. Filling every cell in the body with vitality was the effect of the tree of might's fruit. For the aging slug, this single tree of might's fruit was akin to a wonder drug that could regrow bones and raise the dead. This is bad. In sharp contrast to slug's excitement, Zayaya was in extremely bad mood. The aged slug had not been easy to deal with, and now, after eating that tree of might's fruit, slug had become even more troublesome. Suddenly, four people suddenly appeared beside Zayaya. He turned to his side and realized that the new arrivals were Xiling, Myers, Bardock and Riga. He swiftly shouted instructions, Bardock, Riga, you two quickly go and finish off Slug's subordinates. Xiling and Myers, you both destroy all the fruits and uproot the Tree of Might. Okay. Leave it to us. They glanced at each other, then at Zayaya and Slug, who was still howling with laughter, and trembled. Afterward, they nodded at Zayaya and dispersed. Slug has eaten only one tree of might's fruit, yet he has already grown a lot stronger. This is Slug at his peak. Victory may not be easy to attain, but it is only interesting like this. Zayaya had never been scared of challenges, including the current battle, the probability of his victory was not yet zero. Boundless fighting intent surged within his body, and Zayaya charged at Slug and launched another attack. On the other side, after receiving their orders from Zayaya, Bardock and Riga quickly located Slug's subordinates. Numerous light blue energy waves tore through the air and hit the huge spaceships, and with a loud bang, several hundreds of spaceships directly exploded. This destroyed their possibility of leaving the planet. After destroying all the spaceships, Bardock and Riga switched targets to Slug's subordinates. They both had battle powers close to 200,000, so dealing with low-level warriors such as these aliens, who had less than 20,000 to 30,000 battle power, was akin to a tiger charging into a flock of sheep and carrying out a one-sided massacre. These aliens were not Bardock and Riga's match, at all, and they died one by one died under the former's energy waves. Ah, save me. Damn it, how can I die here? Blood-curdling screams reverberated without stop, as the aliens were quickly engulfed by the burning energy waves. On the other side, Xiling and Myers went all out as well. The Tree of Might was enormous in size, and looking from space, it resembled a huge mushroom-like, umbrella-shaped thing covering the surface of the planet. If they desired to uproot something this enormous without leaving behind anything that could prove troublesome in the future Xiling and Myers didn't dare to hold back their strength and went all out. Rumble. Rumble. A huge ball of energy fell from the sky and struck the Tree of Might, causing an enormous ball of fire to appear, turning the countless Tree of Might's fruits to ashes amidst the explosion. Fruits fell down. The giant tree was overturned. A raging flame burned them into coke. Ah, ah. My tree of might's fruits. Witnessing the tree of might toppling over, Slug was infuriated, and his heart seems to be dripping blood. Suddenly, his body erupted out with fearsome, an icy killing intent, bastard, bastard. You damn humans. Slug cursed while gnashing his teeth from anger. He waved his arm, and a beam of blood-red energy directly shot out towards Xiling and Myers. Not good. Zayaya's countenance changed. A ray of light flashed, and he quickly appeared in front of Xiling and Myers, blocking the attack. He raised his legs high and stepped on the huge ball of energy. Rumble. He stepped on the endless energy, and the violet energy was sent underground. The ground cracked open with a loud bang, and a huge cloud of dust covered the sky and ground, forming a chaotic and hazy scene of primal chaos. Courting death. Slug's eyes flickered with a cold light and he stepped forward. Leaving several afterimages in the near-vacuum environment, his well-built figure rapidly moved, and appeared out of nowhere in front of Zayaya. Bang! A powerful fist smashed down. Upon impact, Zayaya felt his body tremble, then he heard the sounds of bones breaking. Spurting out a mouthful of blood, Zayaya was blown backwards, like a quickly moving artillery shell. His body flew almost parallel to the ground. The strong wind slashing a deep ravine on the ground. Zayaya. Xiling and Myers screamed. They teleported to Zayaya and helped him up. Sometimes, the greatest opportunities were grasped during the most dangerous of situations. Although Zayaya's body was mortally injured, 
the millions of cells within his body began to tremble violently in reverse. Golden energy spread within his body and was absorbed by the countless cells. The golden energy once again burst out, and was once again absorbed back into the cells. At this time, the condition of Zaya's body began to change. His pseudo super scion mode became unstable, and the key around his body flashed from time to time. What's happening to Zaya? Myers exclaimed. I don't know. Xiling shook her head, her eyes filled with concern. At this time, Slug walked over step by step, looked at the three people before him, and the corners of his mouth curled up into a cruel smile. Humph. It's all because of you that this king has missed a great opportunity to regain his youth. Today, I will use your blood to appease the anger in my heart. Slug's icy voice rang out. Although the tree of might's fruit that he had eaten allowed him to recover his strength, it was only for a short duration. As the energy will get consumed, he would soon revert back to his previous old and weak state, moreover, Cooler's army would also soon arrive. Therefore, although Slug had rushed over to planet Bahurt from very away, he hadn't gained any advantages not even a little one. How can this not make him angry? He condensed an enormous light blue energy ball in his hands. It exuded a colorful and dazzling brilliance that made it resemble an extremely beautiful, bright star. However, the amount of energy contained within this energy ball was enough to destroy a planet. Let me send you on your way. Slug spoke in an extremely ruthless voice, and his finger slightly bent, releasing the light blue energy out towards his targets. With a low buzzing sound, the energy ball which had originally been the size of a basketball suddenly shrank, and its color changed from light blue to purple. Then it began to enlarge again, from basketball size to the size of a swimming pool, then continued growing on until it was as large as a mountain. Die! Slug, who was hovering in midair and coldly shouted, he bent his arm and pushed the colossus-like mountain. Chichichi! It was the sound of the energy ball tearing through the air. As the energy ball neared, it was followed by scorching heat, and dazzling luminous lit up everything in its immediate surrounding. Everything lost their original color, leaving only a layer of pale, thin reflection of strong light. Ah, what do we do now? Xiling and Myers, who both supported Zaya, had expressions of despair on their little faces. They had tried to leave via instant transmission but realized that the surrounding space had been distorted by the incoming powerful energy, so they couldn't teleport. Are we going to die? Xiling and Myers subconsciously looked at Zaya who had completely withdrawn the pseudo super scion mode. They resolutely remained standing in front of him. As if following through a prior agreement, they raised their arms, simultaneously, and went all out to produce their own energy wave, trying to stop the huge, heaven-destroying and earth-extinguishing energy ball. However, their attempt was futile. Their strength paled in comparison with slugs, so their idea didn't possess the slightest bit of possibility of coming to fruition. They watched their energy waves collide with slugs and instantly got swallowed and crushed. The speed of slugs' energy ball, however, didn't slow down the slightest bit. We are doomed. They lamented in their hearts, as the dull blue, and somewhat blazing white, glow illumined the despair on the girls' faces. But, at that moment, something unexpected happened. I've already told you little girls that this is not the time for you two to show off. A lazy but vigorous voice echoed from behind them. Zaya. Xiling and Myers exclaimed. Right now, it's my turn to show off. Zaya extended his powerful palm high up into the sky and pulled Xiling and Myers behind him. Then, a breeze blew by, and a gigantic hand extended out in front and grabbed Slug's energy ball. With Slug's energy ball in its grasp, the gigantic hand clenched into a fist, and the surging energy ball disappeared into nothingness. How is that possible? Slug exclaimed. Hee hee, it means that you are still not strong enough. A calm voice sounded beside his ear. Zaya reached out his palm and held Slug's arm tightly. Zaya, are you all right? Myers standing far away looked at Zaya, who had suddenly appeared beside Slug in the sky, and covered her mouth with a surprised expression. Ah, why did your appearance change? Xiling countenance changed as she looked at Zaya in the sky with incredulity, You, you are already a, super scion. Yes, I am already a super scion. Zaya lightly replied, and a bright light flashed within his dark green pupil. His reply sounded confident, with a touch of pride. Yes, at that moment, Zaya's appearance had completely changed, he was shrouded in a brilliant golden aura. Super Scion mode was quite different from Pseudo Super Scion. Those in Super Scion mode had soaring golden hair and calm, 
green eyes. And battle power further soars by 50 times. Just like Xiaoya's present appearance. Chapter 200, Slug's Death After the successful transformation into Super Scion, Xiaoya's aura had undergone an earth-shattering change. His original 7.54 million battle power directly soared to the current 380 million, an increase of almost 50 times. Unlike Son Goku's first time transformation state, Xiaoya had reached the level where his ki was full till overflowing, perhaps because his body had adapted to the pseudo Super Scion to a certain extent before his transformation, so after transforming into Super Scion, the extremely enormous amount of energy did not overflow out, rather it was completely controlled. Though, it still put a lot of pressure on his body. However, this pressure was a common problem for Scions who transforms, and was still within his acceptable range. Feeling the robust energy within his body, Xiaoya faintly smiled, before his eyes swept towards Slug, his clear green eyes were like the calm surface of a lake, without any trace of waves. Hiccup. Meeting this extremely calm gaze, Slug swallowed his saliva, and his body couldn't help but take a step back. Unlike both girls' surprise, Slug, however, was feeling pressure, making his heart palpitate. What the hell happened to this human? Why has the color of his hair and eyes become different? and also what is this aura that is making me tremble. At this moment, traces of fear had unexpectedly appeared in Slug's heart. It seemed that if he was even a little bit careless, he may instantly lose his life. Which Slug felt was unimaginable. He, as a dignified super name Kian, and a generation overlord of North Area. How could he feel fear? Such a feeling was almost the same as when he had fought with Cooler. Ha ha ha, trickster. Slug unwillingly laughed and then he waved his fist, which was strong as steel, and attacked Xiaoya. In an instant, various types of energies erupted, the sparkling flashes increasingly dazzling. A rumbling sonic boom pierced through the air, afterward, it abruptly stopped. He saw Xiaoya lightly extend his palm, and stopped his fist. No matter how he exerted his strength, his fist couldn't advance at all. How is this possible? Slug's eyes were opened wide as if they would split, looking at Xiaoya incredulously. His all-out attack was actually received so casually received by someone. He obviously wasn't this powerful before. Why was this so? His eyes were bloodshot, revealing that he was close to madness. Slug, you are a super Namekian that has never appeared among the Namekians, but the reason I can defeat you is because of my current state, which is the legendary Super Scion. Zayaya said in a cold voice. The legendary Super Scion. Slug muttered to himself as he looked at the blonde-haired, green-eyed youth who had a golden aura surrounding his entire body, and abruptly burst into loud laughter, ha ha ha, super scion, so you are a scion. To think that Frisia didn't completely wipe you out. Incompetent Frisia, and also incompetent Cooler. He will regret it one day. Zayaya was speechless. When mentioning Frisia and Cooler, he also felt that the defeat and destruction of both brothers apparently, wasn't that unexpected. Take Frisia, he wholeheartedly wanted to exterminate Scions, but the result was that the extermination wasn't thorough, and because of his arrogance and carelessness, Vegeta was able to grow up. Then, look at Cooler, no matter if it was when he encountered him, or even earlier, when he encountered Slug, he let both of them survive. How can such a villain not die? Slug's expression was sinister as he said, I don't care if you are some super Scion or not, I want all of you to die here. Speaking, Slug quickly moved back pulling apart some distance from the Super Scion in front of him. While Zayaya appeared to be completely unconcerned, his green eyes were calm, and he had no intention to take action. A Super Scion still had the pride of a Super Scion, after all, and it seemed to be deeply engraved in their bloodline. Zayaya, Xiling called out with uneasiness. The current Zayaya felt somewhat unfamiliar to her. Don't worry, Slug can't raise any more storms. Looking back, he indifferently said, as a faint smile surfaced at the corners of his mouth. After transforming into Super Scion, his strength has surged to 380 million battle power, he didn't place this trifling slug in his eyes at all. Okay. Seeing the faint familiar smile on Xiaoya's face, Xiling was reassured, and then she, together with Myers, quietly retreated to the side. If they stand here, they would only disturb Xiaoya's fight. After Xiling and Myers retreated, Zayaya turned around and looked at Slug in the distance. At this time, the muscles on Slug's entire body were stretched taut, his two arms hanging down. He gathered strength in his hands as if preparing some powerful move. 
Suddenly, Slug's distorted face revealed an insane smile. Go die! Slug roared angrily, and he suddenly disappeared from his original place, leaving only a blurry silhouette. He once again appeared beside Zayaya in the blink of an eye, his speed fast. Bang! The energy ball that he had condensed in his hand fell heavily on Zayaya, but soon Slug discovered that something was wrong. The opponent's body didn't budge even by an inch after suffering his heavy blow, as if his attack had completely no effect at all. Your strength is still not enough. A nightmarishly chilly and ruthless voice entered his eardrums, and Slug was in disbelief at what he was seeing. He saw that the Super Scion had only lightly stretched out his palm, and blocked his energy ball, then his fingers slightly bent, grabbing the energy ball in the palm of his hand, pinching it hard, and then the energy ball that Slug had condensed using his entire body's energy got smaller and smaller until it is dissipated to nothingness. Zayaya exercised his wrist and sighed, this small amount of energy is only 36 million, it can't hurt me at all. Hearing his careless remark, a flustered expression flashed across Slug's face, and the corner of his mouth slightly twitched unknowingly. Looking at the blonde-haired, green-eyed super scion in front of him, Cooler's bloody and indifferent face involuntarily flashed across his mind. How similar these two people were. Similarly proud and aloof, and similarly looking down upon all beings. In their hands, the strength that he was extremely proud of had become so laughable, like a weak living creature facing an irresistible natural disaster. Slug's face was suffused with disbelief and a panicked expression, and his whole body exuded a chill of impending defeat. At this moment, Zayaya extended his finger, and a little sparkling light suddenly rose up, before it instantly turned into a sharp edge, and a half-inch electric light came out. Puchi, it rapidly flashed and forcibly penetrated Slug's palm, and then it shot out from behind his shoulder. Ah! Slug's heart throbbed with pain as he lied down on the ground, his mouth giving out a heart-rending tragic cry. At this time, Slug couldn't help but inwardly resent Frisia, who was in the faraway north area. If Frisia could have been slightly more meticulous in destroying planet Vegeta, how could there have been someone who escaped through the net and survive and even more so be born as the so-called Super Scion? At the same time, Slug was also feeling regret that he had provoked this Super Scion for no apparent reason. Slug, who once liked to toy and abuse his opponents now just wanted to immediately escape from the hands of the Super Scion in front of him. He didn't want to again face this kind of invincible existence anymore, but he was also aware of how unrealistic his wish was. You can die now and remember to speak of my good deeds when you arrive in the underworld. Zayaya lifted his leg, with an icy and imposing aura, pierced through the air, and ruthlessly kicked Slug's stomach. Then he aimed his palm at Slug, as a deep blue energy wave formed at the center of his palm. The energy wave was glittering and translucent, just like a beautiful crystal, but from the distorted light around the energy wave, it could be perceived that it contained powerful energy. More than enough to destroy several huge planets. Cough, cough. Who could have thought that I, Slug, would actually die in the hands of a Super Scion? Hee <laughs> hee, Cooler, Frisia, you would have to suffer the consequences of your actions in the future. Slug's center of gravity was unstable, as he half leaned on the ground, his face twitching. Drop dead. The indifferent voice, was as if the god of death was giving judgment. Saying this, Zayaya threw the energy ball in his hand at Slug. After the energy ball shot out, it began to suddenly expand. In a blink of an eye, it changed into a huge energy ball of more than 10 meters in diameter. Then, it swallowed Slug whose frustrated face was distorted. A loud rumbling noise resounded throughout the heaven and earth as if a slowly rising sun had suddenly exploded. If you look at it from the outer space, you could see resplendent radiance slowly rising at a corner of planet Bahert. The tremendous amount of energy collided with the surface of planet Bahert, causing the planet to shake violently. When the smoke had completely dispersed, a huge chasm of unknown depth that was thousands of kilometers wide had appeared. The crust of planet Bahert was forcibly flattened by a layer. At this moment, lava gushed out, and the smoke pervading everywhere was filled with the pungent smell of sulfur. 